guys who I'm just asking a question here. Yeah. He's hey, one I of those just, guys. I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking you, Colleen Wolf, if you're married. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know you. Yeah. It's, but, it's but, not on Wikipedia. No. And it's a you're of more interest of, to me if you're not married. If you are <laughs> married, you have less value. <laughs> well, just that, less interest. Well, we know what he was getting at. Uh, if you missed that, Colleen Wolf of NFL Network joined the John Lance show when we when we were at Republic Group boot company in late February, I think it was maybe the 26th, and Gilbert wanted to talk to Colleen Wolf, and the first thing he asked her was, eh, you married him. You have a husband? Anyway. Anyway, and Colleen Wolf was, she was kind of prepped for what Gilbert would bring, but that aggressiveness she was not ready for, um, and then she did go on to have like a 10 to 12 minute conversation with Gilbert, and Gilbert really just wanted stuff. Pictures paraphernalia from NFL Network, and Colleen Wolf says she would oblige. She she says she doesn't have, like, just pictures laying around of herself, so eventually she'll get one, sign it, and send it to Lance, and then Lan- it'll be Lance's responsibility to get it to Gilbert. When did we move away from that, from people on TV just, just having, having headshots? Yeah. I don't know. Be- I, I guess when, like, websites. Yeah, most of the stuff is digital now, yeah. online. I don't know if you just carry a hard copy of a photo. I mean, you don't you don't hand that to casting directors anymore. They can just go on the Internet. So I'm, I'm sure that stuff has gone by the wayside maybe in the last 10 to 12 years or so. Um, she, Colleen Wolf doesn't just have a picture of herself with a, <laughs> signed, ready for people, just in her, in her purse, just waiting for someone to ask her for it. Uh, she's got other things to be concerned about, namely the NFL. Jay wants to talk about the Otani system. The, the Eltani thing too. What's up, Jay? Hey, good morning. Morning. Hey, um, there's a rumor out there that Shohei Otani placed a bet of 4.5 million on the U of H Cougars. So, how do you feel about that? Is that a good news for us Houston fans, or pretty bad, anyways? Well, if I'm going to take this seriously, Jay, considering his debt, his alleged debt, and remember, we got to believe at least the initial story, that Ipe, his translator, is the one involved. But let's say Otani is the one placing bets. He's not a great gambler if he owes $4.5 million, so it's not good news for the Cougs. And, it, and, and is it a rumor about winning the title or beating Longwood? I mean, sounds good for Houston, right? If Shohei Otani's going to place a $4.5 million bet on them, right? No, he's bad at betting. If He, he doesn't have any real insight into gambling. If he owes money... So I think it's bad for the Cougs if if a bad gambler placed money on them. All right, Jay, enough of you. <laughs> enough. I will take unserious questions going forward if you so choose because that's all we're getting at this point. I don't mind it. But, no, it's bad for the Cougs if a guy with a giant debt is betting on them. That means he doesn't know anything. You need a guy who, who wins, like five-star. If he was placing money on the Cougs, then you should feel pretty good about yourself. Anthony, does you do you want to talk about Colleen Wolf? Is that the, the woman you're you're referencing when you say the girl I just mentioned? What's up, Anthony? Hey, sports, fellas. Oh, okay. Hey, I need your uh, I need your opinion. You think Colleen Wolf will ever have an OnlyFans? Just hey, wondering. Hey, Ryan, you don't have to do this. <laughs> it's just, every time a woman comes up, on every time the we show. mention a woman, he's got to <laughs> call in with a fake name and and ask if she'll have an OnlyFans. No, I don't think so. Colleen Wolf seems to be very secure at NFL Network. She does a great job, and sure, at any point a media member could lose their job, but I think she's well thought of, and she'll go on to something else. I don't think OnlyFans, Ryan, Anthony, or Wilson, whatever your name was yesterday, I don't think the natural inclination for a woman in media, if they happen to fall on what you would call hard times, to go to OnlyFans. I know some women have done that. I don't think it's all women. Anthony, Ryan, Wilson. I don't, it's not a, it doesn't have to happen to all of them. <laughs> I don't know why. Why the different names? This is I don't know why. He, is he doing doing it to think I won't recognize the voice? If he if you ask the same question all the time, I'm going to know it is you, Ryan. Anthony, I guess. Look, Ryan, you don't you don't have to use a fake name. I will let you on if to ask that question. Just go by whatever. Your name is, and you started off with Ryan. Maybe Ryan's a fake name, too. Maybe he's, he began giving us fake names just to protect himself. That would be smart. That would be the smart thing to do. And it's unnecessary. It there, is unnecessary, but that if you're trying to hide your identity. Yeah, if you, and if you thought that if the same name came up, I wouldn't let bring you on, 
I get what you're doing, but you don't understand the the sensibilities of this show. I will gladly answer your OnlyFans questions, and generally it ends with a no. Maybe if you bring up a woman that I think might actually have to do it, we can have a different conversation. But I don't think Colleen Wolf, Sydney Sweeney, or Dakota Fanning f- fit the bill. They'll be good. I wonder what he what what name he could bring up that I'd be like actually. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. What, what could it be? <laughs> what what name would spark a? Oh, you know, an actual discussion. Actually, you bring up a good point, Ryan. <laughs> I don't know. Let, let's maybe I'll just stick with no because if I if I did find one, if I hesitate, then you know I won't ever say yes. But if I hesitate, you'll know that that's actually a yes. But I appreciate it, Ryan Wilson, Anthony. Call in as much as you like. And that goes for everybody else, too. If you want to call in, 713-780-3776. We had a serious – I thought we were having a serious conversation about Otani, and I didn't get a serious question on, on it at all. And I don't mind it. We can do that all day long because it's funny that this is going on. Is you think this is actually Ryan or a guy pretending to be Ryan? Or just a different person in the city who's name named Ryan? Ryan. Yeah, it is a pretty – <laughs> It's a pr- I always debate that when I see a name that I've seen before. I'm like, that could just be a different person. It is possible that name. a guy in this city is named Ryan. No, he's calling back. Ryan, because we're late for a break and you spurred a conversation that made us be late, if you want to hold through the break, and since you're using your actual name, I'll bring you back because it's like two different people are calling. Normally the rule is only one call per show, but it's two different people now because you're using a different name. Ryan will be back with us. Anyone else, as I said, Call in. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about here on the show. We do have to get – well, I guess we don't have to. But there, there is some Astro news to get to. Altuve on the potential for stealing more bases. We got a Texan returning. Two Texans who are returning that were part of the team last year who made surprise contributions. So we'll talk about that as well. But uh, 30 minutes in, we're watching The Price is Right to get ready for the tournament. What are you doing to get ready for the tournament? You can let us know as well. We'll be back.
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Vertex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. We're back. We've had a, had a very unserious first two segments, and that's fine. Uh, Ryan is back. He wants to go under his real name. Maybe it's his real name. Ryan, do you have a question that doesn't involve a potential actor's you know, diverting it into an OnlyFans career, or are we being consistent here? What's up, Ryan? Uh, sports, fellas. Yeah, we're going to be consistent, still in detail. I got a serious one for you. What's the over and under on Amber Heard being on OnlyFans? Go ahead. See, the problem, you you are... I don't know what her settlement is from Charlie Sheen. They got... Not Charlie Sheen. What's... Who was the... No. Uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. They were married, right? So if she got cash from Johnny Depp, she may not have to do it. I I don't know. And she, you know the Aquaman, the first one, Aquaman Aquaman movie probably paid pretty well. And she was she was in Aquaman too. I I remember her being in in the first twenty minutes that I watched, and I haven't watched it since. So those paychecks are pretty good. And if she's good with her money and whatever she might have gotten from Johnny Depp, although they were suing each other, so I'm not sure how that played out. She yeah, should so be okay. Johnny Depp gets two mi- or gets one million from Amber Heard. Okay. Amber Heard gets two million from Johnny Depp. So why doesn't Johnny Depp just give her one million? Uh, so does, do they I, actually? I think it's I think it's two. So it's in you know whatever writing that like they both defamed each other. Okay. So do they actually have to make the wire transfer or? Do- each one, or, I think they just, or did we'll they just, just take it off the we'll top? We'll make it a million, and it goes her way. Yeah. So she's got a million from Johnny Depp now. She lives a Hollywood lifestyle as far as upkeep and the house and the overhead. So ma- certainly a million for us would go longer than a million for her. But she seems to be in a position where she doesn't have to do it. I'm going to look at her IMDb and see if I'm right because she doesn't have any roles coming up. Ryan, maybe you maybe you get your way. You know, Ryan has a proclivity. It's all blonde women. I I did notice that. Brian, you ha- are that. you do you have any diversity in doesn't you have, I don't even I'm not even talking about race. I'm, <laughs> will a brunette be okay? <laughs> a redhead? It's all blonde women for Ryan. And then some people have a I wouldn't call it a kink some, or a fetish. Some people have a a preference. preference. But Ryan has a preference and right now it's it's clearly blonde women. And right now Amber Heard doesn't have another project in the works. And her estimated net worth is $500,000. Ooh, then only, only fans may be uh, on the on the horizon if it's only 500k. I hope that's not the case. She's been in Hollywood a long time, but maybe she's so toxic because of the, the Johnny Depp stuff. She can't get another job because, like as I said, Mira from Aquaman ain't got work ahead, according to IMDb. But who knows? Maybe she'll make a comeback, and maybe or maybe Ryan gets his fantasy and wish. Who 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 would know? T- only time will decide, and there will not be a smooth transition to Astral Talk from that. But that's just the business I've chosen and the caller I allowed back on. That's on me, if I'm going to blame anyone. But the Astros are a couple days now. We're getting closer and closer to spring, tr- to the end of spring and the beginning of the year. They're a week away from a real pitch mattering. And, you know, I'll get you, I'll get you the, the lineup news. If you, Brian McTaggart, who you can depend on for good Astros news, tweeted out the lineup, what could be the opening day lineup. The regulars are all in the lineup today for their game. Uh, but the news today, or at least the news that he gathered yesterday, and it's now published today, is about Al- Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve is one. Uh, he'll be he'll be the he'll be the engine for the offense, and the question will be: Will he be more active running the bases? Because you got a different manager. Will Joe Espada have a different attitude towards trying to get got trying to get guys on the base path and and get that going? And uh, Altuve, and probably smartly so. Talked about well, I've got Jordan behind me. I got to give him opportunities, and he, this is the quote: "You have to keep in mind Alvarez is hitting behind me, and you have to be really smart, especially in situations where they don't want to pitch to him and are going to walk him. We might be talking about the best hitter, if not the second best in the big leagues. It's worth it to let him hit. So that might suggest that if you had any ideas about Altuve running more, and maybe you don't even want him to because he's older and 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 maybe more prone to injury, particularly if he's running the bases." Having having Jordan behind him probably is going to limit those opportunities because why why take away the chance for Jordan to to drive him in? It'll be something that I imagine will be on a case by case basis. I don't think we're just going to see an overly aggressive Jose Altuve going forward when you have, as he put it, maybe the best hitter in baseball behind him. 
And I, I, I don't have any issue with that because the more opportunities Jordan gets to hit with guys on, and that's the debate, right? If Altuve is is hitting first and Jordan's hitting second, how often will your power hitter and your best hitter get a chance to drive guys in? Uh, would, he, would he have more opportunities at, in the cleanup spot to drive guys in? And then, of course, the counter is, well, he, he'll get more bets. And that'll be something we'll discuss. It's probably, other than putting Hayter and making that clear that he was a closer, the the other biggest thing that Joe Espada has done, we talked about this very early uh, in the show when we began in February, that's probably Espada's biggest decision, and we'll see how it plays out going forward. But at this moment, you're going to have Jose Altuve being somewhat cautious about trying to run the bases because of what it might mean for the best hitter in baseball, at least one of the best hitters in baseball behind him. Sean, do you... Shot, you were probably, you probably have watched baseball in a time where stealing bases, at least for the Astros, hasn't been a thing, right? I mean, for the most for part. For the most yeah. part, this hasn't been a base stealing team. No. 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 Yeah, because they were always very on the, you know, front edge of the analytics. And it's before they changed some of the rules with like the bigger bases and limiting the pickoff. Uh, attempts the pitcher can make last year there really was no i won't say no point to stealing bases because it's like situationally you would uh it would be beneficiary beneficial but overall yeah it was just you rather not risk the out going from first to second you rather just let the hitter that's batting try to knock them in from first yeah it was kind of how it was and they had a good offense so they didn't have to small ball it up uh very often, so yeah, running, well, r- running in baseball is really something that's like from my youth, and then it's uh, of of a day gone by. It's come come back, yes. Didn't Cameron Maben steal a base in the World Series that set off a uh, a Taco rally Bell? in 2017? Oh. I thought you were gonna say the Taco Bell. Uh, yeah, well, uh, that that's steal part, a base still. Oh, that is part of it. Yeah, he stole he stole that base. Those are the biggest stolen bases in uh, World Series history for you get, me. <laughs> you get yourself something free from Taco yeah, Bell. Okay. I understood. It, well, it's not. It's less about the free thing, which is nice, but it's also the excuse to be like, oh, I guess this is why I'm going to Taco Bell tomorrow, not uh, any other reason. In fact. I typed in Cameron Maben stolen base, and it isn't really about the impact of the game. It is about winning the Taco Bell. That's those. <laughs> it isn't about what it did for the game. I didn't think I'd be right about that. Yeah, yeah it was. It was in game two. He's he stole it in the eleventh inning. Remember the Astros? The Astros won so it was game. Big, the Astros won game two partly because of him stealing that base. And and the first couple of results is about oh he won a, he won tacos for people. Yeah. Not not he changed the course of a World Series game. I mean, to be fair to Google, that was also my first response. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, won, he won tacos. Google knows their audience. Yeah. Yeah, it was 5-5 five, five in the top of the 11th. He stole a base with, with Springer. I think Springer hit a home run, so I don't think he hit a single. But but still, he, he was on base and stole. And, hey, he got tacos for everyone. Cameron Maben's like... I stole a base in the World Series, and all you want to talk about is the tacos. Do you think Taco Bell sends you something if you if you're the guy who steals a base and steals a taco? Do you think they send you like a plaque? They should like at a- least, considering the promotion. It was the Doritos Los Locos Tacos. <gasps> Did you a, like those? Yeah, I, I don't think I ever had one. Era. I think they've limited the. Uh, I think you can still get them, but I think you can only get nacho cheese. It used to be. Nacho cheese, Cool Ranch, and spice. Why would they go away? Was was nacho cheese the only popular one? What did you get? Uh, I normally get two of each, actually. Oh. So we're so six. Well, no, well sometimes, but sometimes four, and then depending on uh, the yeah, night. Yeah, I'd mix and match. Depending on the night, understood. But uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think Al- Altuve is going to be getting us a lot of tacos in the World Series. So hopefully the Astros are there because you know you got the big bopper behind you and the lineup for today which might be the lineup for opening day. It's Altuve, Alvarez, Tucker, Bregman, Abreu, McCormick, Diaz, Myers, and Pena in ninth. So Jake Myers, who everyone had questioned when the Astros had kind of kind of dubbed him their center fielder, his performance this spring at least got him out of the nine hole. And maybe it's more about Pena's performance that pushed him down to the nine hole more than anything else. But, but my, Myers has been good this spring. And, and if you got Myers and McCormick and Tucker, I mean – on name alone, outside of Tucker and McCormick's a good player. It does. It doesn't. 
it doesn't like strike fear in the people. But if Myers is going to be a competent bat, even better because he was a question mark and people thought maybe the Astros would do something in the offseason to strengthen their outfield. But they kind of felt like Myers was their guy. And at least spring, he's proven them right. So credit to Jake Myers. He was he's a guy who will probably he's probably one of those guys people are going to blame if things don't go well, particularly if he struggles, because he, he he's an easy target. Yeah. On thin ice already. too. Yeah. We've talked about Jake Myers and what he has to do to win Sean over. Be the World Series MVP. No, not not exclusively, but I'm saying that would that would certainly help. Yeah. That. Oh, you mean w- helping them win a World Series would help your opinion of him? Yeah. <laughs> Simple enough. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what do you? Not what, all he has to do, but th- that's the well, easiest that, that, way. That's the highest bar to clear, though. <laughs> Is there anything else he could do? Yeah, other things. But you're looking for MVP. Yeah, I don't even want to. You know, I only want to speak World Series MVP Jake Myers into existence. I don't want to speak anything lower into existence. Understood. You have high hopes for the team, and if Jake Jake Myers reaches those goals, even better. Eric, Eric, you want to talk about the NHL coming to Houston? If this is Eric Wong, I can't imagine how serious the question will be, but we'll see. Maybe, as, like as Sean put it, it could possibly be another Eric. Eric is a very popular name, too, but considering what happened earlier in the show, it feels like the Eric we all know and love. At least some of, some of you love him. But before we get to that, I want to talk about aqueductplumbingcompany.com. If you don't love Eric, you should love Aqueduct Plumbing because they're a way to protect your home from p- potential leaks. You always go home, you turn on the water, you take that for granted. And then when something bad happens, you freak out. Aqueduct Plumbing Company will prevent that freak out from happening. They are a local company, which you can trust. Billy Brown's, I talked to Billy Brown maybe a couple weeks ago, and he is based out of Clear Lake, so you know he's gone, he, he is a guy for Houston. And the national guys, can you trust them? Maybe. You can certainly trust Aqueduct Plumbing being local. They are the premier repiping company. You get a free quote. From them and the best prices in town, just call them 281 488 6238 for that free quote. 281 488 6238. If you go on the website, you'll learn all about how they protect your home your home from old pipes, clogged, and rusted. Because you know if that's what you're dealing with, a leak can't be far behind. And when a when a small thing happens in your home with water, it can turn into a big thing really quickly. You go to Aqueduct Plumbing Company to avoid that. They're repiping, they've done over a thousand of, of those, and it changes the trajectory of a home when you have when you get to avoid a potential leak once again call them make sure you call them they will get you that free price quote 281-488-6238 or just go to the website and read all about aqueduct plumbing company aqueductplumbingcompany.com that's aqueductplumbingcompany.com
Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Dell Olalea. We'll get to Eric here, and after that, I'll update you on a couple Texans that are back. Guys who you may not have known before the year. Maybe you're a big Eagles fan, so you know who this guy was. But they're bringing a couple guys who were part of the band late in the year back together, and one guy who made a big impact in a playoff game. But first, we get to Eric. Eric, what's up? Hey, guys. Great show. I was wondering, is the NHL ever going to come back or come to Houston? And, Dale, have you seen Godzilla minus one? Are you excited to see Godzilla, Fong Empire? And I heard the Texans cheerleaders are changing their uniforms to bikinis. No, you didn't. I'm going to listen. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, you always get a you always get a little extra when Eric's calling in. Unlikely with the Texans, but they're changing the uniforms. The team itself, we got we saw a leak last week late, but uh, the bikini thing unlikely. But as far as Godzilla and Godzilla minus one, I will watch the Godzilla X Kong. Is that what it, is that is that the title? Godzilla X. Well, there is an X. I don't know if you say the X. It I might I'm, just be Godzilla Kong. Go, Godzilla like Kong collab. and then and Godzilla collabing with Kong and then some some type of dynasty. I forgot what the official title is. New I dynasty? will. I will watch it we'll because try. it involves Godzilla riding. It involves Kong riding Godzilla in a scene. So I'm in. Godzilla I'm, Kong: The New Empire. Godzilla Kong: The New Empire evol- involves. Kong jumping on Godzilla's back. Is that like next week it comes out? Maybe. And riding him. So I will watch that. Specifically just to see that scene and and who thought that was a good idea and see if they pull it off. I saw it in a clip, but I want to see the entire thing. Yeah, it's it's also a little bit of the idea of like that's what they're showing in the trailer. Yes. They, now, what what are they not showing us? Well, they they showed up they showed the two destroying the, the pyramids in Egypt. They yeah. thought, hey, we'll give that to them because we got other stuff. Yeah, we got the other stuff will make them go nuts. Yeah, we got this giant orangutan who, who apparently is wreaking havoc on all the Kongs. So that's part of it. Also, he There's mentioned— also Baby Kong. In yeah. Place. Is that Kong? No, it's Baby Kong. <laughs> <laughs> is, that a, is that another Kong? Uh, that was a line from Bo- Brian Tyree Henry, who's a good actor. <laughs> Great actor somehow in these Some, movies. Well, the check's clear, Sean. I'm sure those checks are I'm great. Sure the Atlanta checks cleared too. Yeah, but that's that's like that's FX money. Uh, We're talking about movie money. Using Bullet Train with the uh, with future James Bond. Sure. Well, apparently that's been debunked. Ah. Uh, but the Kong checks have got to be pretty good. He's back for a second one. But as far as Godzilla minus one, I haven't seen. I, I do want to see that because that apparently has a whole different vibe. It's more about you know how Godzilla is an allegory for the for radiation and and dropping nuclear bombs. It's more along the lines of that as opposed to us in America just having monster fights. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny dichotomy of what, yes. we're, what these two movies are about. Are they going to make a sequel to Godzilla Minus One? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sure how, how well it did. It may, I mean, I'm doing my American sensibilities because it did so well. Of course they'll make one. Or maybe it's just a one-off because it's more about the message than milking the audience for more money. But we'll see. We'll see where, where it goes from there. I just kind of hope that we have two different. Godzilla franchises at the same going. time, and they're and, completely different in their messaging. Yeah, one of them, one of them has Brian Tyree Henry going. Is that a baby Kong? <laughs> and the other one is an allegory for dropping nuclear bombs. Yeah, and and the one in America is about Godzilla being ridden by Kong, like a horse. Well, because they're teammates on this. One. Well, of course, because the two apex they, they fought each other and. They came to a sort of resolution yeah. because Godzi- there's a bigger threat. Yeah, yeah. But Godzilla would have won the head-to-head. Godzilla washed Kong. He washed him. He had his foot on his chest, and Kong had had enough, and then Godzilla peeled off because M- M- Mecha Godzilla came into the picture. Yeah. Yes, we're both nerds. We understand. I know if you're thinking, hey, nerds, move on. Godzilla we- in four. That's all we're going to say. You don't give Kong a game? You don't nah. think you don't think Godzilla like No, not even the game three, like we have to we win. We have this to win game. at home? No. I feel I feel like I feel like Godzilla's more of the, the, the heels where he where they win the first three, they take their foot off the gas and, and four because whatever, we don't care. And they give an, <laughs> the gentleman sweep. A gentleman sweep. I think Godzilla's more of the gentleman sweep type of guy. 
<laughs> you don't think he's coming out focused after being up 3 0? Nah, I feel like I feel I feel like he took a nap in a movie. No. That Godzilla, you gotta mo- get him motivated after the first three wins. Uh, but as far as the 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 Houston hockey thing, Tillman apparently wants it to happen. He wants to be an owner of a NHL franchise and and an NBA franchise and also an owner of a university. So apparently that's what he wants. So if Tillman wants it, yes, there's a real chance it happens. I know that I think Carbach had a hockey in Houston type of event a couple weeks ago, and a lot of people showed up. It was throughout the day, and I think the number got to maybe 4,000 people showed up throughout the day. If those numbers are correct, that would suggest there is a willing and waiting group of people who want to see hockey in this town. And, you know, not not everyone here was born here, so I'm sure there are people from maybe hockey cities who would like it to be in their new hometown. So, Eric, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but why we, why would we rule it out? Hockey's throughout the Southeast. In fact, you you might say the best team in hockey right now is the Florida Panthers, and, of course, the Tampa Bay Lightning have had a run of success. So why not bring it to Houston? Can I say it'll happen? No. But there is an appetite for it, and that certainly matters. And and you have a very rich guy who wants it to happen too. So those are two things in Houston's favor. We'll just see if they can complete the deal. And the deal for the first hour is complete. Anyone else who wants to call in about Godzilla, hockey, two topics that, of course, are riveting for everyone, you, you can do that, 713-780-3776. And if I didn't have so much talking about Godzilla, I would have gotten to the Texans that are returning. We'll do that on the other side. We'll continue to talk about Otani because John Heyman, noted baseball reporter, didn't have complimentary words for his translator, and, but it had nothing to do with this gambling story. It was about just his job as a translator, apparently. Not very good at it. We'll hear from him. I don't know if I want to play the Mattress Mac thing because now Mattress Mac is Ric Flair. We've talked about this before. Doesn't Hasn't he done enough? Why are we keep running this guy out here? He doesn't need to do it anymore. The brand is strong. I think all you're doing now is diluting it, but maybe we'll play that too. we got plenty of things to get to. Also, Aaron Donald talks about why he's retired. What led to that decision? He's spoken to The Pivot. That's the Ryan Clark podcast. We'll hear from Aaron Donald, maybe the greatest defensive player of a generation, unless you believe J.J. Watt is that player. Hour one out of the way. We'll be back.
We're done with the prices, right? It's after 11 o'clock, which means a pregame show for on CBS for the tournament is on. And we are less than 15 minutes away from tip-off of Mississippi State and Michigan State. I have decided that I'm rooting for Mississippi State because I picked them in the bracket and mostly because I'm hating on Tom Izzo because of his comments about automatic bids. If you haven't done your bracket yet and you want to be involved in Bracket Madness with ESPN 97.5, it's our sixth annual Bracket Madness. You can go to ESPN975.com under the Promotions tab to register for free. It gives you a chance to win prizes. Gentle Ben, we have a prize from them, valued at $200. And we also have $50 gift cards to Star Pizza, East River 9, Republic Boot Company, and much more. Our sixth annual Bracket Madness, presented by DraftKings at the Golden Nugget, supported by Houston Powder Coder. So get involved. You got about 10 minutes to go. You can you can get your picks in. You, you can compete against us whether it be a producer or a host, we'll all be involved mostly because there's an email that said, hey, make sure you you sign up and you can see if you're better than us. Sean and I are going on vibes. So if you actually have actual insight, you'll probably be better than us or maybe our vibes are stronger than your research. You never know. I, I feel like the years where I watch the most college basketball is the year I do the worst. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like when you watch a lot of college basketball, for most – for most people, what watching a lot of college basketball means is like watching a lot of the ACC, Big East, Big Twelve. True, you're not seeing you're not Big seeing. 10. Well, Creighton's in the Big t- Big East. I was gonna say Creighton, but they used to be a mid major. Yeah. But you're not looking at what UAB no- versus whoever they're playing. Yeah, particularly the if you're not if your favorite team isn't in that conference, you don't know how good those teams are. So when they show up and they run this, a five out offense and your guards can't stay in front of them, you're like, oh. They're pretty good. I didn't know Colgate had this many white guys that could shoot. Yeah, well, you should. They're Colgate. You should just make that assumption. I didn't know it was that many, though. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I was thinking five, not seven. Yeah, they're pulling guys off the bench. That can shoot the basketball. So those are the things the tournament provides. Obviously, the storylines, getting people excited about upsets. And I did pick some. Um, I, there's, I was surprisingly enough, plenty of chalk in my final four. Uh, but, you know. What do you guys think? Go to go to go to ESPN 975.com under, under the promotions tab and put your expertise to the test and see if you're better than the, the people who work here. And you probably are because, I mean, we do this for a living. It doesn't mean we're bright. It just means this is what we've chosen to do. A couple of things to get to Texans wise as they are making still making signings. This free agency is no longer at the forefront, but they're still trying to add to the roster. And what they did is. Decide not to lose a couple pieces. Steven Sims, he of the one offensive touchdown scored in two games against the, the Ravens. He's back. Your punt returner is back. I saw people tweet when they found out he was coming back that they remembered the punt return and thought at that moment they were going to the AFC title game. When Steven Sims returned that punt, where were you, Sean? Because I think it put them up 10-3 and then Fairbairn missed the field goal that would put them up double digits. When Steven Sims is running into the end zone and you've seen your defense play, what did you think about your about the Texans at the moment? Uh, I thought they had a I mean, I, I thought they had a pretty good chance. I thought it was gonna be at the very least a game uh that goes down to the wire uh in Baltimore. Obviously, uh that didn't happen. Exactly. That was really the one one shining moment to uh steal a March Madness term for the Texans in that game, but at the time I was like, okay, they they kind of as an underdog, you kind of need plays like that where it's uh, you're not depending on field position and driving the ball down the field and stopping the other team. It's like, oh, just a big play, you know, like oh, a turnover, oh, a uh, special team score. It's like, okay, that that really helps the underdog when they get one of those, you know. Yeah, and the, like I said, the defense was playing well. That's the anatomy of an upset. You get a touchdown out of nowhere. And, of course, I think I would have felt like they're winning this game if Fairbairn's kick went in. When it was still a one-possession game at half, I felt I think the Ravens felt relief. Yeah, Some of the pressure dripped away because if they were down two scores going to halftime after only scoring three points, all the, all the misery from previous playoff failures would have been piled on, but they, I'm sure they felt pretty good, and obviously they, they dominated that second half. Yeah, it, it, is, it is weird to think about how close of a game and how, again— I thought I thought it was shaping up to be like a maybe not an instant classic, but you know a, a tight ball game late in the game where we're gonna really see 
you know, CJ Shroud in one of these big moments. And then it's like, nope, actually, the uh, the Ravens were like, all right, en- en- enough of this. So th- th- that's basically what they said after the game. They're like, they walked in the locker room. We're like, enough. What, what are we doing? Stop, we're just, let's stop playing around. Which makes me think, I know there's plenty of optimism. Beyond the New Jerseys, even if you don't like the the current ones that we see, the the traditional refresh ones as they're being tabbed, are we are the Texans really that close after what they've done this offseason? Because they didn't score an offensive touchdown against the Ravens, the, and the Ravens aren't even the, 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 the Chiefs. How close are they really? I don't know if this offseason has, has done anything to make me think they're close to the Ravens or the Chiefs. Internal growth is what I guess you're going to lean on. C.J. Stroud being better in year two and certainly Tank Dell being healthy because I don't sure you know Daniil Hunter great signing but will he be more productive than than Jonathan Grenard Jonathan Grenard had a really good year and and Daniil Hunter great player too but to assume you're just going to get that level of production from him it's possible he's a he's a really good player. I just don't know how close they are now, particularly when I think they still have a giant hole in maybe three out of the four DB spots. Stingley, really good as long as he's healthy. The other three, whether whether you think Petrie is, should be a starter, what about the other safety position, and, and of course the other cornerback position, I think there are some giant needs. And with free agency in let's say the third phase at this point. The Texans are going to maybe have to make an uncomf- uncomfortable decision about money being spent on maybe an older corner, unless they think Okuda can handle it, or maybe they think a draft pick will be the spot. But they won't get a, at least, they're not in a premier spot to draft the corner. They're going to be in the second round. Now they have two picks in the second round. So maybe, maybe they think the value is that corner. But I, I don't know if they're far away, but I don't think they've gained any ground, which maybe this free agency period isn't about. Uh, internal growth may be the way that goes. We'll see going forward. Uh, still plenty of time left to make improvements, whether it be through a trade, which you know they have been active in, or at least been a, been a t- they've attempted to be active in, or maybe the draft will be where they find a couple stars in the second round and beyond. And I'll get to that because there is an article about Texans' day two targets. We'll see what that article says and if you agree. But the other guy who's back is Derek Barnett. He was picked up off of waivers. From the Eagles, the Eagles decided they had had enough pass rush, rush help, and the older player who had been an Eagle for a long time wasn't the guy they needed. The Texans picked him up, and he and he was productive for them. So they make another move to to strengthen the defensive end position. He signs a one year deal. Derek Barnett had two and a half sacks with the Texans in his short time with the team after having none with the Eagles. So the Texans the Texans took a flyer, worked out for him, and he's back now. The defensive tackle position is still up for debate as far as how good it they'll be, but I don't think we'll have to worry about depth or production from the defensive end. They have enough guys to make plays, and and certainly we we'll, we expect another leap from Will Anderson or or a leap from Will Anderson as their prize rookie and defensive rookie of the year. So strength at defensive end, defensive tackle, yeah, and also DBs. They've got guys, just don't know if they have a great player beyond. Stingley. So uh, the Texans still is something we we will discuss. And if they make a move between now and the end of the show, Sean will hit the horn. And we haven't had it. We haven't had a need to hit the horn recently because I don't think uh, we've had a real signing. Oh, you did do that. Which one did we have? Was it Derek Barnett? I don't think it was Derek Barnett. It might have been the other show then. It Uh, might have been a different defense. Oh, it was um, the one year. It was a defensive end. You hit you hit the uh, you hit it for. I can't remember who. Oh, it was Mario Edwards, Jr. Oh, yeah, yeah. You hit the horn for Mario Edwards Jr. Of course. No, not of course. That's not an obvious thing. Mario Edwards. You question whether you should hit it for Lonnie Johnson. Remember the the initial Texan signing? I think Mario Edwards is on the same plane as Lonnie Johnson Uh, as far as news. uh, You insulted him a little bit. No, even Lonnie Johnson has a history here at least. At least that would have been news. The Texans, and it was the first signing. Of course you, of course that's at a higher plane than Mario Edwards Jr., he was good at Florida State. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was on that national title team <laughs> over a decade ago. You do make a point there, I guess. Yeah, he was good. He was he was good on that team. So was Jameis. I'm trying to think. Kelvin Benjamin Kelvin was good on that Benjamin. team, too. Yeah. Should the Texans make a run at him? Hmm. I don't think he's in football anymore. No. 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 Is uh, Travis Rudolph around? 
he had other issues. Uh, uh, if you look up Travis Rudolph, he had other issues. Uh, I did. I I am not aware of those. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry to bring him. If up. you thought Joe Mixon was in question as far as the Texans signing him, just look at Travis Rudolph's history and see. I mean, I got a picture of him now in in jail garb, giving testimony. That would tell you about Travis Rudolph's history. Not a target for the Texans. Not a target for anyone. He's had some issues. Target for the state. <laughs> well, yes, and they and they hit that target, uh, and he didn't make it. He didn't make it difficult for them. But I think he's now out. So if the te- no, no. Oh, he was acquitted. Look at that, falsely accused. I just looked it up. Acquitted. Slander. Uh, acquitted less than a year ago. Slanderous. Uh, he was on trial for murder, by the way. And he maintained self-defense. And the jury said, we believe you. So if the Texans need a wide receiver, it won't be Travis Rudolph. And it might and it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> if you, Yeah, I got you on that one. We're, we're glad he didn't kill anyone. <laughs> yeah, but we're not signing him. And Odell Beckham Jr. may not be available either. If you had dreams of that, he's currently visiting Dolphins. And the Dolphins have made him a priority as far as bringing bringing in a free agent wide receiver to team up with Waddle and Tyreek. So if you liked Odell Beckham Jr., and he was pretty good in the back half of the year with Baltimore, he's not the guy anymore. But if you're looking for a third to team up with Tank and Nico, he might have been an option you you were hoping for. If the Dolphins let him out of the building, maybe you get the opportunity. But the thought is he won't be let out of the building. That is such a Dolphins move. To sign Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. It, it just, this this version of the Dolphins, yes, it is. It just feels like, yeah, yeah. sign us up. Yeah, he had, he averaged over 16 yards, 16 and a half yards per catch. So that's productive with, with Lamar Jackson. And he will probably, you would consider him their third option last year when you think about before, even before, even after Mark Andrews got hurt, Isaiah likely became a target. And then you also had Zay Flowers. So if you are finding your way to 16-plus yards per catch, that's pretty good as a third option. So we'll see if the money plays a part in him not signing. But he could be off the market, and that's another big name. And I use only say big name because uh, the, the game ain't great right now. Yeah, it, it, his name is more is, is brings more than uh, his actual uh, production on the field. But, you know, he'll, he's good depth behind River Craycraft. Oh, you saw that signing. Oh, or maybe you're making a joke, but they did bring back River Craycraft yesterday. <laughs> and Braxton Varios. Yeah. Uh, I, I know I know where my guys are at. Your, your guys. Braxton's my guy. Played at, played at my favorite school. Uh, but, yeah, so free agency, and if we're talking about Odo Beckham Jr. at this point, you know free agency is dry. But maybe the Texans make a move. Tyler Boyd is out there. If they look to improve their wide receiver depth that way, because we know they tried. Keenan Allen was on the radar. They just didn't get the deal done. Chicago got him done. And speaking of that, Caleb Williams Pro Day was yesterday, and Keenan Allen was there. And someone said something very funny. Not if you're a Caleb Williams fan. They said he he remind he has the mannerisms of Carl Anthony Carl Anthony Towns, which wouldn't make me feel great if I'm a Bears fan. If that's who he's compared to, not great. Carl Anthony Towns currently hurt, and the Timberwolves leaning on Anthony Edwards, who was the was one of the main characters for Twitter earlier in the week because of his dunk. But as always, Twitter moved on because that's what we do. We are way beyond the break. We'll come back. We'll continue to talk about the Texans. We'll actually play some sound. I do I do want to hear from John Heyman because he was less than respectful of the translator for Shohei Otani, Ipe. Mazahura? John, John Heyman, not a fan of the work the translator does. We'll, we'll hear from him, and we'll also hear from... J.B. Bickerstaff, gambling is a big storyline in the world of sports today, whether it be about Shohei Otani or just o- overall with the tournament. We know gambling will be a big part of that. Bickerstaff talks about maybe the toll it takes on the people who are being bet on. We'll hear from him, too. We've got a, we got a couple of other things to get to before we wrap it up. It's Sean. I'm Dell. Call the show if you at 713-780-3776. Remember, you can tweet at us, Sean, at Sean A. Mapes and at Dell V2. We'll be back.
The Del Olalea Show continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's your host, Del Olalea. Welcome back. The tournament, at least the real one that we all focus on, is underway. Sure, the first four happened the last couple of days, but it's the big timer right now. Michigan State and Mississippi State are underway, a nine versus an eight. Uh, Tom Izzo versus... Can we name the Mississippi State coach offhand? If I gave you 40 guesses, do you think you can get it? Is it Ben Howland? He was there. Is he still there? I don't know. We're, I'm going to look. <laughs> that, that's my only. That's my one and only guess. It is my own. I think maybe a Stansberry at some point might have been a coach there, too. Let's sure. see the Mississippi your, State head coach. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I think maybe Rick Stansberry might have been the coach at one point. But it's a guy by the name of Chris Jans. Okay. Wouldn't recognize him if Chris Jans was punching me in the face. I'm like, who is this? Why is this guy? I don't know. I don't know Chris Jans, but he is the coach of Mississippi State, and they are up against. Talk about a difference in star power. You got Tom Izzo, who is he overrated, Sean? I mean, I know we, they everyone loves him partly because of the mentality, but one title in how long does he get more shine than he should? It's only been one. I feel like all the co- all those coaches get more shine than they should. Like Jim Beheim had the has the same resume. Yeah, and he had Car- and he won it with Carmelo. Yeah, and he won it thirty years into his tenure. Yeah, <laughs> he, he got the job in like the seventies. Didn't win until oh three. Um, Izzo Izzo's interesting because it is. He has this situation where he doesn't really lose early very often with all these teams. So he's always he's always making a run, but he doesn't exactly – does he make Final Four? How many Final Fours has he made? That's that that's what will tell me if uh, overrated bum or he's been to, all-time well, great. He's been to eight Final Fours. Uh, you can't uh, call him a bum. No, no. And I the credit he should get is because generally he doesn't have – Overly talented teams that are overwhelming people with talent. Yeah, I think I saw I saw a stat somewhere that he has a winning record as the lower seeded team in the tournament. Which like he he has a, a winning record. Yeah, and you and he is no Tony Bennett, where he's lo- as you said losing in the first round all the time. Uh, the last time he lost in the first first round was twenty was fifteen sixteen the fifteen sixteen season. Um, so. And beyond that, as I continue to look, he's it's he's it's happened four or five times. But when you consider his tournament resume, he he's he's up there. I think that saves him from uh, from w- overrated status. Yeah, I think I think I think Jim Beheim's the only, uh, oh, not the only overrated coach in college basketball, but I, I feel like he's the main one. Yeah, that I think of. Izzo avoids my slander when yeah. you when you actually look at the resume. Sure, only the one title. But he 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 coaches those teams and he's not getting yeah I'm not gonna pretend like he doesn't get great players but he's not getting the guys who eventually becomes high lottery picks yeah, those aren't the he, guys he gets he doesn't get the North Carolina Duke Kentucky guys no no he he gets guys who he's probably more in the Kelvin Sampson mode as far as the level of talent he gets because well Kelvin Sampson had Trace Walker who was a lottery pick he he's produced draft picks but. Walker's been the only one who was even coming in. People thought could be a lottery pick. Um, I think those two are more comparable, whether it be their attitude as far as how their teams play and and the, the type of guys they get into their program. And hopefully Calvin Sampson um, gets gets a Final Four run this year. They play Longwood, and so, somehow Longwood got into the mentions today, Sean. Hmm? Because Who's the long, not your mentions, but the show's mentions, oh. because of oh, the previous show's mentions, because we mentioned Longwood and the Cougs playing them, and then someone we started making jokes uh, about what? Odd, oddly enough, that jokes were made because we were worried about the Cougs because teams like Fairleigh Dickinson were were upsetting teams. And, I, I've se- I've seen this uh, deep statistical analysis. Yes, yes, you see what we're going, what we're Saint going Peter's. with. Saint Peter's, Saint Peter's, yes, that's another team who had a g- great run. Got the other one. Well, I think the ones we focused on were Fairleigh Dickinson and St. Peter's. The t- and then, uh, well, we got Longwood, and people started cracking jokes, and Longwood saw it. Apparently, they're searching their name because they weren't at it because who would know the Longwood Lancers? Disrespect. 
<laughs> we were well, people were disrespecting them, but we didn't know they're they're at, and neither did this listener. But he made a joke, and Longwood said seven out of ten for the joke, one out of ten for the content. Oof. So now they know who we are, which 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 has been a theme the last couple last like eighteen hours or so. We're in the crosshair, or you're in. The crosshair. I was in the crosshairs, definitely. I told Sean during the break I had uh, about twenty plus follower requests from people I had never seen or heard of, and it was a it was some rocket accounts and also uh, the people of Turkey. And Sean and I have come to the conclusion I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep the tweets protected until let's see through the weekend, maybe because I don't I want to live in peace. I got X Men '97 to watch. I watched the first episode yesterday. I want to watch the second episode of the premiere today. I just want to live in peace, watch the games, and hopefully my bracket isn't as bad as I suspect. And right now, Mississippi State is doing us. It's pulling up Virginia right now. Four points in the first three and a half minutes. We'll see if that continues. But as they trail Michigan State 8-4, to four. before we go to the break, I did want to play this. John Heyman, longtime reporter and breaker of news in baseball, he he has had interactions with Ipe, who he's now just a one-name guy. He is the translator and the subject of a scandal involving Shohei Otani, Ipe Mizahura. Hopefully that's close enough. So John Heyman has had interactions with him, and – well, not very complimentary. Here's John Heyman discussing the translator for Shohei Otani. I can say I don't think he was a very good interpreter either. I can say that now. Uh, I should have been able to say that at any point. In fact, I tried to ask him, uh, you know, in, when I was in Dodger camp, something about Otani, and he told me that he was, could take questions but not on Otani. So, I mean, you know, I, I guess if I knew about the, the gambling issue, that would have been a good question to ask about him, but there really wasn't anything to ask his interpreter, other than about Otani, that was the reason that he was there. I don't mind that. I don't mind hate. But if I'm, I'm Ipe, come on, man. You know you know, I'm probably taking the fall for the more famous guy. Why you got to come at me about my, my level of interpreting? Because, to be fair, if Otani doesn't want to talk to John Heyman, he's going to throw Ipe into the breach and go tell John Heyman something that, he, that I need so he doesn't talk to me. If I'm if I'm if, if I'm, EP, I'm like I'm just doing the job my, that my man wants me to, why you gotta come at me, and particularly on a day where I now I'm the most famous person in baseball, because I'm associated with the previous most famous person in baseball. Yeah, I also it doesn't even sound like it's really an interpret uh, interpretation. Yeah, right. it's not his actual job. Yeah, it's it's he was just like oh he's not available. He's running like, interference for the star. Well, yeah, which is like. John Heyman, this happens all the time in every sport where guys who should be allowed to, to, to speak, it's like, oh, they, they won't be allowed to speak today. They're not available today. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, John- D- Dylan Brooks, last playoffs, literally did not just, talk just after, after every Memphis Grizzlies loss. He just left. I'm leaving. And Heyman, you know, John Heyman, you know Shohei threw that guy at you to tell you that, so... He didn't have to discuss yeah. whatever you wanted to talk about. But He's running the interference. Today's the easy day to, to, throw to take shots. your shot. Definitely. Yeah. The last, the next couple of days, last night and today, we're going. Everybody's going to get after the, the translator and talk about him when we all know what the real deal is. I mean, the real deal is the most famous player in baseball may have a gambling problem, but but baseball doesn't want that to be the case. No. We will we will use the translator as cannon fodder, just so. Just so we can we can wipe this under the rug. I mean, even like best case scenario, it's like, like he was stealing from Shohei Otani, and Shohei didn't care until yesterday because he was stole, in the cl- he was in the dugout yesterday. So four million dollars from him, and he didn't care until it became public, and now he had to get fired. Yeah, what no. story do they want us to believe? Mm. It can't be this one. They got to change it up because this one is something no one believes. Yeah, massive the- theft. That's, yeah, that's the kind of the headline right now. Massive death from translator. Yeah. He used what he got. He was wiring Shohei's money. Somehow he had access to it, like he was his financial planner. Yeah. How? How? <laughs> this is now a funny time after the first hour we had, where we tried to talk Otani and then got derailed for <laughs> by for thirty five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Now we're actually good at getting into how much. How much access to all of that stuff do you think an interpreter, the average 
major league ba- like the what like the does guys Jordan's who, interpreter have yeah, access guy, to his accounts? The guys that work for the Astros, like <laughs> yeah, do they have Jordan's bank account information? Does anyone have these guys? That's bank not accounts? part of the job. No. So, are we suggesting that? This like are they family friends and that's why he's the interpreter? How did how did he meet him? What's yeah. the connection? Why would he be able to have access to Shohei Otani's funds and have control over that much money? With, yeah, there are safeguards in place even if you do have control. Yeah, maybe, I, that's the only thing. Is like, yeah, we were super tight, and then he had all that information for me. I and don't. He stole it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because of his overwhelming gambling because of debts, his gambling addiction, because which I did not know about. Because I was paying him so much money, he could rack up those type of charges as an interpreter. Yeah, the I guess you could say that. No, it's not. It doesn't. It's like not illegal, but it makes it slightly better. Where it's like actually Shohei Otani was like trying to bail him out, maybe. Yeah, but if you're sending money to a, an but illegal you, bookie, yeah, why that's you send illegal. It to the bookie. He can't. Yeah, if you're bailing him out, you're doing a friend a solid. You gotta wash that money a little. Yeah, you can't be so obvious. A book. He's like, yeah, just wire me the money. Do you think Shohei Otani hasn't seen enough like of uh, like mob movies or like Breaking Bad, so he didn't know about money laundering? I don't know how popular American culture and how it travels to Japan, but he's had to have seen enough to know. I'm sure they 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 have mob movies in Japan. He shouldn't. He's uh, probably yeah. seen those too. The Yakuza movies. Yeah, or or ju- yeah, crime movies overall. I'm sure he's seen those too. And what I, my one thought be. Not that I know anything about marriage, but you know, you see the, you see stuff on television and movies about how, hey, if you have any secrets, tell me about them now. Just tell me. Be honest with me. You think his wife is like, it's been great. I mean, I've got this. Maybe she maybe she likes attention. Maybe she doesn't. But this overwhelming welcome to the the world of baseball she's been getting, and then within what within days of their marriage going like a public, week. there's yeah. a giant scandal involving her husband. I want I wonder if he told her. Because everything had been great. She, ESPN had been putting her on. She was hanging out with all her friends at the game yesterday, and now this. Yeah, so Ipe, uh, how how close would you say you are to Ipe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. It, what, a, what a way to start what they had hoped would be a, a, uh, a distraction-free, ever-binding, forever mar- marriage. And now your husband, along with his translator— or maybe part of the biggest scandal in baseball, well, since the Astros. I mean, since 2019, uh, I guess. Right. I mean, I don't think it's I didn't think it's that big of a deal, but we know how it was treated. Yeah. And I I that's that's one of the more interesting parts to me is like how does this like you mentioned, does this kind of get brushed under the rug? Does it all get pinned on Ipe? Or is do we do we at one point find out like the the whole truth? Uh of this, because I think right now, kind of all options are in play. I would lean towards this kind of just gets pinned on Ipe, swept under the rug, and yeah. it turns into like a look how good of a season Shohei Otani's with all the distractions. With all the distractions, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. That's like, well, how involved in the distractions is he? Oh no, maybe he is the distraction. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we got a question from a listener. And, you know, it's Astrocentric. He asks, if this was Jordan, how would it be treated? I don't want to put I don't want to put that in the ether. I don't want that to be anything that we can think of. We've had enough of, of Major League Baseball and the baseball world coming down on the Astros. But if it was Jordan, they would try to contract the Astros. They would try to end the Astros as we know it. Because we couldn't get him the first time. Let's end him this time. Jim Crane would be forced to sell like he's Donald Sterling. And he's yeah. Like, Wait, what? I didn't do anything. <laughs> what? Yeah. T- Greg. They would try to root in the Astros and ban them from baseball overall because, uh, because we know a lot of people think they didn't get enough. Of, they didn't get their pound of flesh when it came to the Astros because you know none of the players were punished and they didn't take anything away. So that question I think is pretty clear. They would try to make sure the Astros didn't exist anymore. And now we transition to legal gambling with mybookie.ag. You don't need an illegal bookie. You don't need to take the fall for your friend. You don't need to wire money to protect him to an illegal bookie. You just go to mybookie.ag and take advantage of what they give you to enjoy betting in a legal and safe way. So if you go to mybookie.ag, you can get help in betting on these NCAA tournament games. If you are one who's a novice but wants to make these games more interesting, 
MyBookie is the place for you. They give you bonuses for signing up. Go to the promo code is bet975 if you didn't know. Bet975 at MyBookie.ag gives you the option to take advantage of their experts. So you want to know about the odds. You want to know about their predictions for these tournament games. Or maybe you want to know about the Rockets tonight against Chicago. MyBookie.ag takes care of that for you. And, of course, if sports gambling isn't your sole focus, they do provide you the, the option for those online games, whether it be poker, baccarat, Blackjack and those roulette tables, which are made even better by the in in the flesh dealers in the live casino. So you've got sports betting on 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 the tournament games, basketball, hockey. If you're into that, and you also have the casino games, just go to mybookie.ag, mybookie.ag. Use promo code bet nine seven five. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with mybookie. It's the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to the Veritex Community Bank Studios with Dell Olalea and his intrepid, most outstanding, arguably the greatest producer of all time, the one and only Sean Mapes. Well, I agree with a lot of that. I mean, I'm a producer, too. I'm sitting right here, Michael Carroll. Hey, let's uh, let's not cause division. Sit arguably. Well, that, that, that's, why, that's why I'm not completely upset with him. He did give an opening for me to jump in. I think I think we're both one seeds in the bracket. Nice. W- which one of us is Purdue from last year? Probably. Of us. Yeah. Well, let's just say we make it past the Joe first. Joe George. <laughs> well, I'm sure Joe will, will appreciate that if he's listening. By the by the way, speaking of that, Joe George and Paul Gallant will be out at Carbach today. Their show begins in about 20 minutes. They'll be at Car. Carback Brewery. They'll be followed by the Killer Bees. And then tomorrow, the entire station will be out, starting with John Lance at Nick's place as we celebrate the beginning of the tournament. So come out and join us. Go out to Carbach today or show up at Nick's place throughout the day if you want to see the guys do the show, talk about the games, and and just be involved in overall tomfoolery. Since we are in a short segment, I did want to mention this because I just saw it on YouTube. Sean, where are you on House of the Dragon slash Game of Thrones stuff? Because a new trailer came out for the green side. I guess if you watch that show, you know there are the Targaryens and the High Towers. As far the greens and the blacks or the reds, I'm not sure what the, how the Targaryens are. are it's black. The blacks. So the greens versus the blacks. So you're in. You know. 
So you're watching it? Or did yes. you watch House of Dragon? Mm-hmm. So a trailer came out today about the Greens. Um, I know they're, it's based off like a, it's kind of like a un, unverified history. And what the show is doing is filling in between the lines of some unreliable narrators. So th- there are spoilers out there if you want to watch. I've avoided those. I had I read the the four Game of Thrones books or the Song of Ice and Fire books. Uh, so I knew some of the details. And then obviously George R. R. Martin decided I'm so famous I'm going to stop writing. So the guys who created the show had to get ahead of it. And we all know seven and eight weren't great seasons. So you're in. So this show comes back in June. I believe it's June. Yeah, I think I saw like June 12th. Okay, so Shogun will be over in five weeks. So we'll have a bit of a a runway to maybe pick something else before House of the Dragon comes back. So I'm glad I have a producer who can discuss this show because this particular particular universe, I guess you want to call it, when we consider the the previous show, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, and that that's really what the what the selling point for me was was like okay go back into Game of Thrones like clean slate off of like you said seasons uh, seven and eight yeah and uh, I think it it fully delivered yeah season, season especially once it got cooking well yeah once, like once the kids episode, got older and the kids were yeah about like that business four ish yeah that's I, when it really yeah when once they kind of transitioned from the young cast to the the older versions of the yeah. cast uh we got to a level where okay all the all the hey we were friends and we had just had some issues until we're, we're about that life uh that dragon uh we're, we're that dragon riding life that dragon riding life because we're trying to secure power uh i was in um but i was always going to be i'm a sucker for for the for the universe anyway so if you are a fan the trailer came out an hour ago and uh it'll be about the the high towers and i'm sure they'll have one about about yeah. the Targaryens. I'll, I'll, I'll wait until watch the the Targaryen trailer. Uh, I'm good with the high. You don't want high tower. You don't want to watch the high tower nah, one. Keep it. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't care what those people have to say. Well, there are dragons involved in this trailer, though. Yeah. You don't like the homicidal Kristen Cole? No. The murdering knight? No. No. Oh, that guy. That guy. I'll have to rewatch season one because. Uh, uh, you, thankfully, you slipped in a little bit of his biography because I did you not didn't know remember him. him. I did not know him off of his name. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, bleep that guy. That guy <laughs> oh, sucks. so you are squarely on a Targaryen side. I, the Rhaenyra squarely. side. I'm squarely against that guy. That guy. Yeah, sucks. he's a, he's nuts. <laughs> he is nuts. But uh, I would say I lean Targaryen. Yes, understood. I like. I I'm don't know. Black. I don't know. Oh, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> people can't see what I did, except for the people on YouTube, obviously. Uh, there you go, Sean. I'm with you. Team Black. <laughs> United Front. That's right. Um, shout out to House of the Dragon. An- another trailer's out as they try to get us more and more excited about that show. I don't need the help. I'm all in. I'm just waiting for it to come back. But, yeah, if you haven't noticed, we will talk about pop culture and TV whenever you like. Right now, Shogun is the thing. And speaking of pop culture, tomorrow, Michael Carroll will join us. He of Comicast. He is the host of that with John Lee. And that show airs every Sunday at 10 a.m. And he'll kind of give us a preview of what they're talking about and also what we should watch. Because maybe you are going to be fried on the tournament and you want something other than college basketball to watch. Michael will provide that for you. And uh, his suggestions are always really, really good. He's kind of in tune to what's good and what's not. And sometimes what's bad but good. That'll give you an opportunity to laugh at how bad something is. Michael certainly can provide that as well. As I said, this was going to be a short segment because we have been kind of verbose and long-winded. So we'll get out of here and get back on time. And remember, coming up next are Gallant and George out at Carbox. Go out there. Carbox's a great place, even if there wasn't a show to watch. But you do have some in-house entertainment if you if you choose to go that route. Michael, uh, not Michael, Paul and George and Joe. Up next, and then the Killer Bees after that. We got one more segment, segment, excuse me, one more segment to go here, and then we'll wrap it up for the day. Not for Sean. Sean's still stuck. I wouldn't call it stuck, though. He's going to watch the tournament games and somewhat ignore Paul and Joe. I'm not saying that's all that's going to happen, but I can probably say at about at about 2.30, maybe 2 o'clock, the attention levels will be diverted to the television. Yeah, try 1.30. Oh, I was trying to give once, them. I was trying to at least give them two hours. Once they get once once we get to multiple games on, because right now it's easy. It's just one game on. That's true. It's only once on. we get to like multiple endings, 
Sorry, guys. God forbid if there's a couple buzzer beaters on the horizon. Yeah. Forget forget about it. You better you better carry that show by yourself while Sean is distracted by more meaningful things like the tournament. So one more segment for us. We'll be back. This is the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. We now know the guy after the guy. Usually you don't want to be that guy, but maybe in this case, if you're the interpreter that has to follow Ipe, you're in a good spot. Will Iriton is the interpreter that Shohei Itani will use. He was Kent Maeda's interpreter. So... This you're not you're not having to follow a legend. You're the guy you're the guy that everyone's gonna look at and go, at least he's not at least he's not Ipe. That's the legacy of Ipe. Yeah. John Heyman especially. Like, thank <laughs> yeah. God it's not Ipe. Thank God Ipe was terrible at it. I don't job. have anything against the gambling. It's the it's the, it's the not his, letting me talk to Shohei Otani one time. Yeah, because Ipe's making those decisions. <laughs> he's the one who's telling o- Otan Otani what to do. You met bring up brought up something that the internet has latched on to regarding this. Ben Verlander's take on this. Or lack thereof. Lack thereof. Well, there it is. I am I have been relatively ignorant to Ben Verlander's love of Otani. Is is this something apparently everyone knows that he that that's his dude. That it's because his uh his podcast, he has very he just goes on slurp fests of uh slurp of fest. a, Yeah, of Otani. Uh where, you know, he's done like Otani shows, he's like traveled uh to games to have Otani, uh, not even like on, but just to like just have to be a, around him, just to have like a video, like a Twitter video. Who is a bigger influence on Ben Verlander currently? O- Shohei Otani. I was gonna go or his brother Justin or his brother. <laughs> I Shohei. mean Justin or or Otani. I, th- I think it's Otani. Uh, he like loves Otani. It's crazy how much he loves. I think there's a point. I want to say last season, maybe the season before, where he would do like two episodes a week, and then he would do one Shohei Otani episode a week. Like, I know you're looking for engagement and clicks, but there's a, there's a other thing. You know, I don't even know if I, if I can blame him because are, how many stars actually exist in baseball? Like, yeah. guys that people, like, there are I, star players as far as what they do on the field, but guys that people will f- come to your show to watch, to, yeah. to hear you talk about. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure he did crazy numbers in Japan too. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's a play as well. 
So while it's funny, I can't really blame him. And I'm and all this stuff is about the numbers, and I'm sure he saw an uptick when he talks about Otani. So yeah. he, so he'll continue to talk it's, about it. It's just funny that of anyone to have like a love of or of any baseball player that Ben Verlander would be like <laughs> openly biased towards and like have a love fest about. It's uh, not Justin Verlander, his brother. It's it's Joey Otani. Well, there's there are too many nepotism allegations as it is. He's got to be like, look, the, the block is too hot. <laughs> yeah, is you, what you're saying you got to you got to have people look at it in a different direction. If, and if people are going to, as you as you said, use the term slurp fest when we're talking about a player, let it be about one of the the biggest stars in baseball, not my brother. He's he's heard the stuff about his brother for years now. Yeah, he's probably he's like, oh, I know he's good. Yeah, roll I roll. And, and at least Shohei doesn't give up yeah. early home runs in playoff games. But that's because he's never well, in he's yeah, never in yeah, any playoff yeah, games. Come on. Come on. I, I, I was going to clean it up. Uh, I was going to get there. The first half. <laughs> yeah, we'll I had you. Disrespect him a little bit. I had you in the first half. I did. <laughs> I, I ain't going <laughs> to I did have you in the first half. But I was going to get there. Um, yeah, the Ben Verlander thing. We'll see if he ever responds about the Otani stuff. It seems unlikely. You got to. You got to. It's your cash cow. You don't you don't insult him. You make sure he's protected. That's just kind of how I, it goes. I think he's just going to follow the party line. He's, oh, you think he's going to just go with where the where the wind takes him? No, I think he's going to follow the like Oh, Ife is, yeah, is the guy. It, it's like, man, it's it's I bet he says it's heartbreaking cuz you know, Shohei trusted Ife. And he broke his heart. You yeah. broke my heart. Ife. You yeah. broke my heart. <laughs> yeah, like in in the Godfather. Godfather. <laughs> yeah. This is Ipe. And, Verl- and 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 everyone's like, he didn't do anything to you, Ben. Why are you so upset? You broke my heart, Ipe. Yeah. Well, Ipe, Ipe is getting taken out on the boat, apparently, the way things are going. Is Ipe, like, the fourth biggest star in MLB right, right now? Because now? Oh, ta- we're just saying Ipe, and everyone's he's a, like, yeah. He's a one-name guy now. It's Ipe. It's Otani. Who else would it be? Who are the top? Who beyond those two? I don't judge. Yeah, it's the it's the Yankee runoff. Judge sure. bets. Altuve. And Altuve, it's not universal love. Like no, it is with Otani. It definitely is not. And maybe the Otani stuff has changed as we go forward. But probably Altuve, partly because of the uh, the outside of actual on the field stuff that the Astros have dealt with, and he has been blamed for unreasonably so. And. Otani, Ipe, and maybe Judge. Maybe that's it. And if Mike Trout could ever do anything in a in a game that's meaningful, he would certainly jump up there too. But that feels unlikely uh, for for the Angels. The Angels lost Otani, and we're like, thank God at this point. <laughs> I mean, although all the things have happened under their watch, could you imagine the smoke coming for the coming for the Angels for this? Where it's like. The, what a what a crappy organization letting this fly. <laughs> and th- they've had a bit of a sca- they have, they've had scandals surrounding yeah, them. Yeah. So this this would be wouldn't be new as far as dealing with bad PR. But it's funny the Dodgers are going to catch all of it, even though all of it all of it happened with under the Angels' watch. Not that they're responsible, but he was an angel when all this stuff happened. But now he's a Dodger, and we can take heart in knowing their fans now have to swallow this and deflect and place blame on. On anyone and everyone that isn't their star player. And we'll see if Major League Baseball follows suit. But I think this show has decided that it'll be something that's swept under the rug. And hopefully, if you're Major League Baseball, people buy it. But this show ain't buying it. We're, we got our eyes squarely set on number 17. We just want some answers. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, like, we're like the detectives that knock on, knock on uh, a character's door. And it's just like we we just have some questions we want to yeah. ask. You're not under arrest. No. We just like you to ask some questions. You can do either do it now or we can take you down to the station. What what would you prefer? Hey, you're only, you're only a witness now. You don't want to become a person of interest. So answer our questions, and we'll and we'll see what that is going forward. I I can't imagine. I I think it's like the Jordan thing. I mean, they won't send him to go play basketball. How sick would that be, though? Well, he's he's got a in house trainer already. He's got a wife who's really pretty good. He would yeah. have someone to train him. Yeah. That'd be – oh, man. That'd be great if he's just, like, in the G League if, Ignite. <laughs> yeah. the the He's an overtime elite. The the minor league version of basketball. Send him to the G League and have him, and have him be, like, a 35% shooter. 
just the equivalent of Michael. And anytime he hit a triple, people would get really excited. Yeah. If he hit double digits in a game, people would be thrilled. Much, much like any time Michael Jordan hit a home run um, back way back when. He's just facing up in like <laughs> in like the mid range doing Carmelo Anthony jab steps, and everyone's going, <gasps> "Yeah, never, <laughs> never mind the result." <laughs> yeah. Uh, so our hope is that Shohei gets banished to the G League, and he's at, and he plays for the. He wouldn't probably pay, play for the Vipers. But playing against them nice, would be nice to see. But I imagine he'll be just fine because he's got his fall guys, Chris Carter would say. That'll wrap it up for us today. We are done. We'll be at Nick's place. Well, at least I will be at Nick's place tomorrow following John and Lance. What's your setup? Are you going to be at Nick's place? Yes, I am going to be at Nick's place. We're having Michael Carroll come in to uh, run the board, actually. Oh, so I, we'll have to talk to him. As a producer, as opposed to just a guest. Yes. Tomorrow. Yes. So around a little bit before News of the Weird, I think, I'm going to leave here, get in the car, get to Nick's place in time uh, to do the show with you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So Sean will join me out at Nick's place tomorrow. Hope, hopefully you guys do too. We all know Nick's is a fun place to watch games. It's a fun place for big events, and the tournament is one of the bigger events of the year. You got games all day. Come out and eat. Some of you like to drink. Some of you start very early. I've seen it. Don't stop tomorrow. John won't be able to. It's Lent for him. So punish John by drinking in front of him. I'm sure he'll enjoy it. Taunt him like he taunts you. As I said, we're done. The Kalant and George show is up next. Out at Carbach. Go join those guys out there, too. They'll be out there till 3, and then the Killer Bees will follow them as the brackets have begun. The madness has begun. And what ain't mad? What ain't madness right now is is Miss State's performance down double digits with two minutes ago. Michigan State in control of that one. So Tom Izzo continuing the trend, at least right now, if not getting upset in the first round. We'll see how things go. In fact, they're the ninth seed, so being the lower seed is his thing, and it looks like he's going to come out on the on the winning end one more time. I'll talk to you tomorrow.
Broadcasting live from inside the restaurant at Carbach Brewing. Paul Gallant, Joe George here with you till 3 o'clock. The Killer Bees will be here until 6. They already gave us a nice little Crawford Bach to start the day. Oi! Nice yes. and tasty. It's very good. Yeah, we'll be out here all day till 6 o'clock. Come on, visit us. It's a great place to watch Mar March Madness. Obviously, on a day like today, you can't experience the maybe the best part of Carbach, which is the patio area, the outdoors, because it's awful outside, but a great outdoor viewing area. I've spent a ton of time here. I, lo I love coming to Carbach, so excited to be here today. They got some pub specials going on right now. Uh, enjoy a burger and Bach, a free glass for just $20, March 20th to April 10th. In celebration of Bach Day, they're running $4 box all month long. You can check out their fun series brews only available in the pub and beer garden. And, Paul, we got, we got you know, thinking like last night, getting ready for the show. What are we talking about today? Texans aren't doing much. You know, Astros. we got to hit on the big stuff. And then all of a sudden, Shohei Otani happens. And <laughs> Shohei Otani's interpreter has been fired by the Los Angeles Dodgers because he apparently owed – and a legal bookie, four and a half million dollars. And it started off with a resignation, and then the Sho Shohei Otani's lawyers had to get involved. This is just the beginning, but this screams madhouse, all of it. And it reads like our first legitimate betting scandal in sports in a long time. Now, we don't know if baseball, betting on baseball is, is involved in this, or if it's something else, but... It's interesting to say the to say the least. Suspicious, 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 suspicious. That's from Fiddler on the Roof. It is great musical. It is. It's a good musical. People are staring at us already. Hell yeah, let's go. Uh, look, the guy, per what we're supposed to believe took four and a half million dollars of Shohei Otani's money. Okay, sure. That's I guess I'm supposed to believe that because that's what we're being told. And in 2024, you don't ask questions. You believe what you're told. The Bowen guy killed himself. Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Shohei Otani's interpreter store stole four and a half million dollars from Shohei Otani. Sure. And, you know, I don't want to sound xenophobic like some other shows, but I've been watching Shogun. I've been watching Tokyo Vice. I feel like I know the ins and outs of Japan. And with the masculine urge to mansplain Japan that I have right now, whether it's samurai culture or Yakuza culture, the idea that anyone would be, be able to illegally gamble four and a half million dollars worth of money that is on credit from somebody, that being allowed for a person like this, not a made man like Shohei Otani, who is remarkably private with everything he does, including the fact that, you know, he just got married and no one knew about yeah. it. There's a lot of suspicious stuff here, and I'm all here for it. I want to see the Los Angeles Dodgers deal with a public embarrassment on their hands in the same way that we, of course, saw the Houston Astros deal with back in 2017. Will it happen? I'm skeptical, Joe, but I love it. it will it happen to that extent for the Dodgers? No. Will it happen to that extent for Shohei Otani? The answer might be yes because, look, this is – Regardless, this is a massive issue, right? You have really, like, th I think three possible outcomes. And my guy, Jim Rodriguez, who works for BetUS, tweeted this out last night, so I don't want to take the, the full credit for this, but I very much agree with him. Otani is, A, a degenerate gambler who is using a <laughs> fall guy. B, he is the best friend on planet Earth, and he just cleared his degenerate gambler's friend's $4.5 million debt. Or three, the interpreter is maybe the scum of the earth and stole $4.5 million from Shohei Otani. But the facts are there are two wire transfers that ESPN themselves saw and confirmed that have Shohei Otani's name on it Uh oh. that sent $500,000 to a bank account. So even if he is just paying off this illegal gambling shark, then it's still an issue. Even if they're not betting on baseball, it's 
that amount of money is a huge, huge red flag for a game, specifically this game, that has the all-time hits leader being left out of the Hall of Fame. Now you have the Pete best Rose. player on planet Earth in almost any sport, Shohei Otani, being wrapped up in this. That was pretty funny hearing John and Lance call Shohei Otani, Shohei Rose, <laughs> Pete Otani. Pete Otani. This morning. I mean, think about this. You know, the integrity of the game. Shohei Otani won two MVPs. How many times did the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, of California, of the United States of America, of North America, formerly of Pangea, of planet Earth, of the Milky Way galaxy, how many times did they <coughs> have a winning record? Zero times. That's true. Pete Rose won three World Series. Now, a lot of people are going to say, Paul, that's a disingenuous argument, and it sure is, but you know what? We're keeping the same energy that Dodgers fans and Yankees fans had with the Astros in 2017. Yep. Pete Rose, three World Series. Shohei Otani, zero seasons above 500. Hmm, interesting. And you want to talk about, like, is it possible for, for – and we'll have a bigger conversation about this when, when we get to 2 o'clock, but you know, we, there's this point-shaving allegations that's been going around <laughs> around some college basketball teams recently because you're seeing these monumental line changes that are kind of startling in college basketball. And the fact that gambling's legal – it, it's it's hard to ignore. You have a former college football quarterback uh, going on podcasts talking about how I can't remember which SEC school he played for, uh, but he's talking about how he was approached. I think it was Vanderbilt approached by the Italian mob in the last year, two years about throwing games, about point shaving. So like all these things still are kind of out there. But the one player in professional or collegiate sports that can most easily change the outcome of a game, positively or negatively, is Shohei Otani. <laughs> I think that's why it's an interesting conversation, a too. Guy, he's on the mound, and he's hitting leadoff. A guy who pitches and hits. Yeah. Yeah. Like, now maybe he's betting $4.5 million on the Astros and, to win the 2022 World Series. We'll see. And we're just asking the question. Just the question. That's it. But I feel like you can ask the question whether – genuinely or disingenuously now just given the way that questions were asked the funny thing is baseball is not going to investigate this baseball doesn't investigate anything unless they can tie it up with a neat little bow but as brought up on the twitch a great point what bookie is going to give an interpreter a four million dollar mark I, I brought up that a little bit earlier you're not going to give somebody four and a half million dollars worth of credit and maybe this guy fell into that kind of a debt and Shohei Otani had to bail him out there's all sorts of things that you could possibly speculate on but the idea of in Japan where again based off of watching Tokyo Vice things might be a little bit different things might be from a cultural standpoint different than they are here in the States the idea of somebody getting four and a half million dollars to bet on anything that's not a high profile person like Shohei Otani seems like a stretch. It, it, it could be exactly as it's being portrayed to us. And this is a bit of reckless speculation. This is the best part about Sports Talk Radio. We get to do it as long as we just end it with, we're just asking the question. Yep. But this is, as I said before, suspicious. It is suspicious. Well, you have to say it's suspicious. We can't just brush this to the side. No. <laughs> well, and, and, and Jeff Passon was on the Pat McAfee show about a half hour ago. He said, that, you know, uh, that Shohei and, and I think it's Ipe have not talked with federal authorities to this point. There's going to be that investigation. He says there is going to be an MLB investigation because that was my first question was would they just find a way to push this under the rug and get it out of the way? Because the first thing it honestly reminds me of is the Boston Red Sox. That the Boston Red Sox cheated just like the Astros cheated, but the Red Sox and their ownership group and team and players pinned it on this one video guy. guy and it was all his it was, he was the fall guy who said that who said you got to have a fall guy i can't remember who chris said carter that. Well, chris carter said that you got to have a fall guy well this might be the fall guy it's regardless it's to me it tells me two easy things shohei is a gambler and a degenerate or he has terrible judgment but you can't it's hard to ignore the video going around from yesterday's mlb <laughs> regular season game. Everything seems fine. they're chumming it up Everything seemed totally You're telling fine. me Shohei Otani knew in that moment that he had $4.5 million stolen from him, and he's just chumming it up with his interpreter like that? I mean, Come on. May, maybe, maybe this entire time Shohei's interpreter has been 
saying things that have not been coming out of Shohei's mouth. Maybe Shohei's at the podium and he's saying, this man is stealing millions of dollars from me. He, he is a crook. And then Shohei's interpreter says, yes, I'm very honored to play baseball here in the United States of America, especially for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. But I love all the speculation. I like it when Astros online fans come together and they did last with night. the pitchforks and torches it's been a while since we have had a common enemy to really go after outside of adolis garcia who gets the last laugh and we all have to kind of shut up on that front but to see everybody come together for a new los angeles dodger enemy it, it did bring warmth to my heart it did for me too bury me in the age even though i will say like we're seeing it here on the text line like people rooting for a lifetime ban i don't want that I, and I, I, I wish there was a way to punish the Dodgers. They won't be. It would be the Angels, if anything, obviously. I also don't want Shohei Otani banned from baseball. Why not? Because I do love the Shohei Otani. The integrity of the game has, is now in question. It's always been in question. Right, but now it's more in question. I know. I'm st- you still have steroid users in baseball today. There's, this is not the only player doing this, I'm, I would imagine, or connection to a player. Well, and that's where how this gambling, how easy gambling is now. And that's why it's always such a semantics thing. Like, yeah, Calvin Ridley got suspended for a year for betting on parlays that involved the Atlanta Falcons. What is the difference between Calvin Ridley placing that bet, calling his buddy, and saying, "Hey, dude, Matt Ryan's not going to play today, so make sure you bet against the Falcons." Honestly, what's the difference? There, there is no difference. What's the difference between, frankly, if Chandler Rome or Brian McTaggart or Mark Vandermeer know that a Astros or Texans player is going to miss the game and it has not been yet reported by the team, what's the difference between those guys betting on the game then and a player betting on the game then? There is no difference. This is the world we live in now. If you don't want Otani banned, would you settle for Pete Rose being reinstated? Well, I'm always pro Pete Rose getting the Hall of Fame. I am too. I mean, we both are, I think, on the same page as Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame, Roger Clemens should be in the Hall of Fame, and Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame because they're three of the best players to play baseball ever. Look, you're, you're a scumbag sport. Like, there's really no other way to ignore it, okay? You, you, <laughs> Ty you, Cobb bragged about exactly. killing a guy in a book. Like He's you, in the Hall. Exactly. You've got Ty Cobb in the Hall of Fame. You have steroid users in the Hall of Fame, but you have some steroid users that are not. The biggest one that always pisses me off, Paul, is the fact that you have this clown show, Bud Selig, in the Major League ba- in the Baseball Hall of Fame. The guy who know, oversaw that. everything. That he is. oversaw the steroid use. He knew what was going on with Bonds and Sosa and McGuire. Everyone should be allowed in the Hall of Fame as long as they can admit what they did was wrong or that they did it. So, like, Sammy can't get in, also not deserving. But Barry Bonds, if he admits to using steroids, let him in the Hall of Fame. Mark McGuire, if he admits to doing steroids, let him in the Hall of Fame. Pete Rose admitted to gambling, let him in. You don't want to let Sammy Sosa in? He's, he's not good enough. He, he had nah. over 700 home runs. Uh, and he look, did the little hop step thing. Look, look at the rest of his numbers. And then one time he ran around Wrigley Field with an American flag. That was a great day after 9-11. Yeah. But it, it, Sammy Sosa's numbers aren't good enough to be in the Hall of Fame, besides his home run numbers. Besides the home runs. But the home runs, I know. he's a lot of home runs. But, like, so. all, all the other numbers nope, are not. No, Sosa's in. We're putting Sosa in. I don't know. We're putting, hey. we're putting Rafael Palmero in. No. If eh. you, you know what? If you lied to Congress, you should get into the Hall of Fame. Because F Congress, Right. F Congress. Agreed. You're in the Hall of Fame. They lie just as much to us. You're yeah. in. Why You're in. Just let all the liars in. Yeah. So like, that's why, like, yes. We're P. all Rose, liars. P. Rose should be in. Otani should be maybe suspended, whatever. Honestly, it's so funny, though. How much of this does this remind you of the the rumors that we would hear about MJ? That, like, he, he got suspended for two years and he went to go play baseball, but he was really suspended for a gambling addiction. Like, doesn't it kind of feel the same? Like, Otani, never, Jordan. Am I wrong if I, if I actually buy his story about going okay. away? I, I'm not that's as much a, of a conspiracy theorist on that me. front. I'm not as much of a conspiracy theorist on that front. I, I, there's, there's a part of me that thinks that he was bored with basketball. Yeah. And, and, and his father passed away, and I'm sure his dad wanted him to play baseball. The story is not that implausible. It's much more plausible than Shohei Otani's interpreter being allowed yes. to have $4.5 million and then gamble those $4.5 million, and he being the only person involved in this situation, when it is very unlikely that anyone will allow someone who is not a celebrity to bet more than, like, $1 million, let alone $4.5 million. Maybe this is in totality or something like that, uh, but that is more... Michael Jordan actually going away because he wanted to play baseball is much more plausible than this Shohei Otani uh, 
excuse that we're being given. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm surprised you don't believe that Jordan won. Because, I, honestly, I believe it. I, I, I do lean that way. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sus. I think, it's, I think it's a fun rumor. Yeah. And since it's, you know, the, the 90s, I suppose, it's a little bit more difficult to do digging. That's true. But I, I feel like at some point someone would have talked about it. That's true. Now. Well, the show of Tani's story is not going to go away. It's going to be fascinating to follow because this feels like a story that is going to constantly have some kind of legs on it until we get real honest answers from Otani, from the Dodgers, from Major League Baseball. So <coughs> maybe we won't get an answer for a while, but at some point, at some point, we will. Now, if you were hoping the Houston Astros were going to add Michael Lorenzen to be a starter or a mid-relief guy when everyone got healthy, well, he is a Texas Ranger. We discuss that next year on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. It's Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbot Brewing Company. Here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. Come visit us here all day at Carbot Brewing. We'll be here till 6 o'clock, located at the 610-290 Interchange in Spring Branch. Spring weather, perfect time to hang out outdoors, catch some Astros games, some, you know, maybe the Rockets make a play and push. You can catch all that stuff here at Carbach Brewing. Check out everything you need to know at carbachbrewing.com. You're nursing that uh, little flight. I know. Of, of, there we go. There we go. I know. I need to hop it. Uh, Called two flights, Joe won. Well, see, here's the thing. I, 
Here's the thing. I, 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 I'm excuses. Gonna, I'm gonna, as they say in the Shorecrest Prep weight room. When our guy comes back here, I'm going to probably order the heaviest beer I can possibly get. Skin of so. a reason, stuff with a lie. What are you going to order? Rodeo Hopadillo. Clown? Hopadillo. You know what my favorite stuff is? I do love Rodeo Clown, too. Rodeo Clown is dangerous, but I believe, pound for pound, that the best beer made in Houston is Love Street, which now has four variants. I like see. the blonde. It's very good. The, the the light or the blonde are very, very good. <coughs> yeah, I, I, would, I love I would, Love, love my, Street. That is the beer that I generally get. If it's on draft anywhere, I will get Love Street. Yeah, Love Street's great. Fantastic. My, my wife loves the ranch water from Carbox. She's all about She's all they, about that stuff. Everyone's in the ranch water game now. Ranch I, water rules, though. Ranch water is like the, the hot ticket item. Have you gone back to Chicago and tried to explain to your friends what a ranch water is? They have them there. They do. They yeah, a, a lot. Of, a lot of the local breweries there have kind of expanded into the ranch water game. I actually as well. had to. Last time I was up in Massachusetts, I had to explain to people what a ranch water was. It's a shame when you go to the north, and if you go back to the northeast. I remember one time, I, my dad picked me and my sister up from the airport because we were in town for a wedding. And we drove, and we're driving down the road, and my dad wants to go to a Mexican restaurant. And I was like, are you effing kidding me? And I told him, like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this, this Yankee stuff. And I was like, hell yeah, first off, so <laughs> give me, a, give me a, a sticker, participation sticker for being officially Houstonian. But the problem was then my dad took us to Applebee's, which is absolutely, you know, Applebee's, sorry for any of the bees people out there, but I'm a chili boy for life. Yes. Chili's rules, Applebee's. Rules. I don't even feel like Applebee's is really around it anymore. It, they, they, they exist. I, just, I don't know when the, when the last time I saw an Applebee's was. Uh, I feel like it's been a while. It's been, it, it will be too soon <coughs> for me. To, for the next time you see him? Oh, yeah. I, I, would, I would get in a gang war for Chili's. All right. Michael Lorenzen signed a one-year, $4.5 million contract with the Rangers last night. This one bums me out. Michael it's Lorenzen? Because the contract's so cheap and I would have liked to see the Astros – Bringing someone else. Well, he's on the Rangers. I'll, I'll be honest. The fact that this guy felt that he had to throw for scouts doesn't make me feel like he was very wanted. That's understandable. And signing for $4.5 million makes me also feel like he wasn't that wanted. And the other thing is, too, I'll be honest, I had not heard of Michael Lorenzen until I saw that he was throwing <laughs> with scouts watching. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, well, this guy, I guess he's an option for the Astros, but – Four and a half million dollars. Clearly, the Astros had no interest. Yeah, zero interest because they they could have got him. Um, so, but at this point, they're done. They're not they're not doing anything. Dana Brown said today when talking to the media um, that he'll he's hoping to have his spring, his spring training roster set by Sunday. So we should know who will be the opening day roster um, by Monday when we get back on the show at noon next week. Uh, after the first four you know four days of March Madness, it'll be baseball season. We got seven days left until opening day and. Uh, this is it. This is the Astros opening day rotation. From Valdez is going to start opening day. Christian Javier, Hunter Brown, and then some combination of Ronel Blanco, Spencer Arigetti, J.P. France will be your next two guys. Maybe your next three guys. Maybe they will go a six-man rotation to start the season and surprise us. But that's it. There, there's no surprises. There's no Jordan Montgomery coming. I'm done. I have no more hope. My hope is taken Are away. Are you bummed out? I, you don't sound happy. Jordan Montgomery's right there. He's sitting there. He's on the table. Someone sign him. Like, like someone bring him in. It should be the Astros. I mean, I wouldn't mind it. I still don't think Lance McCullers really pitches for this team this year. How dare you? I don't know when Jose Arquiti pitches for this team again. Well, ten to fifteen days from now. That's no, that's when he starts. Started. That's when he starts to. That's when he starts to ramp up. To ramp up. Justin Verlander only threw twenty pitches. You're questioning. You questioning a man who wants to be buried in the age disgusts me. <laughs> Everyone hating on Lance McCullers. Lance McCullers is going to be comeback player of the year when he comes back. I mean, he was, he's was he been buried in the age. He doesn't want to be. <laughs> he's been not, buried. That is not cool, Joe. <laughs> that is not cool. Joe, did you not see the Houston Sports Awards where he emceed and crushed? He crushed. I'm not being sarcastic here. I think Lance McCullers gets way too much hate. I really do. I, oh, no. I don't, I don't hate Lance McCullers. I love Lance McCullers. Well, well but, but people are like, oh, he's never going to pitch again. Uh, he will. I believe. I believe in that elbow. I wish I could. I wish I could. He, he could have my elbow for a nominal fee. He could have my elbow for also a nominal fee. How much? Uh, well, I have thir- bidding. Okay. Uh, I have $33,000 in student loan debt. <laughs> so you want $33,000 enough? Take, 
33 is enough. Oh, come on. you got to go higher than that. I know, but just give me out of student loan debt. Oh, uh, fine. Well, damn it. i gotta, I got to go lower than that. <coughs> well, I, listen. Uh, okay, you know, I'll radio, make – Radio salary uh, and whore of a man. Um, I, I will take uh, the nominal fee of $12,000. Huh. So almost a third of what Joe, greedy Joe, is asking for. Lance, you want it? I got it. No, I, I, Lance, ha- I, I had the makings of a varsity athlete, can I, can unlike I, Tony Soprano. Am I able to speak to Lance first about how much he can do with his elbow currently? I guess, yeah. I'm assuming Lance can still be like a full dad and pick up his kid and stuff. Yeah, so but he can have my elbow for $12,000. So you're asking for $33,000. i will go to ten. <laughs> let's just down bid it. Fine, oh, yeah. fine. Nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. I'm out. My arm. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. It had to be five, five One numbers. Dollar less. I'm out. That's it. That's it. It's Paul's elbow. He's giving up. Um, I, I don't. I just. I'm not. I'm not disappointed. I thought the Astros would make a splash move here in response. But the the one the one thing I'll take away from this in a positive way is that whether he's wrong or right, at least in this moment. This, to me, means that Dana Brown and Joe Espada believe in those six guys to bridge the gap until people get healthy. Because if they didn't believe in J.P. France, Blanco, and Aragetti to at least get you to uh, Garcia and Verlander and McCullers' return, then I think they would be making a more urgent move right now. How much of that belief is influenced by the budget? I would imagine a good amount of it is. Probably a good amount. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I get what you're saying. Like, yeah, you have to show confidence in these guys, but there, there's there's another element here where they, they probably are looking at their budget and the Josh Hader contract they just gave out. And that's why they walked away from Blake Snell. Probably thinking about Alex Bregman as well. So you're also betting on yourself. I, I it, it might it might not be the um, most dense confidence. It might be a little hollow. Yeah. No. I that that's fair. And to your point, if budget's part of the issue. And Lorenzen only signed for four and a half million dollars. That clearly means that they did not have any interest in bringing him in, because a five million dollar contract to take Lorenzen away from the Rangers—that's easily doable. Like that's not going to break the bank for the Astros. So they clearly just didn't want the player, and that was just a guy that we were looking at as someone that could fill the gap for this team. But do you feel okay with the rotation then, with where we're at? Um. I mean, I don't feel great about it, but yeah. I, I don't. I mean, I, I think that they can make it work. It, really, a lot of this year is based off of not the the depth of the rotation as much as it's. Fran Valdez and Christian Javier can't suck, and regular season I can tolerate some some bad outings. Every starter is going to have them, but they, for the most part, let us down in the postseason. For the most part. No, they, Javier, right. Javier did have one good start, but for the most part, uh, they were massive disappointments. And I, I feel like, you know, going into last year, even with Verlander gone, you're looking at the Astros rotation, and you're like, damn, this is good. Yeah. Then all the injuries happen. And you feel a little bit different. But on paper, uh, throw health to the side, which is hard to do right now because of Verlander, Luis Garcia, Urquidy, and Lance McCullers. But throw it to the side. You still at the top got some pretty good arms. You are. You still have enough offense that should score enough runs for you as well. And I I think that the AL West, the Rangers, I'm I'm curious about what a World Series hangover will be like for them. It's it's bound to happen. Maybe maybe they get off to a slow start. The Mariners are a completely new team. The Angels just pressed reset. The A's do not matter. Yep. So I I, I think you, you still have the advantage of being in the American League West. And on top of that, I I think that you are going to be able to outscore people. Uh, that lineup, and I heard John Lance talking about this a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I'm with it. Like, that lineup on paper is top five yes. in some way, shape, or form. And they are going to have to actually carry their weight this year, where last year they didn't always do it, especially at home. Yeah, going back to a conversation we had the other day about already looking way too far ahead of the trade deadline because Dana Brown has brought it up a couple times, I would retract my statement about them going after a left fielder at this point and would say m- when they make a trade this year, my guess is it will be for a rotational arm. Not a big name, you know, like not a Dylan Cease level trade like we just saw happen between the White Sox and the Padres, but some kind of trade at the deadline for a starting pitcher to me now seems to be way more in play than going after a bat just because of where you are as a team. And there's obviously so much that could go wrong between now and then. Do you think but starter, starter over reliever? Because remember last year, Dana Brown at the trade deadline said, yeah, our big acquisitions at the deadline are. 
Jose Altuve and Jordan Alvarez. It was such an insufferable thing to say. No, you're but right. But technically true. No. We're probably going to look at the starting rotation and say, well, Lance McCullers and Luis Garcia should be back in the weeks after the All-Star break. Yeah. Um, after the trade deadline. And then I think that means that they're going to be I – think, I think it's middle relief. They're probably going to look at their lineup and say, nope, we're good. Starting pitching, maybe if there's another injury, things change a little bit. But I, I think really middle relief. We talked about that uh, the other day. Yeah. Even with the Astros not adding another starting arm, I think that's going to be the top thing that they look for because they don't want to have to pay a premium for somebody that's going to be here for a year, two years, or something like that. No. Like Kendall Graveman. That's true. Yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting. See, I'm just I'm ready for it to get here. I'm ready to see what Javier, to your point, and Fromber are going to look like. But we'll see. All right, new segment alert. Good take. Bad take. Good I'm going to give a take. take. And Paul, Sean, Brian, anyone here, text line, Twitchers. Uh, Twitchers don't count. You're going to tell me whatever I say is bad. So is it a good take? Is it a bad take? We'll do that next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Before that, I want to tell you guys about O Athletic. You can check them out, oathletic.com, just with a K at the end, or 767 North Shepherd Drive. It's the new gym that I'm going to. I got there this morning. Didn't get the workout I wanted to in because, I don't know, we were driving through a torrential downpour. So it took me a little bit longer to get there. But got a nice little workout in this morning. And everything that I love about this place so far is the personal training, the classes. They offer over 100 a week. And what's cool about this place, too, and the classes that they have is that they offer them at all different times of the day. They open at 5 o'clock in the morning. Classes start shortly after. They have until about 9 o'clock in the morning, take a small break, and then typically when you get off work early, you can get there at 4 o'clock, get a workout in right away with one of their classes. They're open from 5 to 10, Monday through Friday, or Monday through Thursday, 5 to 9 on Fridays, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. But all the classes, all the personal training, and just if you just want to work out by yourself too like I was doing today, that's there for you. You can check them out, oathletic.com or 767 North Shepherd Drive, and tell them Joe George from ESPN 97.5 sent you by. You're listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbock Brewing Company. Broadcasting live from Carbock Brewing here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. We'll be here all day until 6 o'clock. You can find us on Twitter at Gallant Says, at Joe George Radio, at Sean A. Mapes. 
The tournament is underway. Michigan State up 43-29 over Mississippi State in the first game of the day. Uh, du Duquesne. 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 You said it right. No, it's you got Duquesne. it. You got it. You don't it's say Duquesne. Duquesne. It's Duquesne. Duquesne's up uh, 11 seed. Duquesne up 38-30 over BYU. We. Oui. Of the oh, Big 12. Storm and Mormons. Damn. Yeah, 38 to 30 at halftime. So get your uh, Where's True TV tweets out there. If you haven't had them yet, check on your old people. What about they can't that, find. What uh, about the Big 12 pride? BYU. Go, come on, guys. I don't believe in that. Figure it out. I hate those people, Paul. What? I hate the uh, Mormons. The SEC people. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we're but that's we No, nope, you apply to if you Coops feel. We're fans. That's fine. Big 12. No. Big 12. No. Nope. Big 12. Nope. That's not okay. Why isn't it okay? You can't support it. You can't just support the conference. Uh, it's a loser I mentality. Agree. I agree. I, I actually do hate that, but I feel like the Big 12's got to represent because the Big 12 is the premier college basketball conference. It is. But so what do you do about what BYU, do you do about like Texas? Hmm? Are you, do you support Texas then in this moment? Because they're only yes. in the Big 12 for you know maybe one more day. Some of my some of my best friends went to Texas. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm they sure. might be an SEC team in the next 24 hours. Yeah, but right now they're Big 12. Yeah, for now. They're still for Big now. 12. They're still Big 12 right now. Um, all right, so we're going to try this out. Good take, bad take. So I've got a take that I'm going to give to you guys, and, and we can discuss if it's I, – I look, I, I often get accused of having bad takes, Paul. Oh, oh yeah. I do. Really? So I'm going to try to come wow. up with extra spicy takes that, that I believe in um, and see if it's a good take or a bad take. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go to Paul's favorite subject today. What's that? Fantasy football. Oh, Jesus. It's already a bad take. The Houston Texans will have three players in the top ten – and points in fantasy football this year at their position. Three C players? C.J. Stroud, Joe Mixon, and Tank Dell will all finish top ten in fantasy football this year in points. No. no What's wrong take. with that? Bad take. What's wrong with that? Dell, That's a bad take, Joe. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah, BMAC. Dell over Nico, number one, question mark. Joe Mixon, I don't know about that. He was top ten last year in fantasy, I believe. He was. He was top ten last year. So Joe Mixon's Joe Mixon's there? The Texans clearly believe he could be top ten. We never even talked I never even talked to you about the contract. That was out that day mm -hmm. when it happened. They gave him a contract. Don't love it. You don't love it. I don't love it. I get why Running they did backstage it. backstage gracefully. But <laughs> that that contract surprised me. I did not I thought this was a straight up trade for a rental. See how it goes. Maybe That's you bring him back. Too. That's what I there was too. a there was a tweet from the thirty third team that Twitter account and they ranked the Joe Mix Joe Mixon uh, contract extension as the m biggest overpay of the offseason. Oh, well, that's fun! Awesome. Spoiler alert for Killer Bees later today. Um, the Houston Texans care about their players. <laughs> yeah. So Joe Mixon finishes top ten in fantasy. I feel pretty confident about that one. I think that's the best one you have. You don't think C.J. Stroud's easily top five? No, because he's not a runner. You, you, you know how you know how fantasy football works. I mean, if, Daniel if, Jones has been top five. Right. I think, before. Justin Fields well, is not top a, ten. Yeah, but yeah, but if you're not a runner, it's not locked to be top ten. That's the problem. That's that's, if, that's if, fair. If, if you're if you're a pocket passer, you have to have the thirty plus touchdown season to crack to crack that high in fantasy football. And, and as as uh, noted, Ben Wagoner and uh, front runner, I have been considering uh, converting religion from uh, Tom Bradyism to C.J. Stroudism. Yeah, so I, I will say I'll, Stroud top ten, sure. Uh, uh, but Tank Dell, I don't know. Yeah, he picked the wrong wide receiver. There's too many See, wide receivers. Nico I Collins. Love, I even, just love Tank Dell. Nico Collins even is going to be difficult to get in for him. Uh, Mixon, uh, I'll allow it. I feel like there's going to be some rando running backs, though, that are younger that perhaps like push him further down that list as overall points go. Yeah, that I, that I understand. I, I do, with Mixon, the question will really be about how much they throw to him because that was something so clearly lacking last year. In the Texans offense, they didn't really have that security blanket at times, especially when they were running Pierce out there. Like, CJ had no one to dump it off to because maybe he just knows Dam like Damian Pierce can't catch. Maybe that's what his, his concerns were. Yeah, and and CJ is also pretty aggressive with the way he throws the ball down the field. But having that security blanket with Mixon this year, I expect him to catch the ball a good amount of the backfield. So I feel good about that one. I feel good about CJ Stroud. Like, when, when you look at the top ten last year, there were, there were Baker Mayfield was in there. At one point. Okay. Well, now, not every you week. You know what? Fair point. He did have 30-plus touchdowns, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, and that's what CJ would have to do to crack to crack the top ten. I, I think I, I like your Mixon point the best simply because there's no challenger to the, his touches, right? I mean, Damian Pierce, we saw second half of last se season, 
go in, go, you know, finish games with one or two carries for the entire game. And that w- that happened for weeks on end. So Mixon's going to get all the receptions out of the backfield. He's going to get all the goal line carries. Plus, he's going to get all the work between the 20s. I like the Mixon pick a lot. Now, Sean, I know you and Dell were discussing earlier about how much p- attention you're going to be paying to the show today. Uh, so, you gotta, is this a good take or bad take from you? Um, good take. <laughs> Good tech, Joe. Love it. Keep why, it up. Why, why do you think that? Why do you think that, Oh, uh, you know, the, the, the craftsmanship, <laughs> the elegance in which it was delivered. I oh, heard something about you, Sean. I heard something the about elegance. The fact that we've spent five minutes on fantasy football. I've Yeah, don't love that. Yeah, I didn't want to do just, like, touchdown <laughs> I, heard, I was I like, heard, that's boring. I heard Joe Mixon was involved. I don't know. I don't know. Um, can I say I don't you're, know? You're, you're can, warm. That's can fine. I throw someone it's under it's the bus? It's a warm take. Can I throw someone yeah. under the bus? Do it, do it. I'm working on audio for the Killer Bees right now. Ooh. Oh, get out of here. Someone Team assigned player. me homework. <laughs> Team player. Who, who, who do you Sean think that Mix. was? I don't know. I don't know. I guess their producer's too busy Classic. Slurp, slurping down Carbach uh, <laughs> Love Streets. Damn. Uh, 6927 says Nico Mixon Schultz. That might be a better list. Schultz is a top 10 tight end. I yeah, fantasy's not hard to be a top 10. Like fancy tight end, it's not. He's a top ten. T- the tight end position, just in general in the NFL, is not that good. That's why I like the Schultz deal. You got to draft one early. Big usually. picture because w- when you look at like the alternative options for the Texans this off season, it wasn't great. Yeah. And like, I didn't want to pay Hunter Henry. No. Hard pass. Yeah. Mike Hunter- Gusecki. Nope. No, these are all like guys that the Patriots let walk because they didn't work. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe that's also why I didn't yeah. want them. That's another, they spent, it's a good reason. Yeah. They spent a lot of money. Johnny Smith also. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They, did they sign him? or? Yeah, they signed him. That's they, right. They spent a ton of money on on, on Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry. That worked out great. Yeah. It did, it did. You know what? Sometimes you got to invest in the tight end position. Yeah. I'd rather do it with, uh, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> guys like Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski. Oh, yeah. So what do you think of the all the pushback from this dynasty stuff? They're pushing back. The players are pushing back pretty All of hard. it. Bad take because it was a bad documentary. It's yeah. slanted. It's the greatest sports run in American history, and the entire thing is about how Belichick's an idiot. Six Super Bowl wins, nine Super Bowl appearances. Two of those Super Bowls, they were very close. Three of those Super Bowls, they were very close to winning that they lost, and, and yet the whole thing is about, like, oh, Bill Belichick was mean. And it, it makes Robert Kraft, who is a noted cheapskate, look like he was the one behind all of it. Like, like it was his watch I think, that I made think this it's, happen. It's, it's very clearly his document. I started yes. watching it. because I was I wasn't interested. And then I watched the Rodney Harrison clip where he said he sat down for six hours and they basically took, like, what, three words? I, I watched the first three episodes. They skipped over two Super Bowls in a 21-game winning streak. I get it. Like, you want to talk about the controversies, but you can't just skip over the winning like you did. I mean, the, the Bulls thing, the, the uh, uh, whatever the hell it was called, Last Dance. Yeah. They showed all the runs to a championship for Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. And they showed, like, the things that they overcame. And with this one, it's just like, oh, uh, controversy like yeah. f off yeah this one seems like a total disaster so i watched the first episode and then no i have out of intrigue the and then now i'm out i'm out, out again totally I got, out i got no interest all right more uh, bad takes no that's, it's just one just one. the one yeah just we'll try to do one okay that just way one? i can try to craft it a little bit more next time come up with a bigger take maybe sean will listen this time yeah it's all right i knew i know sean's busy he's watching i don't know that he's busy he's watching akron and creighton Duke it out oh, in yeah. March Madness. Mm. God, please. By the zips. way, Paul did not fill out his bracket. <laughs> yeah, the Akron Zips. Watch, well, but yeah, that's uh, it's an interesting team nickname. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting team nickname. Can you educate me? Uh, people shouldn't say that word in 2024. Okay, good to know. Good thing you just said it. Um, all right, East Paul, I'm Joe George. Coming up next, Texans Cinder. They brought in a new guy, uh, 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 a new corner today, potentially. We'll discuss that next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. First, let me tell you about my friends at MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. You enter promo code BET975 if you want to bet on anything, anytime, anywhere, especially March Madness. And guess what? Up to $1,000, they will match your first deposit, and you get to play with it instantly. MyBookie.ag is a very, very awesome website because it's not just that you can bet on things like you know, blackjack or poker from the comfort of your home home with a live dealer. You can also bet on all of the madness that's taking place right now. Uh, didn't Paulie give you a little bit of money hmm? a couple days ago when he was saying, hey, Virginia, they stink. Just hammer, hammer Colorado State. Well, you can bet on other games here. I don't know. How about let's take a look at 
the game between North Carolina and Wagner. Wagner in the tournament for the first time. North Carolina, 25 and a half point favorites. Do we really think the ACC is that good? Wagner, baby, cover, cover. You can bet on all sorts of things at mybookie.ag, promo code bet975. Maybe you want to bet against Texas, three point favorites against Colorado State in a game that tips off later tonight. MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975. It's football time in Houston. Are you Texans were they? It's time for Texans free agency Tinder. You like her, you swipe right. If you don't like, you swipe left. Oh, it's, uh, it's like a game. I like this. All right, Texans Tinder coming to you live from Carbock Brewing on Gallatin, Georgia on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. I feel like we've been a little too, how would you describe our swiping? Are we, are we swiping too heavy no, right now? I've been I've been choosy. I don't this know. This is why my mother always tells me you're running out of options. Because you're too choosy. Too picky. Is that really what she tells you? Yeah. Because you're, you're too choosy and yeah. you're running out. She thinks I should be looking for a nice woman, and instead I'm looking for some hot crazy person. I mean, you're, you'll be fine. Maybe. It's okay. Maybe not. You're at the age where like the the market starts to open up again. That is true. Because people are starting to get divorced. That, the, the, so <laughs> I get the second time around. Yeah. So like you're. I don't judge. I don't care. Yeah, your market's about to get strong again. Like you're you're in a good spot. Uh, here. Theoretically, we'll you, see. You miss the debt. You miss the dead times. It seems. Uh, so the Texans brought in C.J. Henderson today. Hell yeah. Uh, for a workout. No no guarantee they'll sign him, but so this is C.J. Henderson was drafted ninth overall by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2020. So they brought in Jeffrey Okuda and signed him, who was the third overall pick. Uh, in 2020, and then now they've brought in Henderson for a tryout, who was the ninth overall pick, a player who played in like eight games last year, but then then was really benched most of last season. I, it's three, another another low risk move if they want to do it. Three career interceptions, former top ten pick. Yeah, it's not a lot. I mean, this you're, you, hey, you bring him in, you probably don't have to pay him much, and there's high upside. But this is this is the second guy that you would have on your roster who has been on three teams. Yeah. They, the Texans being the third team. So I, I think I can do better than this. I, I, you know, conceptually, if we're talking about it, like from me looking on one of these little swipe apps and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, I'd, I'd see, ooh, the first-round pedigree. It's like they went to a good school. 
And then, by the way, he did go to a good school. Florida, chomp, chomp, go Gator. But at the same – and, and, and I look at, you know, the fact that this was a first-round pick, so that means, like, he, he, he's certainly uh, attractive to the general managers out there who are looking to find some bargain out there. Mm -hmm. But – Nah, I'm swiping left. I, I feel like you can do better than this. I'd rather bring back Steven Nelson. Yeah, me too. I, I'm, I'm a no on, on, on Henderson. You've already got your high-risk or low-risk, high-reward guy in Okuda. Get something more solid in there. Like, like, like go, get, go get a guy in Steven Nelson or another veteran cornerback, guys we brought up like Stephon Gilmore, that you, you know what they are. And then if you want to draft someone, go for it. We'll see how that works out. I can't imagine – though they're going to start the season with the idea that a rookie cornerback is going to start on the opposite side of Derek Stanley Jr. Doesn't make me feel confident. Yeah. I mean, hey, maybe it works out great, but odds are for Okuda or for C.J. Henderson, it's not going to be one of these guys works out. Odds are they're both not going to work out, and you're going to have just thrown away money. Yeah, it's, I, I, don't, I, don't love, I don't love what they're doing at the cornerback position. I feel better about the defensive line than the cornerback spot. Well, they have sure. so many defensive linemen now. They added, uh, yeah. they added Derek Barnett. They, they've, you take a look at the defensive linemen they have on the roster. It's like ten plus guys right now. Yeah, mostly defensive ends. They, I'm curious who's going to be the guys they can move inside. I know Aut Autry's got to be one of them. I suppose you could move all of them inside. Like I, I'll, I'll be honest. I, you know, the ins and outs of defensive line play are uh, above my pay grade, but. I would like some big dudes in there. They're, I'm an old hog molly. They look like they're going track meet. Like, tall, like, tall, but right. No yeah. one's, no one has uh, cultivated mass. Yeah, they're not. They're will. not going for the the big giant Haloti Nada style player. No, they're not looking in the for the middle of the field. The Carbach, uh, uh, you know, uh, rodeo clown beer cut guys. Mm. Usually a large gut. I will say. IPAs will give you a gut. That's why I have good one. Stuff. That's why I have to go to the gym now. It's because I love IPAs. I, li I like how now you're, you're, you're in this mode. This is good. Yeah. This is I, good. I know. Well, I'm, I'm even calorie counting, Paul. Being an IPA guy, though, can be insufferable. It is. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of IPA? I don't. I don't. I don't. If, it's, if I don't, I just order whatever's on the menu. Like, if, if I go somewhere and I don't know what the IPAs are, and, like, let's say it's like a, it's a like, like a, what's the restaurant? BJ's. Like they have like their own. <laughs> You've never been there before. You could have been making that up. I'm sure. You've never been there before. Never heard of it. It's a real BJ's place. BJ's is real. Yeah. What is it? It's um. It's like it's kind of like uh, kind of like here. Like it's like oh, a, okay. Like it's more of a it's more restaurant based. Yeah, it's more uh, restaurant based because they don't have like their they have they they have their own beer, but they're not distributing it nationwide. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like it's just American eatery. Yeah, they're famous pizza, for pizza, burgers, beers. Okay. Yeah. They're, so they, fa they're famous for they call it a pazuki. Yeah, it's a cookie with ice cream, like a giant like cookie skillet with ice cream on it. Yeah. Okay. Do they, do they, uh, which so Carbach has as well. So BJ's offers food. They offer beer. They offer anything else? Uh, oh, the, the drinks you would like. Okay. Mostly. Soft okay. boy drinks. Interesting. Interesting. You yeah. know what? Did you know I was a BJ major? Broadcast journalism. I did know that. Do they offer broadcast journalism degrees? I. I mean. It's probably worth no, the just same communications. As the yeah, they changed our degree to broadcast and digital journalism my senior year. I wonder why. Oh, because of people like you. They're like this guy, this Paul guy. We can't. Well, yeah, because I kept on confused. People kept on getting confused with BJ's the restaurant. Uh, now, now oh, I understand. Yeah. Now you understand. Now why. I understand why everyone gave me a side eye when I proudly talked about how I'm a BJ major. Uh, where are you at with the the need to add an interior offensive lineman? I'm not going to give you a name as we do Texans Tinder uh, and so we can pretend. It doesn't like feel like it's happening. It I, I do want them to get one, but it does not feel like they're bringing in a veteran because, you know, hey, all right, maybe you got to roll the dice on Kenyon Green and see what happens, but uh, I'm not really feeling it. Yeah, I don't, I don't love what happened today. Uh, Josh Jones uh, signed in, uh, is, is gone, and you gave up, what, a fifth and a seventh round pick for him last year? So I was kind of assuming that that was a player that the Texans would try to bring back. Mm -hmm. um, so he signed a deal with the Baltimore Ravens. Look, we, he started with the last three games of you, uh, for you for the Texans at, at tackle and guard. I, I don't love giving up draft capital and then letting a player walk in free. Just philosophically. Like, I know it's a fifth and a seventh. 
but theoretically, I don't know exactly how it's going to play out at the end because they don't ever share the compensatory pick formula with us. But it does feel like there's a chance Texas could get some compensatory picks with all the free agents that they have and all the guys that they're letting walk. And the yeah, I would imagine they'll get one for Bernard too. Yeah, I would think so. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't. For, I don't know how it works either, though. But. Uh, um, they're probably thinking about it from that perspective. You let somebody yeah. walk, you're hoping you get something back eventually in return. Yeah, I, the only compensatory pick formula I understand is the new, um, like the fact that the 49ers have all these extra third-round picks because of D'Amico Ryans. Because if you have a minority coach or a mi minority front office member that gets a head coaching job or a general manager job somewhere else, oh, yeah, I forgot you about get third-round picks. Hell yeah. The 49ers got three third-round picks this year, I think it is. For D'Amico Ryan's a GM, and then one of their one of their low level uh, like coordinators became an OC somewhere. So I think they got all of that. Why don't the well, the I mean the Texans should get that? Well, someone has to leave their staff first. Oh, okay. Well, I thought so. You don't you don't get first round picks for hiring minority no, coaches. No, no, yeah. because the Texans have hired three in a row. No, three no, first no. Round no. Picks. You only get it if they get hired somewhere else. Oh. Like, I think they would get a compensatory pick for Gerard Johnson if Gerard Johnson became an offensive coordinator somewhere else. But you don't get him. You also don't go in if you just promote them. Oh, that's ridiculous. You should. Honestly, give, uh, I, give the Texans all the picks. I kind of agree. Like, yeah. I mean, I, isn't that logic backwards? The team that actually is giving them the opportunity doesn't get the pick, but the team who didn't give them the opportunity does. Ooh, yeah. Good point, Greg. I don't that, disagree the, with the, that. The, the logic you. is flawed yeah. there. Like it should, it should work both ways. If they're hired elsewhere or if they're promoted within the organization, you get a compensatory third-round pick. I, I think more than anything, it's very sad that this is, like, what has to be done in a majority black league. Like, this is yes. this is how – this is now incentivizing teams to hire coaches who are very similar to the players they're coaching. It's ridiculous, but, hey, good old boys. System. Yeah, that's a joke. It, 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 is, it is a joke that they have to do such a thing. All right, seven days. Seven more days, Paul. Just a week, baby. Opening day, a, a week from today. Our Astros opening day countdown continues next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
Galan George here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. I think Paul and I just ordered the uh, the steak tacos, oh. and I ordered a hapadillo. Brian ordered the uh, Korean bar, the Korean bowl, the Korean fried chicken bowl. Korean fried chicken sounds nice. pretty good. So nice. we're about to get some grub here. You guys can come out and join us. We'll be here until six o'clock today. We'll be here till three, of course, and then the Killer Bees will yeah. be here until six o'clock. Just a reminder as well: the whole entire station tomorrow from seven a.m. to six p.m. will be broadcasting live from Nick's place. Nice. That's fun. I like um, this place. So over the break, we discovered that Sean and I's brackets will be no longer perfect in about five minutes because we're stupid and bet on – or I picked Mississippi State to beat Michigan State. Oh, well, at least you at least you remembered to do your bracket. Uh, yeah, Paul. I forgot. I mean I, – I mean, I was busy doing, you know, uh, other people's job. Well, hang on. <laughs> what should be other people's jobs? That's not true. You were busy preparing for an HOA meeting that just got canceled. Well, my HOA meeting got canceled. No, I was preparing for that afterwards. <laughs> so you really were going to go to the HOA meeting? Yeah. What do you, like, and you want to get content out of it. Well, it's funny. They're funny. You, like, what are you hoping to get out of it? I just want to watch everyone like, get mad at each like other. Like a crazy Karen? No, I just want to watch everyone get mad at each other and, and raise a couple of issues from time to time. Okay. So it shows that I'm, like, an active member. And, and slowly, I will probably take power in this HOA because some things need to be worked on. So do you own your house then? Yeah, I own a condo. Oh, okay. I didn't know <laughs> that. <laughs> you own your house? I'm a renter still. <laughs> Must, <laughs> yeah. One day. Yeah, that's right. Uh, one day on a, a still your, a producer salary. I know your place. Uh, you know, back in old school America, I could vote and you could. That's true. Because I own property. Um, all right, let's get to our Astros. Not that kind of property. <laughs> our Astros opening day countdown. All right, seven days away from opening day, the New York Yankees come to town to take on the Houston Astros. And I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to do today, but sometimes you just have to go with the flow, Paul. Mm. So in honor of Shohei Otani, let's talk some gambling. Let's talk some gambling. Let's okay. talk about some betting odds. Let's do it. The Houston Astros, uh, according to most websites, uh, are the thank you are the betting favorite to win the AL West. Look at that hapadillo. Um, it looks so good. I can't wait to drink it. So the Astros um, on this website are a plus 115 favorite to win the AL West. Okay. The Rangers are plus 180. Okay. Mariners plus 260. Huh. Angels plus 4,500. Cool. Athletics plus 30,000. Plus 30,000? Yep. I kind of want to put money on the A's just it's for just, the hell of it. Yeah, it's like a, that's a five dollar bet, right? Yeah, yeah, five dollar bet. Why yeah. not? This isn't a four point five. No, million it's just it would be hilarious. Tony bet. I mean, listen, the A's have. The A's have won somehow before yeah. when they were paying everybody nothing and still playing in that absolute dump. Of what if it's Moneyball 2.0? <laughs> yeah, probably like, not. Like, it's <laughs> probably not, but that's fun. Plus 30,000. Goodness that's crazy. gracious. crazy. What were the Astros odds again? I'm sorry. The uh, 30,000 just jumped out. Uh, plus 115. And the, and the Rangers are plus? 180 on this site. Oh. Now, there are other websites that, you know, like I'm looking at you know, FanDuel right now. They're minus 115. The Astros are. So and the and the Rangers are plus two ten. So that's why I can't wait for like legalized gambling in Texas. Um, so uh, you can you can pick your sports book uh, and where to go to. I'm definitely when I go to La Berge this weekend putting a Astros division ticket on there. Probably a World Series ticket as well while I'm there. Got to do it. Make it a parlay. Do they let you? I don't remember if they let you do that or not. I think no. I'm not doing t- a parlay a future though. Why not? Cash one out at a time. No, parlay. No, you got to go big. It's not fun to gamble if you're not going to go big. Eh, you can go big. See, that's what I, I look at. The, I look, well, betting on the Astros to win the division, and it's, it's what, plus 110? Yeah. Like, what's the point? That, yeah, that's easy. Now, the real, the real, that, the good odds for the Astros, I would say. So, you're, you're making that bet. I, I am. The value's probably I would there pick on, the Astros to win yeah. the, the division. I am not betting on the Astros to win the division because that ain't enough ain't no. enough juice no, the, for the, the squeeze. The odds there are good if you want to be a trader um, like some of the local radio hosts here in town and tell you to root for the Rangers. Uh, you could bet on the Rangers <laughs> to actually make some money. <laughs> um, so, but league winners. To win the American League, the Astros are, what do you think? Number one, number two, number three, number four? League winners, I would bet no, no so lower than two. They are number one. At least on this website. Okay. To win the American League, plus 360. Um, uh, okay. Interesting. Yankees are second. Rangers are third. Orioles are fourth. What I find interesting about this list is the Mariners are fifth. 
So, according to this one, there are plus 300 odds to win the AL West, but they are plus 900 to go to the World Series out of the American League. Yeah. I'm I don't think the Mariners are in that category. I don't take them seriously, but I also wonder who else are you putting up there? Should the Twins be higher than the Mariners? They're, they're tied with the Twins. Okay, they're tied with the Twins. They are ahead of the Blue Jays and the Rays. Which surprises me. I take the Twins more seriously than I do the Mariners. I take the Twins, honestly, more seriously than I take the Yankees right now. And I think yeah. the Orioles are being disrespected being put at fourth. The Yankees is there because so many people are going to bet on the Yankees. Yes, you're, you're, not gonna right. give, you're not going to give too much juice on them. Um, just because, you know, they're going to be the betting, like, the most bet ticket every single year to go to win the American no, League. It should it should be Astros, Orioles, Rangers. I, I would agree with that. And then Twins. Yeah. Honestly, if you're going to make an argument for someone to be ahead of the Astros, I would make the argument for the Orioles. Yeah, I would too. Their rotation, their bullpen's not as good as I thought they were going to improve it this offseason, but they're still they're so damn good. This is sacrilegious because I would never not pick the Astros. However, if I am being told I must gamble with some of Shohei Otani's money, mm. I mean, my bad, his interpreter's money, I would 100% pick the Orioles because, again, I, I, like, I don't like to bet on things where I'm betting a ton of money to win, like, Less than what I'm betting on, hundred percent. You know, and obviously with the Astros to win the American League, it's a little bit different. But mm-hmm. still, I, the the Orioles have more fun odds for me. Okay, so you know they're the number one betting favorite to go to the, to go to the World Series now. Um, where do you think they are to win the World Series currently? Astros. Yeah, I bet second because the Dodgers are probably first because of Shohei Otani, and I don't know about what would happen after them. They are third. Third behind the Braves. Behind the Braves. BMAC, that is a racist. <laughs> yes. That is a racist that was hand gesture. A bold choice by BMAC. He was doing the tomahawk chop. Uh, live Can't here do that. Car walk. Can't come do that. Come out. on. Come on, man. We've we've already pissed off an entire country as a station <laughs> today. Whatever. We can't do it again. It's just turkey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> plus 320. Braves are plus 450. Astros plus 700 to win the World Series. Now that's now you're talking my my speed here. In terms mm-hmm. of odds, plus 700 on the Astros to win the World Series. I like that. Okay. That sounds pretty good. To yeah, me. I do too. Um, I, but I don't think it'll be the Dodgers. They just, they're choke don't, artists. They blow it every single year in the playoffs. And, okay, Otani's on. The guy who's never played for a winning team. Guy who's, he has, he's been in the majors for a lot longer than you'd think. I mean, it's year number seven for him. Mm-hmm. And they have not made the playoffs once. He doesn't know what it's like to play in the playoffs. Now, I get, you could also argue, well, hang on, the World Baseball Classic, that doesn't count. It doesn't count. That doesn't count. It's as not we continue, the same. We're, as a xenophobic station, you know, the World Games, they don't matter. No one actually oh. takes them seriously except for the other countries. We don't care. The only time you take it seriously is when you don't win anything that actually matters. Yeah. Shohei Otani, Carmelo Anthony, same thing. Yeah. Well, Carmelo Anthony won an actual championship, so that matters. <laughs> um, all right, uh, MVP odds in the American League. Okay. They're, they, here, the top six – there are two Astros in the top six. Two Astros? Interesting. Yes. Jordan Alvarez is Kyle plus 1,100. Is Tucker the other one? And Tucker. Okay. And Jordan Alvarez is fifth. Kyle Tucker is sixth. Damn. Plus 1,100 for Jordan, plus 1,500 for Tucker. I'm assuming Aaron Judge and Juan Soto are ahead. Soto and Judge are one, two. Julio Rodriguez is number three. Okay, that makes sense. Corey Seager is number four. Seager, interesting. Would you rather bet on you, you have plus 1,100 odds on Jordan, plus 1,500 on Tucker? Who are you going on? I think, I think Tucker's got to have the biggest chip on his shoulder, mm-hmm. and also the problem with Jordan is he's not going to play enough games. He said it. I knocked on wood, and then I said, "There's a good chance he will miss games." I, he, he but will, I don't he want that games. chance to come true. He will miss games. Hopefully, yeah. not many games. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of. At agree. least he's playing left field. I'm sure that it'll never get injured at all. Yeah. All right. There's one Astro in the top six for Cy Young odds. From Bravaldas, plus 1100. How do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, he he's had the most consistent regular season. What's Javier's odds? Uh, Christian Javier. I'm, I'm assuming Christian Javier is very down on the list. He is plus 6,000. In. In, in, in. Give me Javier. Hunter Brown also plus 6,000. What? That's disrespectful to Javier. Okay. I like this one. It's been a long time since it's happened. You're going to do a small wager. 20 to 1 odds. Josh Hader. When's the last time a reliever won the Cy It's probably Young? been a, a long time. I, I would have, Eric Gagne would come, is the first to come to mind. Believers. I feel like there's been one since Eric Gagne. <laughs> Dude. Uh, so, yeah, just two guys have won it since we've been alive. Okay. Dennis Eckersley in 1992 
And as you said, Eric Gagne in 2003. So 20 plus years. Yeah, that's not great. The the, uh, the list of relievers <coughs> who have won the Cy Young Award. Mike Marshall with the Dodgers in 74. Look at this name. Sparky Lyle. I love old baseball names. With the Yankees in 77. Rolly Fingers and that mustache. Raleigh. In, in, uh, Raleigh in 1981. Uh, I believe that he may have performed nefarious uh, tactics so that mm-hmm. he could get his save total up. Uh, Bruce Sutter with the Cubs in 79. Willie Hernandez, Tigers, 84. Steve Bedrosian, I remember that name. Uh, Phillies in 87. Mark Davis with the Padres in 89. Uh, Justin Verlander is also plus 6,000. So Justin Verlander, Hunter Brown, Christian Javier, all plus 6,000 to win the Cy Young in the American League Verlander this year. is tricky because you don't know when he's going to be back. Yep. I think it's only going to be a couple weeks, though. So that's, I kind of like those odds. He, he did the last full season he pitched. I mean, he, he won the Cy Young. Yeah, I mean, the idea that he's going to be that far off surprises me. The betting favorite there is Corbin Burns. I totally agree. Can but, you, like, now that he's on the Orioles, he's a monster. Can you bet on uh, the? Can you bet on Major League Baseball to do a proper investigation of Shohei Otani? No. I wish you could. I wish the odds were there, I because I would bet the the no on that. Um, okay, how much would you bet on Jordan Alvarez to hit 50 home runs this year? What are it, the odds? Plus 600. No. Not good enough? Uh, again, it's the games. That's a bummer. I know. I agree. I know. Um, all right, that's what that's all we got for for the, for the gambling in honor of Shohei Otani's interpreter or Shohei Otani or I don't know somewhere. It in was his interpreter. A legal bookie. Go through go through real bookies. Go like mybookie.ag. Yeah. Promo code bet nine seven five. Or hang out with us at this weekend at La Berge. Either way. Yeah, they're both very different things, so I feel like we can say them at the same time. Tell okay. your friend to give you four and a half million dollars and Wh- see how many he gives you. Okay, your friend comes to you in gambling debt. How much you want to help him? Kick rocks. You're effed. I'm not paying you. <laughs> okay. Nope. I, I wouldn't help. Have you seen Rounders? I have. Yeah. The, the, Edward Worm. Yeah. Edward Norton's character in that. Just an absolute piece of garbage. I wish he had gotten killed in that movie. And Matt Damon's got to bail him out. Give that man his money. That guy sucks. Terrible friend. And if you give the person money once, he is 100% going to come back to you and ask for help again. That is the problem. That's why I, I, I really just don't. I don't want to overstep on this Otani thing because we have so much to learn. It's and I suspicious. get the idea. It's so suspicious. That's all you got to say. It's so suspicious. Because we all, we're all it's skeptical. So much money. And the excuses that are check that the explanation that we are getting is difficult to believe. And I think in 2024, human beings are less likely to believe the public story than perhaps they ever have been. Mm-hmm. 100%. All right, he's Paul Gallant. I am Joe George. Our first NCAA game in March Madness, officially with 64 teams, has ended. University of Michigan wins 69 to 51. Nice. That's a nice number. Michigan State. Did I say just, I said University of Michigan? I'm a bad brain day. Michigan State wins 69 You're to 51. Pretty funny if the Michigan made it. Uh, my bracket's dead. The, the it's old. over. <laughs> it's over. Uh, how many of you guys just lost your bracket? Let us know. Complain. Hopefully you entered the ESPN 97.5 bracket challenge because even though uh, Sean and I, Brian, whoever else entered, not Paul, uh, can't actually win anything, uh, it is underway. It is ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
It's Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. Here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. Broadcasting live from Carbach here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Our steak tacos just came out. Yeah, they're gone. Paul's are gone. Got to eat, eat quick. I'm, I'm a slow eater. Yeah, well, guess what? You're in radio now. You got to eat quick. Yeah, I'm still on that producer life, I think, a little bit, where, like, I could just eat and ignore the host. Must be nice. For 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Just pretend like you guys aren't there. Who would get more annoyed by you ignoring them, Joel or Jeremy? Um, that's a good question. We're in a safe space now. You can just vent about all the wrongs that you've had to go through in your radio career. Uh, they were okay if I was ignoring them and eating. They, they didn't. They didn't seem to bother them too much. That's good. Because they would just look. At, they would just stare at me until I was ready to talk, basically. So I would say maybe. Actually, my I might lean Jeremy. Ah. I might lean Jeremy on this one. Wow. Sometimes you know, I feel like he maybe he needs me for a segment, or you know, we got, or if I'm you know, had to do a mock draft segment with him, with, with him and Joel, and I'm not prepared to give my takes because I'm eating some food, he'd be upset with me. Um. So. We have this weird story going on in college sports. College sports is never ending, right? There's always something weird going on. This Caden Proctor kid who's going back to Alabama, he, he left Alabama two months ago to go to Iowa. It honestly looks like he got an NIL deal, got the money, and then now is back in the portal heading back to the University of Alabama. But this yeah. isn't just the first time this guy has moved. Like, you have all these – these guys moving all over the place. It's I respect it. Weird. I bet as soon as he stepped off the plane to go to Iowa in January, he probably thought to himself, "Oh my god, not only is there nothing here, it is cold." That's what I bet it is. Yep. And I feel like you know, once once you're in the south, you never want to go north again. Agreed. As someone who <laughs> grew up in the Northeast, went to high school in Florida, just completely broke my brain. I can't go back north again. Yeah. It's too cold. No, Seattle, well, at least it doesn't snow. It just rains all year, and it's, the sun never shines. And it does make you perhaps more apt to try the, the Fenty. But in places like the South, it's warm. And I'm sure that our guy, uh, Caden Proctor, Mm-hmm. I'm sure that he took a step off the plane and he was like, I got to get out of here. <coughs> yeah, I don't blame him. Iowa sucks. We talked <laughs> about this yesterday. There's nothing there. Iowa is just, there's just not a lot to do. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have a you want massive a issue with this. The transfer portal is so weird because I, I like the old way more, to be honest, where you could transfer if you know, your coach got fired or – if they, if they just moved on to a new job, you could transfer. I like the idea of that more than what we have happening now. Um, you know, obviously we talked about what the transfer portal yesterday was about how you know, with teams are opting out of the NIT because coaches want to get into the transfer portal and start getting guys in. It, it is, it's, it's mass chaos. Like, that's for sure. I just don't know what the solution is. There is no solution because there's no single governing body. The NCAA is – about as powerful as, I don't know, certain presidents who may have cabals running things. I'm talking about other countries. Come on. There are there are lots of people out there that look like they have a great deal of power. But, I, I mean, whoever the head of the NCAA is now that Mark Emmert's out of the way, yeah. does anyone look at that person for a semblance of authority? No. No. These slowly uh, – Getting bigger, massive conferences, SEC, Big Ten. It's it's between those two schools to figure it out. And I, I've said this a couple of times. I think eventually what we're going to end up with is one conference that plays exclusively on ESPN and another conference that plays exclusively on Fox. Yeah, until the, until the playoff game, until the playoffs. Yeah, pretty much. And, and, and they'll be paid yeah. by those networks. As they, they will should make be. a lot of money from those networks, but it'll probably lead to a college football with closer to 40 to 50 teams than the, you know, 120 or so. I'm fine with that. Just do, subdivision. Just do who can pay their players. So that way if the TV money's not where you need to be one year, you know, like who, who can pay their players 
Like, those schools are in. So that way, that's how you get rid of, no offense, Vanderbilt. That's how you get rid of Northwestern. That's how you get rid of BYU. Like, that's how you get rid of these schools. I don't think you'd want to get rid of BYU, though, because BYU has money. You, well, if, if they're willing to pay their players. The, they did a great job with NIL. The, the, I'll, I'll say this about having, as someone who used to work for the Church of Latter-day Saints, because the radio station I worked at in Seattle was owned by the Church of Latter-day Saints, they got a lot of money. Yeah. They are not afraid to pay people, even if, I don't know, like, because of uh, restrictions in Washington, no one could drive. <laughs> it was shocking how long it took for us to finally have to deal with budget cuts Interesting. at our station during that. The the Mormos have deep pockets. I, I so I don't I don't know what the solution is here for the transfer portal because you know these, these kids should be like every other student. They should have the right to transfer whenever you want. I transferred schools. There was nothing stopping me from doing it yeah. besides my grades. Now that's obviously the big difference, right? Is that like if there was if I wanted to transfer or just get into colleges at certain places. I couldn't if my grades weren't good enough. Obviously, these football players, like, we're not dumb. We all know those rules don't apply to them. They can just transfer willy-nilly wherever they want. But, like, there's really no perfect solution. If they do end up paying these guys at some point, though, how do you think that changes? They can't just transfer. Still, I would imagine. Like, they have to crack down at some point. Like, do you think they go to, like, a draft Mm. out of high school? In this new league, because I agree, I'm the, with you. The haves would not allow that. Yeah, like you're, you're not going to go. You can't go just. Drafting it's weird. High I mean, th- for all the bitching and moaning about uh, how much more difficult the NCAA is with NIL, this is a lot closer to true capitalism than any other league in the United States. The NFL revenue sharing, mm-hmm. kind of communist. The NBA, same thing. Salary caps in both of those. Baseball is kind of capitalist, but everyone it's like a capitalist country that no one spends. Yeah. The NCAA, I mean, it is about as close to the American dream as possible. And ironically, this is the one that does still have <laughs> the restrictions in place where the labor aren't getting paid a damn thing. Yeah. If you are talented, you should get money from NIL. I don't think every player 100%. should get it, though. Because obviously certain players, are they actually have star power in cachet, and others do not. And I, I think that's where it's tricky is that everyone wants every single player to get paid. Sorry, that's just not going to work. No, it's not. Like, like There are a lot of people with like the University of Houston who have done a really good job of with their NIL program of making sure that pretty much every football player is getting something or every basketball player is getting something. I agree with you. I don't think that's necessary. I, I really when it when they first when this NIL stuff started shaking out, I really thought it was going to be like the cream of the crop was going to get paid, your quarterback, your best player, your Heisman contenders, your guys who are going to be first round picks. But then really when when we saw it with Quinn Ewers, ironically, when he got what a million and a half dollars to go to Ohio State out of high school, that's when I was like, oh yeah, th- this is going to be a lot more chaotic than we when we realized. But I I'm I'm fine with the transfer portal. I don't think we need to change it. The only thing I wish they would fix is, like, there's the tight end from Florida or Georgia this year. He's going to be, like, in his 10th year in college football. There was a kid from Rice this last year, J, uh, JT Daniels, who was before he had his, you know, sadly end his football career because of concussions, was one of his, his, like, sixth college. That stuff to me is weird, but this stuff is fine. Uh, did you see this story about uh, Jacques Vaughn? No. I mean, uh, J.B. Bickerstaff? No, I didn't. So he said he's been getting threatened by gamblers. Huh. They, they they put this – Pro Football Talk uh, kind of did this story as well because they're trying to spin it as, like, in the, it'll happen in football. But I heard Dell talking about it. Basically, like, he's saying that, you know, he's hearing from in-game. People are saying, hey, don't take your guys out. I got the ten and a half. But also he said that they got his telephone number. And people were, like, sending him, like, crazy messages about where he lived, his kids, because they're not covering – the Cavs aren't covering or that they need to cover and stuff like that. That's the one part of this that, like in the gambling stuff, when we talk about it, it's there's no way to fix that. Like, but is it a concern? Cause I'm not. I wouldn't say like it's dangerous, but it's not like a problem where like you have to stop. You can't fix that one. There's a lot of things you can't fix. You kind of just have to yeah. accept it. I mean, <coughs> what would you do? There's if, uh, there's not the top of your head. You well, the only thing you could do to stop this is to go back in time. And stop the legalization of sports gambling. Oh, well, 
That's the where like, was Mattress Mac to tell everybody that it's immoral yeah. to gamble, even though he was, you know, literally using a wheelbarrow to move cash off of a private jet. And we're talking what eight figures worth he, of cash on a private he, jet. He can win like a million dollars with the, like four million dollars <laughs> with the Cougs in the tournament. <laughs> what a joke! Um, it's yeah. I love how he tells. I love how that gallery sports article. He's like, yeah, I don't know if we should have it here though. It's like, man, you, shut up. That man. one. That bummed we me love out. you. You're 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 a Houston ambassador, but. Do, do we do we have yeah, to do you, all of our he, gambling away he, from Texas? He, he is, but in that moment, it was like that was really disappointing. I mean, literally at one point, he was literally flying to Denver. Like I always thought that was odd too. It's like it's not even like he's like flying to La Berge or anywhere in Lake Charles. Like he's flying to Denver because not all the casinos would take the the large wagers that he would want to place. When he came out and said that, I was disappointed. Yeah, I was too, and I was shocked because you had Tillman. Crane, Jerry Jones, the McNair family, whoever owns the Dynamo and the Dash, they all publicly, every single team, including Mark Cuban, all of them, were all putting out a statement together saying they're pro the legalization of gambling in Texas. And then you have this, like, gambling figure who pretends like that's not what he is saying, don't bring it here. That bummed me out. It I was is, it is disappointed. I love this state. I, I came back over with with no job because I love it here as much as I do. Mm -hmm. It is a state that promotes freedom more than just about every other state in the country except for Florida. I think it is crazy the amount of money that this state, especially with a mayor who said the city is broke today, that this state has sort of just like turned a side <laughs> eye at because of morality when it comes to gambling yeah. and, and marijuana. And sorry to get political here, but I think we can all agree on that. Like, I with, agree. If, if both of these things are legalized, <laughs> there's a lot of extra money, and maybe we're not driving in a pothole every five seconds. I don't. I don't think, even think it's political. It's just like you're seeing. You know what? There's like there's 38 states now that have legalized sports gambling, and and all these states have legal like legalized weed. Like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, it, it's the weird. idea that we want it here. I mean, yeah, you got like the the attorney general who's got his own plea to deal with. It, and this guy's like trying to sue cities yeah. because they're, they're decriminalizing marijuana. Like marijuana is still a Schedule One drug is a massive issue in our country. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. He's Paul Galam, Joe George. What's going on in the NFL? Our 10 minute drill. That's next here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
Coming to you live from Carbock Brewing, Gaunt and George here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Awesome place to come watch March Madness, get some great food, some great beer. I know Paul's judging me because I'm still working on my steak tacos. You're just a slow eater. No, I mean, uh, you, you don't have the Irish um, instincts of like eating whatever scraps you can find as quickly as possible because you're afraid of a limey boot stepping on your neck. Yeah, I just, you know. You know, I've adapted. I guess I haven't. That's yeah. 75% of my uh, Irish heritage. Just that, that part didn't convert. Uh, 50% of my Irish heritage were orphans when they came here, probably killed by the English. Okay. That's good to know. I'm just going to allege that. You're going to allege that Is that, that xenophobic? Right now? Is that xenophobic to claim I've been persecuted by the English? What a wild day it's been on Twitter, to say the <laughs> least. Um, all right. Uh, one thing that I thought was I love in the NFL is when you just, like let the when players show you a little bit into their lives. If you watched the quarterback last year, they announced that this year they're doing the wide receiver – uh, documentary on Netflix from uh, Omaha Productions. So guys like Amon Ross St. Brown are going to be in it. It's going to be interesting to like watch like some of the top wide receivers uh, get followed around by a documentary crew. Much better premise because quarterbacks are such bores. Well, none of them wanted snores. to do it. There's that, but also when you're a quarterback, there's a lot more money attached to you. How honest can you be? Where wide receivers are the – Forward-facing freaks of the NFL, for lack of a better term, because the diva wide receiver is and always has been something to behold. Yep. From Keyshawn Johnson to Terrell Owens to Chad Johnson, then Ocho Cinco, then Johnson again, uh, Stephon Diggs, Antonio Brown, they are by far the most interesting characters in the NFL. Yes. Always. The, the real question is just how unfiltered, uncensored would a show like this be? That's if it's uncensored and unfiltered, if they're going to show Antonio Brown getting in Mike Mayock's face and threatening to fight him like they didn't show on the hard knocks with the Raiders or any of the stuff that happened when he got released by the Raiders, I am so in. But I, I think that's the big question for shows like this, Joe, and, and that's what gets me back in. I have a tough time watching the sports documentaries these days because it really feels like – Outside of maybe the Patriots dynasty one, ironically, they are very, very pro everyone involved. <laughs> yeah, they don't tell the they don't tell the truth anymore. It's not it's like thirty for thirty. And this great run. Ironically, a guy I mentioned earlier, that one fell off the day they put out that garbage with Sosa McGuire. That was a waste of time because no one told the truth and that whole thing. It was just like, what are we doing? Like this is this is not what I expected. This is not what I came here for. I came here to learn something, not just that. But I mention all this because we got some insight into uh, Saquon Barkley's life. Here is uh, Saquon Barkley, a little clip that got put out, talking about becoming a Philadelphia Eagle and some of the reaction from his family. And, but my daughter, funny story with her, she knows there's a lot of history in my career with the Eagles. I remember one time when I was with the Giants and we lost to Philly in the playoffs, we went to diner to get some graphics and there was a bird and she was like, Daddy, oh no, oh no. And I'm like, what is it? She points to the bird and she's like, it's the Eagles, it's the Eagles. Um, and me and Anna, you know, we just started laughing. And I just put my head down. I just kind of start shaking. So when I told her that we're going to be going to Philly, uh, she kind of was just like, does that mean we're going to win now? And I just started smiling again. And I was like, hopefully, hopefully we win. I, I, I love that. The fact that, like, his daughter, I don't even know how old she is, is so aware that leaving that trash organization that is the New York Giants, that now he's going to get a chance to win, which he probably won't, honestly, because I don't believe in the Eagles this year. But I, I still love it. They're, That's great. They are more likely to win than New York. Yeah. And I like that. I like that even a small child can see that yeah, the children know everything. Giants are a horribly run team, yeah. much like the Jets are. Yeah, when I told my son that I was, you know, going to ESPN 97.5, he was just a year and a half. He said, you can be happy now. And I said, I hope so. What other really deep things has your one and a half old son said to this point? Uh, what other deep things? Uh, well, sometimes he, he likes to look at words and and and, know what, and, and just say bingo. And I like that. He likes to say B-I-N-G-O, and bingo was his name-o. So. Does that song play a lot in the house? No, it doesn't, but he just started singing it randomly all the time. He heard it somewhere. He just, like... 
we had his happy birthday sign out in front of the house for his birthday party. He would walk by and just start doing it. I'm like, dude, like those are not the right. It's a catchy. Those it's are a not the right song. letters. I'm glad that your son isn't saying some of the deep things that people will tweet about online. I just, I, I love those people. My son told me the other day. My three year old son told me that, like, you know. Death is just the beginning. It's like, no, he didn't. <coughs> what are you talking about, Karen? Yeah, I'm trying to think. The most deep thing that my son has told me. Um, yeah, I, I got, got a poopy. <laughs> he won't do that. That's the problem. Uh, he, won't, he won't tell me. That's the problem <laughs> that I'm living with in my life right now, Paul. Go on. Is that he won't tell me those things. Um, all right, so what's going else is going on? Uh, well, you know, OnlyFans. That's the thing. We got a NFL running back, former NFL running back on OnlyFans, Paul. Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is on OnlyFans, and it's, uh -oh. it's one of those things where you're wondering what kind of OnlyFans content is it going to be, and it is not, as many believe I would enjoy, tasteful, uh, <laughs> mm. tasteful muscle shots, I guess. Okay. <laughs> it seems like there's a couple of athletes that have created their own OnlyFans, male athletes. Yeah. And I think that they're trying to make it into some sort of, like, workout or lifestyle Well, thing. that was the original f intention for OnlyFans. Right. Was, like, for people to put, like, cooking shows. Yes. Or paid gambling content. Or, I don't know. Like, th it wasn't supposed to become just this, what it became. His OnlyFans, though, is something he's not even charging for. Okay. His OnlyFans is a horny Twitter timeline per the uh, very, very articulate Nikki Smokes of uh, Barstool Sports. Oh, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> Talk about Barstool personalities that are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, I mean, Antonio Brown not on OnlyFans at this point. You assume that Le'Veon Bell gets on something like this hoping that he's going to be able to parlay this into some sort of money because he's probably got to be close to being out of the money. Yeah. You would think. Well, he only ruined of, his career. Yeah, the amount of earnings he he, uh, he threw away. Uh, so we talked about the hip, drop, the hip drop tackle rule that's being proposed in the NFL. The player, the NFLPA put out a statement yesterday basically just saying that they hate it, that they, that they don't want it. They don't want this rule in place. And this is one of those moments where the NFL – I. I I think the, the competition committee is making a big deal out of nothing. And yeah. uh, most time the players would agree. I mentioned yesterday, would you rather get hit in the head or rather get hit in the knee? And most players would say they'd rather get hit in the knees. But, like. Wait, hit in, the, hit in the head, I thought. Oh, yeah, hit in the head, yeah. yeah. Most guys would rather get hit in the head. But this is one of those moments where it's like, I don't, I don't think you have to get rid of this tackle that happens maybe once a game i don't either I, this isn't concussions i don't either and the nfl players association was right to push back against yes this. someone's got to stop this there are a lot of defensive players out there that are being already put in really difficult situations they're getting fined tons of money for hits that aren't always nefarious in nature not every hit over the middle is like the ones that we saw from Kareem Jackson this past year. Yeah. Kareem Jackson was going Jack Tatum on folks. And for those yeah. who don't know, Jack Tatum was a safety for the Oakland Raiders back in the 70s who called himself the assassin, wrote a book called They Call Me the Assassin, and paralyzed a relative of Derek Stingley, Houston Texans, Daryl Stingley, who was a wide receiver for the New England Patriots, in a preseason game of all games. There is not as much of that. In the NFL, as you would think, and sure, there are the Vontez Burfects of the world. There are guys like that who are taking people out. Yeah. But for the most part, people aren't intentionally trying to kill defenseless players. They're trying to do what their job is, which is to separate the ball from an offensive player. And now all of a sudden you're putting restrictions on it, and I, I think that it just makes it more difficult to play defense in a league that – we watch because the defense can be violent from time to time. It's not just about the scoring. At least it shouldn't be in my opinion. Um, we are going to see a new kickoff rule put into place this year. It, it appears that this one's going to go through. Uh, but reportedly from Pro Football Talk, uh, there's a pushback against this from some of the coaches. And they just want to start the ball, start the game without the kickoff. Just remove the kickoff in total. Just start the, each possession after a score or the start of the game or half at the 25-yard line. I would love that because it would chop down on commercial time. Yeah, but that's why. They, but that's why they won't get rid of but it. But they'll just add it somewhere else. They'll just add it to you know. It's, it's what three minutes of commercials. They probably are I, in, in theory losing. I think that the kickoff is the perfect commercial time, and it's the perfect perfect commercial stopper in the NFL. I I think 
if they get rid of the kickoff, it, it'll it'll ruin the product a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I think that what we've all kind of agreed upon with kickoffs, especially now, is like you can get up and go to the bathroom <laughs> whenever a kickoff's about to happen because so rarely – Outside of the two Houston Texans kick return touchdowns this year, which is insane in today's NFL. They had two last year, one of which was a freakish, of course. Um, I, I'm i looking at it from the perspective of it's a play that should be a part of the game, and I want to keep it in because of that. But if no action is happening on it, is it a wasted effort? Yes. At the same time, the NFL knows that this is a chance to make a commercial break happen. For sure. After very limited action. Yeah, I, I definitely lean towards just get rid of it. I mean, we'll see what this new one looks like where they just – the guys are going to be standing, what, 10 feet apart at some point on the field. No one can move from either side until the kick returner touches the ball. We'll see how it goes. Like, I, I hope it is exciting. The people that actually – But it probably claim, won't be, you know. People that say they watched the XFL said it was good. Uh, not was – Um, I, I, I actually did think it was entertaining. Because that's what – Because that's the next games yeah. I went to, yeah. So we'll we'll see. Like like maybe it'll actually work and the NFL do something right, but like it's it's a unnecessary adjustment to these rules that I don't I don't think is possible. And like and I I don't know, Junior Bronco is impossible to tell when he's being serious or not, but he says Gen Z is ruining the NFL. Well yes. my, my guess is Junior Bronco is not yeah, being Sean. serious in this moment. Uh, I did notice looking through the comments of some of these rule changes was like, this is not my NFL, blah, blah, blah. It's well, not my NFL. Well, guess what, you morons? It's the 70-year-olds who are coaches in the NFL who are the ones making these decisions. Uh. It's my it, – it triggers me. Well, it's like the people who get mad at us for having participation trophies. Well – And didn't exactly ask for them. Yeah, that's true. It, was the, <laughs> it was the people who were my parents' age who were running – you know, Little League Baseball, and were giving us participation trophies. Yeah, we didn't ask. We're not asking for them. Just like the players in the NFLPA are not asking to get rid of the hip drop tackle. It's the olds that are coaches in the NFL that think they know better than everyone. To sort of go back to what we were talking about with gambling a little bit ago, is it perhaps that some of these coaches are being nudged in the direction of being against it because they realize that the NFL does not want to get sued again? Yeah, that's possible, but because they're supposed, I mean, but then, but they're not even addressing half the issue. Then, what about punts? Eh, like they're that's still half the issue, right? Punts aren't as dangerous as kickoffs. They're not. They're more dangerous for the returner than they are for the actual, like for the major and, and the gunners than it is for the majority of people on the on the field. Because yeah. you have other guys like the 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 coverage team is running back. So it's not like people are running full speed at each other. Kickoffs, whether it was the kickoff wedge on an actual kickoff return or on the onsides where people were basically going like, you know, Red Rover, Red Rover against one another. Yeah, that was bad. That, that, I can see how that would be considered violent. That was good That was good to get rid of. All right, today at 4 o'clock and the next couple days on the Killer Bees, they're going to be tackling a new bracket that they put out, a Fight Club bracket. And we're in it, and we have to discuss that next here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. First, let me tell you about my friends at Pendleton Whiskey. Smooth, refreshing. You know what I do. One big old rock, two fingers, true Western tradition in the glass. Guys, if you haven't had Pendleton Whiskey before, let me tell you all about it. One, it is barrel aged in American oak. It is cut with glacier fed spring water from Oregon's Mount Hood. And on top of that, the finest northern grains. Pendleton Whiskey honors a heritage that inspires us to live boldly, never live so lose sight of the values we believe in, and to taste the moment wherever we may be. So satisfy your inner cowboy. You can get a bottle of Pendleton Whiskey at drizzly.com or your local liquor store. Pendleton Whiskey, true western tradition.
You're listening to Galant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. For immediate release, per the Houston Texans, they have signed Steven Sims. All right, they move- got a receiver. Moving on. They got a receiver, Joe. They got a kick returner. There's the ball. He's a receiver. He went to Kansas. And a kick returner. And who had more points in the divisional round of the playoffs than anyone on the Houston Texans? That would be the one, the only, Steven Sims, who returned a punt for a touchdown in that game. Now, maybe people get a little bit nervous when Steven Sims, you know, is involved in the offense and he's doing reverses and the ball's bouncing off of his chest and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. But Steven Sims is a wide receiver. With punt returner ability, the Houston Texans finally got themselves a wide receiver. Uh, we are broadcasting live from Carbock Brewery. Uh, I'll be honest. We talk about the food sometimes when we go places. Those might be the best steak tacos I've ever had in my life. I've they were, in your life. They were so they good. They were very good. Because they're like, it's like, it was like, it's real steak too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like some, sometimes it's steak tacos, it's like, it's not always as good a steak as you'd want. Gotcha. But those were very good. The those were very good. Pickled onions. Also great. Very underrated addition to any meal. Fact. I wish I knew how to make them. I think what you put them like in vinegar for like a day or something. Uh, like yeah, that? there's like there's like some you put them in something, and then the yeah. lo- usually the longer you have it sit there, the better it is. Okay. My father-in-law does that. He pickles a lot of stuff. Oh. It's like a go-to thing. But sometimes he'll just like my wife will come home one day from going to see him, and he'll just have this like she'll just like jar of pickled stuff. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's pretty great. I love right. pickling stuff. So yeah. At, uh, so at 4 o'clock today, uh, and in the days going forward, until they finish this, the Killer Bees <coughs> are doing a Fight Club bracket. Yeah. And I did not know they were doing this. I know I know BMAC was putting together a graphic yesterday. Um, but So Jeremy Bram tweeted this out, and it's the Killer Bees Fight Club bracket. There's four regions, the Hand region, the Lord region, the Palillo region, and the Cooper region. And... It's all the local producers, hosts throughout all three stations here in town. And they're going to determine who would win in their March Madness Fight Club bracket. So, Paul, in the first round, you drew B. Scott. Now, I love B. Scott. B. Scott's a great guy. We've only spent a little bit of time together. But last year we sat next to each other during opening day. I I enjoyed my time with him. He doesn't scream fighter to me, Paul. I feel like you look. I feel like you look okay in this first round matchup. He's he's got long arms. He actually has tweeted about this. Oh, he has. He's tweeted about this, and and his thought process was that he needs to knock me out in thirty seconds because you're in shape. Because the endurance side of things. Here, here's the thing, and I've I've been honest about my fighting record: two and four lifetime fights, one yep. knockout by me. I have been knocked down twice within 30 seconds because I fought people that are way bigger than me. Okay. Uh, both of them were like six foot five. Did not go my way. Usually just uh, one right uh, punch to the head and, um, <coughs> and your boy drops like a sack of potatoes. So, here's the other thing. I'm not, I mean, in honor of Shohei Otani, I am not above throwing a fight. Okay. I'm not above throwing a fight here. How much do you need? Especially because I like Brandon. Yeah. I like Brandon a lot. Um, I need I need a good amount of money though because there's yeah. some you know there's some pride here. Yeah. So a hundred thousand dollars, I would take a dive. Okay. Hundred thousand, and and uh, I I would also want to bet on the 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 dive that I'm taking. Yeah, as well. that's that's fair. That's I'm gonna go fair. straight like snatch or no, no. some other guy Richie TV show. Now Brian, just to clarify, because you're right here with us. Uh, so these these were random. Yeah, Jeremy. Uh, oh. I was not part of the. Uh, uh, the process of putting together the matchups, but Jeremy said he did it uh, randomly while he was on the, the flight out to the Cougars' first-round site. Well, then I got lucky, I guess, because I got the only other guy who's shorter <laughs> than me in the market, and it's my guy. I love Figgy Fig. Figgy Fig is my that'd dude. Be, that'd be hard, hard to fight Figgy Fig. He's it, so lovable. It really would be, but I, I, wa- I want to eat Ws. I want to be like <laughs> Jameis Winston. I'm going to eat a dub. I love Figgy. He's a lover, not a fighter. And it's the only reach advantage I got. We have to 
We well, that's I'm not sure about that. But hey, <laughs> I think it is. Uh, I don't know. I think I think Figgy is shorter than me. It's been a while since I've seen him in person. I'm not sure. It's close. Uh, here's the thing, because I I know I, I have yet to see your uh, unbridled rage. Yes. I, I I don't think you could get mad enough to beat Figgy. Well, specifically at Figgy. Because he's so no, damn lovable. Exactly. It's, it's the one person that you probably don't want to fight. He's probably the most liked person in this city, him and B. Scott. We drew the two nicest people. Yeah, B. Scott's a great dude. Like, we, we drew the unfortunate. Like, why couldn't I get one of the guys I don't like? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> also, if, here's the thing. If we win, if we win, it's a hate crime. We can't do that. I, I'm like, why couldn't I get one of the dinosaurs? And I just kick their knee out, and I would get a win. That's a good why point. don't you go ahead and name one? I mean, I love Sean. <laughs> Sean Salisbury is one of my closest friends on the planet. He's bought me endless amounts of tequila shots. But you take him out. But he's 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 got the he's got bad he's got bad knees. What like you know? So I guess it's a, is it a fight? Is it a boxing? So you fight? want so it's so Joe a, George? It's like Fight Club. You're, what you're, I'm you're, learning you're here, you're like in a parking lot. You're just yeah. Then like I'm just gonna like kick his knee out. And I'm, I'm done. Podcast I'm, headline: I Joe George away. wants to fight Sean Salisbury. Yeah, like <laughs> like one kick to the knee and I've got a dub. Mm. Uh, what other matchups are you interested in? I want to see. I want to I want to see uh, Dell versus Clint Sterner. Ooh, yeah, yeah. You That's think good. You, you think Dale can pull off the upset? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think so too. I do. He talk. I think one of those guys talks a big game. Uh, Maves Matt Thomas would be interesting. Um, Maves would win that one. Um, I feel bad for Wexler getting paired with Seth Payne. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Say, well, he you, should you get a weapon. Sa- yeah, you were saying that the, the, the break. athletes like so. I think you should get an a- athlete to go up against the weapon. So, uh, so for Tell versus Clint, and Tell gets a weapon. <laughs> yeah, give like, brass- like, like a, just a club. <laughs> I was going to say, bra- say brass nuts. Because yeah, Sean Pendergast is going up against Booker T, who's a wrestler. That's He's tough. screwed. You got to give these. Yeah, yeah but the wrestling's fake. Yeah, but if you're going up against you say Booker uh, T couldn't whip Booker, your ass. Booker no, T, <laughs> Booker T is an athlete. Me. Like I, those people, like again, yeah. I get that they're fixed, but th- these people are, no, are 100 percent athletes. No, I, I feel like if you're going up against an athlete in these brackets, you should have some sort of uh, weapon to work with. Yeah. Now I do feel like my second round matchup would be interesting. Yeah. Because I would get I would get because you're because th- you're you I would think get, so little of Figgy, you think he would win. Yes. Uh, not that I think wow. little of Figgy, but wow. I think I would win. Well, you literally think little of Figgy. You think you're taller than Figgy. I do. I don't believe you 100%. It doesn't really feel like a bragging point, though. It's not. Figgy's <laughs> hair makes him a little higher. Too. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. If you measure it to the hair, he's got you. Yeah, because I have none. So it helps, it helps Figgy in that one. Well, my second round matchup will be interesting. I have two guys that I love and respect, but two guys I have argued with and screamed at with and had text messages exchanged in which both of them have been very mad at me in my life. Uh, one like of them you worked with a lot. One was one's PC and one's Clanton. That would Who be yelled a, at you more? I mean, Clanton and I w- had some knockdown drag outs off the air. There was times where we would scream at each other during breaks, and then, like, once we're on the air, we're fine. But, like, uh, we would just, like, yell at each other. Been there. Like, we were just yelling at each other. That was other. my first radio partner, Brian Straw. Like, yeah. we, we loved each other. But we, it, exactly. And also, from time to time, with Barry Warner. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, I know maybe I'm a traitor, but, like, I was literally at his house for the Super Bowl. Um, like, so he's still my guy, but, like, we would scream at each other all the time. But I, would, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get Creighton in the second round because, well, no offense, Pat. Clan's winning that one. Clan's winning that one. That one. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to fight Clan in the second round, though, so I'm going to take the L on that one probably. Paul, your second round match would be, be uh, Blank or Bajani. Hmm. Tell me how much you want to punch Joel in the face. <laughs> I don't want to punch Joel in the face. No, Joel and I like are. I've, I've known Joel as long as I've known anyone in I this know. market. I I like Joel a lot, so I would actually have a hard time there. Okay. I, I don't know if Joel would feels the same way as far as like getting in a fight with him, and, and the other person too, like Sean Bajani. Like I went to Sean Bajani's ta- bachelor party. Like, I know. I, like, I don't. Th- these people. I don't want to fight these. Talk people. about nicest guys in the market. Bajani's up there. Yeah. This is that's that's what's. Ta- I and, like. And he's in really great shape. So I like that's gonna that be a tough fight. I like this idea, but like. There's, there's this there, is tough. There's maybe, well, today, there's maybe two people I'd want to fight on this entire bracket. Okay, and and usually it would just be I one know person. one of them. And even and even and even that one person, I'm not even sure I'd want to do that anymore. I'm a I'm a lover, not a fighter. The only person I would, even be though like, I'm two of four career lifetime with one awesome knockout. <laughs> I don't really. I have deserve credit for my knockout. Yeah, I like too many people. The that knockout was like, amazing. Want to partake in this? This guy at a at a frat party. He uh, he bumped into me and he wasn't wearing a shirt. And I said, "Nice shirt." Offensive word. And uh, so he shoved me. Uh, I shoved him. We got separated a little bit later uh, at this frat party. Uh, he 
made eye contact with me again, and then he shoved me. So I just like uh, right in the middle of the party. A, gave him a gave him a nice like right hand hook to the face. Boom, knocked him down. Then nice. I got tackled into a couch with two women on it. There were two women shoved me off it. They tried to stop my privates with their heels, and I had long hair at the time. And someone was trying to like drag me away. I was like, oh well, this is it. This is how, how it all ends. How, how long? Yeah, I can't see you with long hair. It was uh like eh, like. Hockey lacrosse ish. Okay. And okay. the person was. Uh, I could see that. Pulling me by the hair. I'm like, it, it was, it, you know, it was just like a handful of it. Sure. It was thick hair. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm about to get killed. And it was my best friend bringing me out of it. And at that moment in time, I'm like, I'm never going to get another fight again. All right. Two games down in the tournament. Very Duquesne close. wins their but first nice round matchup out. versus BYU. Michigan State won their first round matchup versus Mississippi State. Best game going on right now. I guess Arizona and Long Beach State, 41-35, 2 versus 15 in the first half of that game. So Creighton pulled in, front of, uh, pulled in front of Akron by quite a bit. But March Madness going on right now. Great place to come watch it is Carbock. We are here until 6 o'clock today, so come on out, get some good food, some good beer, and watch the games. Coming up next, is there a gambling, gambling problem coming to professional and collegiate sports? What's your concern? That's next here on ESPN 97.5 92.5. Paul Gallant looks very confused right now because he's he got clean out his ears. I just said probably the meanest thing I've ever said to anyone about off the air, and now but Brian wants me to say it on the. I air. don't think I don't think it was <laughs> I don't think it was off the air. It was. You but sure? I'm not gonna say it on the air because I respect this person. Well, I didn't hear what you said. And I'll tell you off the air because no. I like this person. Let's just put it this way: there's someone in this bracket that I think they would win their first round matchup. Because they don't shower frequently. <laughs> I'm not gonna name names. Like that's it's mean. I, I can't. No, I can't you name have names. to now. Now you have to. Uh, no, I can't do it. Why I, not? I, I'm too nice of a guy. Well, I mean, no. I mean, this is this is the least nice thing you could do. You could tell this person not that they nice smell enough bad. to not say it in the first place. Yeah, exactly. You 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 could tell this person the truth because that's what friends Does, do. Doesn't and instead, what you're choosing but to I only, do. I only worked with this person for like a short part. 
short period of time. But you doesn't, said – Doesn't you saying it off air but not on air make you a soft-ass boy? Yes. yes. Soft boys next week. You know what, Brian? <laughs> yes, it does. Sometimes you have to admit when you're being an SAB, a soft-ass boy. And right now, I am being one. Okay? I'm okay with that. So you just have to be okay with it, Paul. I'm not okay with it. Well, I'm okay with it in this Yeah, moment. of course you are because you're a coward. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. If you DM me C-O-W-A-R-D. and follow me on Twitter, at Joe George Radio. W-A-R-D. Uh, so, are you concerned well. that there's going to be, like, this is the tip of the iceberg in gambling in sports? Do you feel like we have a major gambling betting scandal on our horizon, or is it something that is not really on your radar, you would say? Yeah, I I don't think this is going to be the, the the I guess straw that breaks the camel's back as far as gambling and potential scandals. I, I think whatever it whatever does happen, it, it won't be this. This seems to be more an issue of a guy who just gambles a lot and might be a degenerate more so than at least as far as we know right now, the sanctity of the game being called into question with Shohei Otani. Yeah, I this is not I really don't think if he was betting on baseball, I think we would have already heard that. Well, I don't know that, but I I think now you have to investigate (laughs) to determine whether or not he is. But from the sound of things, you're putting that kind of money on anything. It would raise red flags. It should. Even if it's his interpreter doing it, which is what we're being told happened. Is that the interpreter was the one putting the bets down. But I would imagine that they would have been able to put two and two together if some wire transfers involve <laughs> Shohei Otani's name. Yeah, if, if – okay, this might be a semantics thing. Let's say Shohei Otani's not actually betting on these games. His interpreter is, but he's betting on Dodgers games with information he's getting from Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani then is clearing his debts to this illegal bookie. Isn't that just the exact same thing as Shohei Otani pl- placing the bets himself? Like, is it really that different? Like, if he's giving information or the interpreter has information from the Dodgers, and at the end of the day, Otani is helping to pay for this, isn't it basically the same thing? <sighs> it's hard to 100% prove that. But yeah. If we're talking about a criminal court, no. But if we're talking about a civil court where it's more than 50% likely, then probably. And then there's the court of Rob, Rob Manfred, which can have – Zero proof of guilt, and you can get suspended and punished for things. I'm really curious as to what Manfred does here. I mean, this is his they meal ha- ticket. They got to be freaking out. They want this to go away, and the real question is, will people let this go away? I think it is happening at a very convenient time for baseball in that more people are focused on the NCAA tournament in the beginning of it today than they are that, and I mean – when there is as little information readily available as there is right now outside of uh, spokespeople mm-hmm. releasing statements, can an entity like ESPN, Fox Sports, The Athletic, can they really go all in with the digging? Probably not, especially with, again, something that is, I would imagine, occupying these thoughts of a lot more people that follow sports today yeah because most people want to watch the tournament they want to bet on the tournament and and see what happens this is one of the best two days of the year you got basketball and then four minutes of the final of a basketball game followed by the next Mm -hmm. basketball games last four minutes and buzzer beaters and all sorts of crazy stuff you know i think the the most complicated part of all this with like the the leagues and, and gambling that i find fascinating this now, this lawsuit didn't get anywhere, but there was a man in 2020 who would legally bet through DraftKings, and he sued Major League Baseball about the Houston Astros because his bets, he thought, were not being played fairly, mm. which I understand. And it is one of the more complicated things. You know, if if gambling was legal during the Tim Donahue era in basketball, you could make an argument that the, a lawsuit versus the NBA would be just as justified, especially when there seems to be more proof there that him and Scott Foster and others were absolutely tilting the way that basketball games were being played. Like, that's what I think is, is complicated about this. 
is that now that you've opened the door into welcoming you know, sports gambling as the company, as the NFL, as the NBA, as Major League Baseball, it, and you're encouraging your fans to bet on games, if your teams then cheat and your players then cheat, it does really muddy the water in a way that I, I just don't know to the extent of like how they handle that. What kind of cheating are we talking about? Here? I think anything. Uh, steroids is probably the one where like you can't really do much about it. It has to be organized cheating. I, I don't think people care about steroids the same way that they did when the steroid scandal first came to light yeah. with everyone testifying in front of Congress and Congress actually making it something that they felt was you know necessary to insert themselves into for reasons that I don't really understand. What's the win? Who are you pandering to yeah, that's by taking a stand against millionaire athletes that are pumping their bodies so that they can continue to be millionaire athletes? I, I, you're, wow. Man, you stood up to, to big baseball. Good for you. As far as though, like the cheating today, I mean, really the last thing we had was the Astros. I don't know if, if, if there was anybody that was threatening to get involved from a Congress side of things. I know no, we had a couple really. of lawsuits. Yeah. No, not really. But that was pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, from a from someone that, that, that gambles, like, I, I'll be honest. I, I think that this guy who tried to sue Major League Baseball over what happened with the Astros honestly had a, a fair – you have a fair case. <gasps> now, it's not – it's it's complicated because that means these leagues have to – tell the truth which we know they didn't do we know it wasn't just the astros we know it was the dodgers the red sox the yankees the rockies all these other different teams the brewers that you know so that's where it's complicated but i i think there was there would have been a i think there was a real argument at one point like if you have teams you know altering these games that dramatically the people who are just who are betting their own hard-earned cash on these games they believe that they're betting on an honest game and like it's that's what's that's what's complicated. Uh, I'll be honest though, my biggest concern though is not pro sports. I think most pro athletes. I know we've seen a bunch of NFL players get suspended. It's it's the college athlete athletics that I have but, my but I'm most watching. Whoever gets punished there though, a texture brings up Michigan football. They got cheating caught cheating right. a couple of months ago, but like who? Who would they punish on that front outside of the figurehead coaches? Because that, that they punished Harbaugh what like twice last year. He got suspended. <coughs> yeah, for what? For buying a cheeseburger. Yeah, like he was buying a cheeseburger. I love how the NCAA tried to make it seem like it was a lot worse. And than he was that. buying a cheeseburger. It's it's not about the punishment. It's more about from and then the, there was the sign stealing thing that yeah. happened later. It's more about just from like the gambling perspective that I, I would say if there's going to be a massive scandal that breaks out at some point with the legalization of gambling and, you know, people like we mentioned J.B. Bickerstaff earlier getting texted by randos about where he lives and his kids and being threatened, I, I would guess it would be more likely to happen in the college realm than it would be in the pro realm because they're more, more impressionable. Like what if someone says, hey, this isn't an NIL deal, but I'll offer you $2 million to throw this game versus Alabama. I'm taking the two million. Exactly. <laughs> I'm taking the two million. Because same. Especially if you are not even making a salary. Yeah, it's, the pros are, I think, okay. And also because of the severe punishments that the pros have levied on players. Specifically, you know, what we saw with Calvin Ridley. Uh -huh. like Calvin Ridley had to apologize for putting down money on a parlay. It was, like, was, it was, like, it was like 10 grand total. Right, yeah, exactly. It was... And it involved the Falcons... Or, yeah, it involved the Falcons winning. Yeah. And, I mean... <laughs> If you're putting a parlay down, like I'm sorry, that's not a serious bet, but they wanted they wanted everyone to know. But uh, college is, I guess, where it would be trickiest because yeah, how do you punish them? You expel them from school. Okay. And so they go to the so they go to the NBA draft the next year. Oh well, like you almost have to get the pro leagues on board. Mm -hmm. But like, not all those guys are pros. And I mean, I think someone would have a much would feel a lot better. Well, I guess, I guess maybe the. the what would a team feel more comfortable? I, I guess I don't know off the top of my head now that I'm thinking about it. Would a team be more willing to take somebody who's done something, I don't know, potentially violent or checkered off the field or take on somebody who may or may not have been violence. involved in fixing games? Violence. They take the violence person? Or 100%. Would they be more, would they be more concerned about the violence? Or oh, oh, no, they would take them. They would take them. I, I firmly believe that if you sat down 
Nick Saban, Jim Harbaugh, Bill Belichick, anyone. And you said you can have X player who is a clearly scumbag. You can have Deshaun Watson or you can have Pete Rose who is trying to – now, he always says he's better on his team to win, but which one would you rather have? They would rather take the guy that they are confident is trying to win a football game or a baseball game over the guy that they're not as sure about. Yeah. What if a guy stops playing for a season? It's true. Before certain incidents came to light. That's fair. That's fair. So maybe Watson's a little bit of a different, one, a difficult one to put in there and, yeah. and say this is the same kind of person. But, um, yeah, you're probably right. They probably would take the shot on the person that has done something <laughs> violent in nature mm-hmm. off the field over somebody who at some point in time his competitiveness – has been legitimately called into question yeah. because he might not have been throw- doing something. And he might have been getting paid not to do something as opposed to just being a lazy person. Uh, last question I have on this, okay? Okay. Um, would you be okay if athletes were allowed to bet on their team to win games? Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah, I don't see what's wrong with like, that. Like, why can't Jordan Alvarez bet on himself plus 600 hit 50 home runs? Maybe the difficulty would be insider yeah. information or something like that. Sure. Say, like, hey – it's warm-ups, and you put the bet down because you see a certain player on the other team not warming up, and you would probably have that information before somebody else. So that, I guess, would be the danger. But if you're betting on your team to win still, I don't know. I mean, I'd be fine with it. I don't, I don't have any issue yeah, with it Yeah, you're, you're, try, you're trying to win. Uh, I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? Like, Jameis Winston's going to hand the ball off to uh, Jamal Williams at the yeah. one-yard line and like so that they can cover a spread? Do you th- that's, that's the one part of this, too, that like, everyone thinks that's for real. Like, that's what everyone views this stuff as now. You're taking a three-pointers at the game you're not supposed to take out of uh, morals. It all looks like they're trying to cover now. Or not cover. That is a conspiracy theory. That is that is <coughs> that is some tinfoil hat territory. That's I I think that's where it is. You think backdoor covers like yeah. uh, man? I don't know about that. If there if there was because I, I think it, it'd be it'd be so much easier to get a backdoor cover than just win a game outright most of the time in the NFL or in college football. Like when the third stringers are in. Okay. All right. The athletic they join the group of people. Or at least one, at least one rider, who are really loving on the Houston Texans this offseason. That's next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. MyBookie.ag. March Madness is upon us. You want to sign up. You want to enter promo code BET975. When you do, you get to match your first deposit up to $1,000 with cash that you can play with right away. If you're listening earlier in the show, your boy who gave you some free money when he told you to hammer Colorado State against Virginia, he got you paid. Looking right now with Wagner, 25.5 point dogs going into this game against North Carolina. Things are looking all right on that front. It's only a 31-21 game right now. Is Paul giving you free money through mybookie.ag, promo code BET975? You can make that case. Plenty of other games to bet on today as well. Do you want to bet against Texas just because you hate them? You want Sean Mapes and BMAC to be sad? Well, Colorado State, guess what? Three-point dogs against the Texas Longhorns. You want them hooked out of the tournament? Well, mybookie.ag, promo code BET975. You can bet on that game and more March Madness. It's mybookie.ag, promo code BET975. Bet anything anywhere, anytime, only with mybookie.ag, promo code BET975.
You're listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. We are live here at Carbach watching some March Madness. You guys should come out as well. Enjoy the games. Enjoy the beer. Enjoy the food. Uh, Paul and I both had the uh, steak tacos. They were incredible. Very good salsa Some as well with the chips. Carbock Bach. Yep, I'm dropping a hop, dropping a hopadillo right now. Might need another one. I might be getting a love street at the very end of this. Uh, Joe, there is a March Madness game in progress. Mm-hmm. It features the Arizona Wildcats and uh, Long Beach State. Okay. Currently 45-35. Last I checked, Arizona on top, 23 and a half point spread there. So picking. Dan Monson and the boys to cover. You can't. You might remember that Dan Monson is the coach who was fired before Long Beach State's Big West tourney, mm-hmm. only to see Long Beach State win the tourney. Well, now we have a statement from Long Beach State's athletic director, and my God, this is delicious. Long Beach State athletic director said the timing of his decision to part ways with Dan Monson was done with the hope it might trigger the exact run that led the team on its unexpected trip to March Madness. Quote, my belief and hope is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired. And that's what they did, Bobby Smitherin told the Associated Press on Thursday, a few hours before the beach tipped off against Arizona. Quote, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it worked. Oh, oh, gosh. What an idiot. I kind of respect just the lie. What an a hole you have to be. Like, what a scum to take credit for a conference tournament victory. So now, I guess if you're this guy, Pat uh, uh, Smitherin, you can't fire him. Bobby Smitherin. You can't fire Dan Monson now that they've made the tournament. You can't do it. You got to stick with him for next year. And if you're if you're if you're Dan Monson, why the hell would you stay? I think you have to. You can't. You can only fire him. You can only keep him if he wins the whole thing. This is like because you're motivating him. This keep is, fighting for your job, <laughs> one win at a time. This would be like one of us getting fired because the ratings were down mm-hmm. and the ratings go up, and they said like, "Yeah, we were just trying to motivate you a little bit." Oh yeah. Like just you know, and the program director would one hundred percent take credit for that. A hundred, well they always they would. do. Yeah, they always do. Yeah, Ooh. they they never just getting like a random meter that makes you look good. Um, like I I don't. This statement's tough, dude. They're, they're clearly that relationship is not good. You don't think? Like you don't think they're peachy keen? Yeah. It is no. So, I can't I can't believe he would say that. Actually, I can I I. I, you know, these athletic directors are absolute weasels at college programs, so I love it. Yeah, like just the – but to publicly say that and, and to be lying through your teeth like that is wild. Well, he's not lying. He, he, he knew what he had to do, and he did it, <coughs> and it worked. Yeah. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. <laughs> but you are. <laughs> what a jabroni. I love it, though. Um, all right, we'll, we'll skip around a little bit. Uh, do you see – Sean, do we have the, the James Harden stuff ready now? All right. Last night. So, we, <laughs> so, so we're not we're going to move this around. This so is my favorite story. We got, so we're going to play a game of who looks worse. So now we have this athletic director from Long Beach State. Yes. And let's like, now we'll enter uh, James Harden. We'll do a little mini bracket here. Facing off against James Harden and this uh, immaculate play from last night's Clippers game. Did you feel like you was making it easier or harder for Kawhi when you contested that, that three in the corner? Got to bring some excitement to the team. You know what I mean? Like, I think this last few weeks has been a fog for us, and I think every team goes through it. So I think just me just trying to create a good energy, create a, vibe, a great vibe for this team. And, um, I mean, it would have been better if we made the shot, but let's give someone give some to laugh about, laugh about, you know what I mean? Some excitement for, for the season. Did you accomplish did you accomplish your mission? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> what like he smirked at the end of that. So if you didn't see the play. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. The ball gets dished to Kawhi Leonard in the corner by James Harden. Yeah. And then James Harden closes out and puts his arm up basically to block Kawhi's shot. And he's saying 
And then he it turns up court acting like it's about to go in, like he was <laughs> high fiving him in the middle of the shot or something. So like he's that. like, he's saying it's for bleeps and giggles. Well, I, he, I guess. I mean, the Clippers have been through some hard times, and you know, far be it for me to defend James Harden here, but hey, it does create a little excitement. It is a little bit of fun, you know. At the end of the day, isn't basketball about fun? I mean, it, I James guess. Harden's just lightening the mood in the locker room with his teammates, who clearly really love playing with them. Which, what a dummy. Like, I don't know. I kind of like it. Um, <laughs> I kind of like how stupid it is. We all have brain farts from time to time. We host okay. radio shows, and every now and then we say things that make no sense, that directly contradict things that we have said a little bit earlier. Yes. So what's wrong with a guy almost blocking his teammate shot? It's, I, they I, won the game, right? They did win. They won. They're fine. But like, I, I don't know. That's not okay. What a dumb dumb. James Harden. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. All right, so who looks worse, the Long Beach State Athletic Director or James Harden? Oh, yeah, the Long Beach State Athletic Director. What a jackass. Well, let's bring another athletic director into the conversation. Oh, we got another nominee. Let's go. Um, the University of Virginia Athletic Director um, liked this tweet. And you're out after one half, which will go down as one of the worst tournament um in history, everyone is laughing at your horrible team. Also, hope the committee feels good about this incompetent decision to put UVA in the field. So this is Carla Williams. She's the athletic director at Virginia. She's liking these tweets of people just trashing University of Virginia being in the tournament. It's not good, Paul. It is not good. It's not good. Not good at all. But here's the thing. Okay. And hear me out. Some people use likes as bookmarks. I do. I do not use the bookmark feature on X. I the use, bookmark feature. I use, is I use like to like tweets sometimes, but usually I use it as a bookmark. I gotta clean up. I gotta clean it up though. Gotta spend a couple like hours just like going liking some stuff, yeah. seeing if there's anything that I like that I that I saved. Look, I mean, Virginia plays an ugly brand of basketball that uh, pretty much everyone hates, and yeah, they want a natty doing it, but are they gonna win a natty again doing it? You know, Syracuse won the one title with the 2-3 zone <laughs> defense, which a lot of people hate. Uh-huh. Probably not going to happen again, especially in the near future. I, I don't mind her getting uh, – I don't mind her agreeing with points made by the fans. In fact, that makes me think that she is one of the fans. Mm. She is a, a lady of the people, if you will. So – I think the other two are worse. I think this is okay. This is completely harmless. It probably is, and it is, is in fact it's good. It's good for the for the Wahoos out there. Yeah, whatever they call themselves. Uh, just because it came up just now in conversation, we'd just like to remind everyone as a public service announcement because we are here for the people, Paul Gallant. We are uh, just a reminder that anything you like on Twitter, people can see. Not everyone seems to know that. Just a reminder. So if you like weird things, or maybe inappropriate. Not safe for work videos. Uh -huh. People will see your likes and publicly realize of what you're really using Twitter for. So it's just a public service announcement for the people. Just to make sure that they're aware. Anyone in particular that, that we know uh, that's liking a little porno on Twitter? Anyone? Uh, anyone? 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 Bueller? Bueller? Uh, Joel Blake's mad at Bueller. me. Bueller? Why is Joel Blake mad at me? Oh, no, so, no, 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 no. He uh, uh, hey, Joel, Joel would be a shower outside. Joel thinks that uh, the shower comment was about him. I promise it, it was, was not. It was. It was not. Joel, he was winking at me. He was like, yeah, it's Joel. Every day I would come <laughs> in for the bullpen at 6 o'clock, and I would, you know what I would say? I'd be like, oh, it smells so nice in here. It's not been 100 degrees Were in you the sniffing, studio. Joel? No. I think you, you're, you just made that really creepy. I know yeah. I did, but I have to defend myself. What does Jeremy smell like? I don't know. I didn't sit in that chair. You ever, you what ever flower would you use to describe describe Jeremy's smell? Yeah, I don't like flowers. Uh, but let's go with lilies. Look, this is a nice. <laughs> it smells like lilies. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go with lilies. Uh. All right. We're going. Is that the only break. flower you can name? I was gonna say roses, but I feel like roses don't have a great. Don't have that. Who at ESPN 97.5 <laughs> does <laughs> Joe want to sniff the most? Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Sometimes I just walk myself right. Right into these things. Hey, hey, uh, maybe if Sean, he maybe would you let Joel Joe sniff you? Maybe if Joel didn't think every single thing I said on the radio without naming a name was about him, I wouldn't have to, like, awkwardly defend myself. Well, it is, myself. though. You did, you did nudge me, and you say, yeah, it's Joel. It's Blankers. Joel, he's a stinky boy. What up, H-Town? I'm a stinky boy. <laughs> <at 3 o 'clock. laughs> All right. ESPN 97.5, 92.5. The Athletic loves the Texans. That's next.
You're listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios located at Carbach Brewing Company. Coming to you live from Carbach, Gallant and George here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Here with you till 6 o'clock all day. Uh, we'll be live at Nick's Place tomorrow starting at 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. But come hang out at Carbach today, watch some March Madness, get some food, get some beer. Uh, it's a great place to watch this tournament. Obviously, when the weather's a little bit nicer, the patio, the outdoor area is absolutely incredible. So it's definitely a, a great spot to come and catch some Astros games and tournament games just as the weather gets a little bit nicer out. So come hang out at Carbach. The weather is getting nicer now. It I is. I see the sun. I know. It was pouring earlier. All right. Do you, are you familiar with uh, Josh Kendall? at all i am not so he, i i know his work a little bit he's he's a good writer uh he he covers mostly the atlanta falcons or he did for a while and then he, he uh um and covered the sec but he's an nfl writer for the athletic and he put out his post free agency power rankings across the nfl and i was surprised when i saw this list number one the kansas city chiefs huh number two the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. Number three. So it's third best team in the so, NFL. So, so this is this is not based off of what they did in free agency. This, this is, is their where collective. They yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Where they rank as their start season starting power rankings right now. Number three is the Detroit Lions. And then number four, he has the Houston Texans. No way. Four? He has the Houston Texans ranked as his fourth team. In the NFL. Now, over Baltimore. Over Baltimore. Now, to his defense, or to the point of this, I guess, he had him ranked fifth after the Super Bowl. He had Baltimore four, Texans five. Okay. So. What happened? Baltimore I, kept Justin Matabuike. They lost Patrick Queen. They added Derrick Henry. I mean, I, I, feel like, I feel like the offense is a little bit better with Derrick Henry. I I feel like the defense losing Patrick Queen when you still have Roquan Smith isn't the end of the world. So I guess I take issue with them leapfrogging Baltimore with how yeah. thoroughly Baltimore beat that ass in the divisional round. I, I would agree with that. I, I mean, mean they I, lose all of Beckham Jr., but like, he didn't do anything. That's a nobody. Yeah. And even technically at the time this article was written, he doesn't have OBJ in his notable losses category because I guess it wasn't a sure thing that he would be gone. <coughs> it was the same. Like He doesn't have Steven Nelson listed here. For the Texans, but she has, you know, obviously, like they added Dino Hunter, Nidico Autry, you know, Mixon, Aziz Al Shair, Jeffrey Okuda, which, like, I don't consider that as notable. Um, but versus their losses, it does balance out pretty well. But at least one person has them as, you know, the, the fourth best team in the NFL Hell right yeah, now. Yeah, dude. I, I think that's a stretch. I agree with you. I like the Texans this year. I feel more confident that they're going to make the playoffs than I did before for agency because I do think that this team is better, even though I don't really understand what they're doing at defensive tackle. Like, uh, they've had so many pieces. I'm going to trust that Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans have a plan because it looks like they do. I just don't quite understand it at this point. And then, you know, really the only position they're worse at is corner right now at their number two corner. Yeah, they're worse at corner. They improved everywhere else. Until – Theoretically, Steven Nelson comes back. And uh, the news today, at least as far as names that the Texans were sniffing around, they brought in a, another cornerback uh, who was a top 10 pick, most recently with the Carolina Panthers, C.J. Henderson, in for a visit. Uh, he was drafted, C.J. Henderson, by the Jaguars mm-hmm. first. So um, – not exactly someone that's getting you super excited because I do think that they need to have a better number two corner than, than what they currently have. It's You can't have former top ten picks on their 13th as the de facto guy. They can compete for it. Two guys competing for it, not the worst thing in the world, but what are the odds that both of these guys or either of these guys are actually going to be the player that we once thought they could be? Pretty low. Uh, I'm surprised that the Texans are ahead of the Ravens, um, but I do think that the top ten conversation, the Houston Texans belong in it, and the NFC is such a mess where you don't really look at anybody with a great deal of respect. Um, yeah, this guy has four teams. I can see NFC. why they're that. I can see why they're in the top ten. I just the top. Yeah. Top, top three, four is surprising. Top four, that's a lot. So, yeah. so Josh Kendall um, has four NFC teams in his top ten, which okay. kind of sends a red flag to me about his list in general. 
Um, so you have San Francisco two, Detroit three. Right. Green Bay five. Man, the Jordan Love hype. I Dallas get it. Dallas nine. Dallas is nine. <coughs> the Jordan Love hype is out of control. It's pretty, pretty extreme right now. And that's not saying that he didn't finish the season strong. He did. But I feel like we are perhaps getting a little bit too excited about the way he looked down the stretch. I think it's gone too far. Yeah. It, it's like it, it's not it jump the shark, I guess, range. I mean, look, this guy, it, look, he's got both takes. I give him that. He's got the Philadelphia Eagles as a 16th team in the NFL. You got the Eagles as 16. Yeah, that's crazy to me, too. Is like, that crazy? Um. I mean, look at he the way they finished the year. The, the guys who are retiring, the guys who sure. are leaving. Saquon Barkley is going to fix but all like, that. I, I, I would still not. I would not have Green Bay, who has number five. Dallas, who has number nine. And I would not have uh, Tampa Bay, who has number 12, ahead of the Eagles at 16. Joel's giving you an incredulous look for mentioning Green I, Bay. I think Green Bay belongs in the top 15 in the NFL, yes, for sure. But not yeah. in the top five of a power ranking. He agrees with me. Too. Five, five is high. It's, it's all yeah. based off of Jordan Love. It's That's nuts. Um Huh. Man, Texans at four. It's Look at surprising. this. Look at this hype machine. This is the first time they've probably ever been seriously hyped going into a season since I was, the 2012 year. I was thinking this might be the most they've ever had. And you would know a little bit more than me, but. Yeah, 2012, there was hype. No doubt about it. People were like, oh, well, I mean, they didn't have Schaub, and they almost beat the Ravens in the second round of the playoffs who almost beat the Patriots, who almost beat the Giants. So they were almost, almost, almost third-degree Super Bowl champs. Yeah. And then going into the next year, you're thinking to yourself, oh, they're going to be even better. They did start off 11-1. All uh, right, be in peace. Hey, just so you know, your Patriots are not in the bottom three. He's got to move up to 29. Nice, bottom 29 four. 29 team. Who's, below, who's at the bottom? Uh, the Panthers are number 32. Yep. Cardinals are 31. Saints are 30. Oh, Bears. Put the Bears there. They are 22. On this list, twenty-two, uh, twenty-three on this list. They're already thinking like Caleb Williams, like by default makes us better. Dude, Nick Even Wright, though. Nick Wright said, uh, "Expectation for year one, eleven wins, ten or eleven wins, with Caleb Williams, with Caleb Williams and the Bears this year." Okay, that's a lot. I like what they've done this off season, but that's asking a lot of a rookie quarterback. <laughs> I now he might be going to the best situation that's ever been a rookie quarterback's ever been given. To be fair, well, so did Bryce Young. Well, this no, I, I think this one's legit. Everyone said going into last year though that Bryce Young was in a situation that was really good for him, and then it which really is wasn't. crazy. I never understood that. Like, uh, how did you look at the Panthers roster? And be like, yeah, Adam Thielen, this Frank team. Reich, baby, yeah, yeah, like that team, Frank Reich, who failed in Indianapolis with every single quarterback that got in front of him. So why, so why is Caleb Williams' situation so good? DJ Moore's a top ten wide receiver. He is top twelve. He I would is say. statistically, he's up there. Keenan Allen's up there as a top wide receiver in the NFL. Uh, uh, Keenan, Keenan Allen, uh, DJ Moore. I think DJ Moore is good, but I, I'm, I'm top. Um, DeAndre Swift had a Man. good year last year. Cole Komet's a top ten-ish tight end in the NFL. Pretty good defense. It's just pretty. Caleb Williams already top ten me guy in the NFL. A fact for sure. I don't think ten wins is the expectations. Nick Wright thinks ten wins is the expectation for next year. I wouldn't say no, he's that. Trying to, <laughs> he would say that. So what happens? You just hype somebody up going into the start of a year. And you That's because I'm a dumb dumb and picked the Bears to win the division last year. So I'm not gonna. Ever you did. I owe Joel a hat still and Jeremy a bottle why of gentle Ben. Why? I'm stupid. Okay. Sometimes I yeah. make stupid bets. That's 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 definitely true. It's like it's like uh, what's the, which one's the uh, Billy Madison? You're right. I'm wrong. You're smart. I'm dumb. Yes. All of those things. Mm -hmm. I understand. I let my I let my 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 Bears goggles cloud my judgment in that moment. Sometimes I say things without thinking. But why do you ever wear the Bears goggles? Well, I was born with them on. It doesn't matter. Like, you, yeah, I know. You should know better. But, like, it happens every couple years. You're, you're a downtrodden people. Yeah, but like every you couple know your place. Every couple of years, you just, like, buy in a little bit more. Jafar would call Bears fans street rats. That's probably fair. Is that problematic? Is that xenophobic? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think we'll get canceled for that one. Oh, okay. I wonder how many people have seen that video by now. It was at least 100,000 <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> he is Paul Gallant. I am Joe George. You can find us on Twitter at Joe George Radio. At Gallant says, this weekend from noon to 3 on Saturday, myself, Brian McDonald, Sean Mapes, will be doing a special edition of the bullpen coming to you live from LaBerge Lake Charles. Great spot for you to go gamble, to go bet on games, to enjoy some good food, some good drinks. If you want to go watch your Texas teams, if you just want to go watch March Madness, this weekend there's a full party going on. 
that there'll be wristband access to, be able to watch all the games, full buffet. We're excited to be there this weekend at LaBerge Lake Charles, play some blackjack while I'm down there. They also have great things like a great golf course. And if you're not a member of the Penn Play app, you can download that today. Get access instantly to rewards, to different opportunities while you're there staying at LaBerge. And right now you can win up to $2,000 in pen play cash download the pen play app and when you want to go gamble and leave texas and, and be able to enjoy yourself in lake charles head on over to laberge lake charles You're listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios located at Carbot Brewing Company. Broadcasting live from Carbot, Gallant and George here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Enjoying some nice hot padillo at the moment, my favorite go-to beer, to be honest, no matter where I go. It's always there. If they don't have it, I go Love Street. That's typically my, my play. Um, come out and enjoy some ranch water, some Hoppadilla, some Love Street, whatever your favorite Carbock beer drink is. They've got it for you, of course. Some great food. And watch watch the games. Joel Blank and Brian will be here till 6 o'clock. And March Madness is fully underway, Paul. Huzzah! No big upsets yet, I would say. I mean, Aww. you know, Duquesne over BYU is a, is a good a good win, 11 seed versus 6 seed. I don't think it's a massive 11 upset. 6, though, isn't really an upset. Exactly. Right? Like it's, it doesn't have the, doesn't have the weight. It was Duquesne's first tournament win since 1969. Yeah, and I think nice. what, this kid, this coach was uh, LeBron's high school coach. 
I think it is what it is because LeBron's freaking out that Duquesne won. So I think it's uh, he was LeBron's high school coach at St. Viator. Um, yeah. But so Duquesne gets the win over BYU. Michigan State got a win over Mississippi I'm State. I'm going to try to guess where is Duquesne. Duquesne is in uh, Ohio. I mean, oh, just based off what I said about LeBron, I, I feel like that's a good guess. It's uh, Joel is saying it's on the East Coast. It's on the East Coast. Duquesne College, it's in Pittsburgh. Oh. So, sorry, sorry, Paul, you were factually incorrect. Ohio, Pittsburgh, same thing. Yeah, kind of trash places, you know. They're, I mean, they're close to each other, right? I, I think so. Pittsburgh, West Virginia, Ohio, I think they're all like – I've never, done, Pits- I've never done Pittsburgh before. I've done, Pens- I've done I Philly. I haven't either. I've done Philly. Uh, Wa- uh, Wagner is down by 12 versus North Carolina. They're covering. Who Ar- told you? MyBoogie.ag, promo code bet 975. Arizona's up by – you know, a lot. 17 versus Long Beach State. I didn't oh, math Long Beach State still covering. Moorhead State up early, 19-13. The Moorhead State, uh, would, would that count as one of the phallic teams? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, does Long Beach count? No, Longwood does. Yeah, I think. Going I think, against the Cougs tomorrow. Yeah, Moorhead State definitely counts Moorhead as into that Reddit State. theory um, <laughs> that is out there. All right, it's, uh, it's that time of the show. Sign for garbage time here on Glanton, George on ESPN 975 and 925. We just got an emoji, excuse me, I a know, meme we, sent to us by Dez. We just got threatened. Uh, it's a cat holding a knife for uh, not knowing where Duquesne is. Or, or maybe just the trashing of Pittsburgh in general. Well, I mean, or maybe what, both. what have I said about Pittsburgh that the Patriots haven't already done to that god-awful franchise? Hey, hey Walmart, guys. Hey, Des, I'll buy you a shot tomorrow if you come out to Nick's place. They're going to charge for self-checkout at what? Walmart. Yeah. There, there already is a system at certain Walmarts where you essentially have to be a plus member to use – the self checkout. Okay. Gotta say, this bothers me. Because you know what I like about self checkout? It's one of the greatest cashiers in grocery store history. Mm. You should check my ring time. But also, just polite, amazing customer service along the way. With bagging to boot at the er- very end, I like to do it myself. Okay. That's why I like to do it, because I used to do it. I like to pack my bags the way I like to pack my bags. And that's why I always do self-checkout. The problem is there aren't enough places that you can go where you can actually self-checkout like 25 different items or so. When I was in Seattle, though, that's what I would do. I would just, like, check them out and put them, in my, and put them back in my cart as soon as I uh, was done. I, I hate this. You're going to charge for me to do your job? Yeah, this is tough. This, this is tough. So like we it. have one of those neighborhood Walmarts by our house. Okay. And I always have to use self-checkout even if I have way too much stuff, because there's only ever one person <laughs> Yep. in the actual checkout lines. They always are very enthusiastic about so, getting you through to the end. <coughs> you can't be charging people for self-checkout when there's only one person in the normal checkout lines. There's mm-hmm. got to be a balance here. There's got to be at least a couple lanes open before you start charging me. Right, but it, it sounds like there, there will be multiple self-checkout things that you can use, but you have to have essentially Walmart's plus membership no. to use them. There are certain places where you're only supposed to have a certain amount of items for a self-checkout. Mm-hmm. I would be fine if the people who use, who take too many items through the self-checkout line, you get an extra charge. You get so that, would, that would have resulted with me having to pay extra. I, I understand that, though. Yeah, Seattle, that, that in Seattle, I, I just didn't want anyone to touch my stuff. Yeah, that I understand. Because, but that, I think it was acceptable because of the COVID stuff that was. Going yeah, on. but you never know what kind of diseases you're gonna get in Seattle from people touching your stuff. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. never know. Looney Tune disease. Uh, speaking of Looney Tune parts of the country, a Berkeley professor has told everybody that is looking to date in the Bay Area. This said Jonathan Schuchuk, quote. If you want a girlfriend, get out of the Bay Area. Almost everywhere else on the planet is better for that. I'm not kidding at all. You'll be shocked by the stark differences in behavior of women in places where women are plentiful versus their behavior within artillery distance of San Jose and San Francisco. Okay. This has blown up. I don't entirely disagree. 
but to localize it a little bit, what is the city in Texas, Joe, in your opinion, that you would imagine has the most difficult women to date? I'll go first. Dallas! But yeah. at the same time, Dallas has some talent. I haven't spent a lot of time in Dallas, so that's, that's hard for me to say to confirm that. You have to peacock and make it seem like you're rich to really live that $30,000, maybe now $40,000, thanks, Biden, uh, l- millionaire lifestyle. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to say Austin still. <laughs> you know like, what? I, I love Austin. Austin's a good time. But I, I couldn't imagine back in my single days going to Austin with the intent of trying to date. I think if anyone in Austin found out about the time that I got kicked out of a bar for using the unisex bathroom because it had a urinal in it and I thought it was the men's room and the women's line, which I thought was a women's line, had like six people standing outside of it. I thought like, oh, okay, this is the men's room. Then people followed me out of it and confronted me and yelled at me and shrieked at me, these banshees, and eventually I got kicked out of the bar. And I was like, what is happening right now? If anyone in Austin found out about that, I'd probably be undateable there. Yeah, probably. And now you know the rest of the story. Dan Bilzerian, while we're on dating, you know Dan Bilzerian? I do. Florida Gator legend in that he was at the University of Florida, I believe, the same time as uh, Tim Tebow and Aaron Hernandez. And the Pouncey Twins. Among others. And Percy Harvin. Dan Bilzerian, in the eyes of many, is known as a bit of a meathead who Mm -hmm. likes to have himself a good time. Mm -hmm. And he said that after having sex with thousands of women – it's better to do the monogamy thing. Saying, quote, monogamy is better, as strange as that is. Do you believe Dan Pilzerian's idea that monogamy is better than uh, tomfoolery and uh, playing the field? Do you believe him? Joe is, what are you doing? I don't know. He's not answering this question. I can't believe you're making me answer this question. Well, well I'm, just, I'm just asking. You're a married man. I am. Is it better? Uh, no. It's not. Um, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> no, am I monogamous? Yes, but a- is it better? Uh, at times, I would assume it would be better. It depends on it depends on the time. Joe, I'm depressed every day. All I have is my cat. I go yeah. home to my cat, and I'm running out of options for my mother. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, I'm the only I'm the only non monogamous person. Like, you know what? Other at, at ESPN 97. I think it's like I think it's like fifty fifty. And there are times when it's better, and there's times where it's not. No, I'm not. I'm not saying trying to act like I live this guy's lifestyle. No. He also probably said this because his girlfriend or fiance or wife was in the same room with him. Uh, maybe. Because I don't believe him at all. Uh, yeah, I, I. Like based on his track record and what he claims to have accomplished, I don't believe that he has all of a sudden changed his mind this much. If, if Dan Bilzerian can change, then I can change. Yeah, you can change, Paul. I believe in you. <laughs> I believe in you. Let's get all right, ladies. Let's get some divorces going. So Paul can get, <laughs> so Paul can get the back. Second in the round, game. baby. So Paul can get back in the game. Second round of the of the uh, uh, monogamy tournament. All right, That's we're gonna get we're, out, we're gonna get out of here so we can get Jeremy Brandon connected because he's got Coogs game, so he's on the road. We are live here at Carbach. Uh, we'll be live here until six o'clock with Joel Blank and Brian, and we'll all be at Nick's place tomorrow starting at seven a.m. Goodbye. Peace.
I got nothing. In my ears. Can you hear me? You're on. Ooh, what up, H Town? Hey, how we doing? He's Blank. I'm Branham. We got Brian McDonald, our on site engineer, Abigail, behind the glass. It is a uh, full house uh, with the Killer Beast on this Thursday afternoon. Killer Beast broadcasting live from Carback Brewing. What happened there, Blankers? A little bit of a, a false start. Yeah, it's more Jeremy, of a delay if you of game. Blame actually. me, you can. Your good friend who loves to sab sabotage us now that he's not one of us decided that it would be a good idea to do his best imitation of his favorite place kicker, and nice. Kevin Butler, the plug, kicked us off the air. It was really well done uh, by Joe George. Oh, you're talking about Joe? Yeah. He kicked Joe's us off the air, so then it was a today. mass panic. No, He's behind good. me laughing right now. Mass panics are not good. I think he did it intentionally. I think, I think one half of the Killer G's did it intentionally to troll one half of the Killer Bees. That's what I think. I don't. I, I mean, I don't think you're wrong, but I don't think it's just one half. Well, I think he has absolutely no loyalty or love for the show at all since he left. Yeah, I believe so that he, to be true. Yeah. But I think it yeah, bothers one half wants. of us. <laughs> yeah. You can come visit us at Carbock Brewing. The boys are out there. It's located at the 610-290 Interchange, Spring Branch area. How's the weather out there? Pretty good? Uh, no. <laughs> it's been atrocious. And the combo platter of awful, awful weather with just massive amounts of rain. And the president in town made 610 just an absolute amusement park ride because one side, thankfully not the side I was trying to get to Carbuck on, was completely blocked off. Uh, and they were just two bike cops were holding a mile, two miles of traffic just in a standstill. And then on the other side, everybody was rubbernecking to see that there was no traffic and what was going on. And then on top of that, with the rain, it made for an interesting commute. Well, it's a good place to uh, to get out of the rain. Go hang out. Carbog Brewing. Carbogbrewing.com. Uh, they have a beautiful beer garden, outdoor space whenever yeah, the weather is good, but a good indoor space, too, when it's not. Uh, join us in the pub daily for lunch, dinner, brunch on Sunday. Great food to go along with their great beers. It pairs all very, very good. Uh, enjoy a burger and a Bach free glass for just $20 from March 20th through April 10th. Uh, fantastic place to hang out, fantastic place to, to, to duck work a little bit early or avoid traffic on a Thursday. Come hang out at Carbox, your perfect place to grab a bite, perfect place to, of course, grab uh, their outstanding beer. Uh, lots to get to today. It is a uh, it is a bad take boulevard uh, Thursday, which uh, Joe George is going to make an appearance. They have multiple options. I think it was going to limit him to just one today, though. Don't want to give him too much of the killer bee rub. Also, we're going to be starting today our first annual – a killer bee fight club bracket and we got some interesting matchups can't wait to do that a little bit later on in the show but first and foremost how about shohei otani what is going on is he a better is he a victim what do you think blankers uh, you know what i think there's too much to still decipher in this the more i read the more i listen the more i'm looking to see about this situation you end up with more questions than answers and and it is going to get spicy i just feel like this is far from over. The FBI is involved now, so you know that there's no turning back. I think baseball probably feels like they'd like to get this taken care of and swept away as quickly as possible, and yet now I don't think there's any turning back from this. And the fact that the the interpreter had one story when everything started to unravel and then changed the story after that, and you know now then Otani's people were trying to get involved and and stop the interviews or try to change the narrative. And and it, it just – the fact that Otani's name directly is on the two wire transfers, too, it's like it's a bad look for a guy that is the highest-paid player in baseball that is the, the face of the game right now, and it's going to be real interesting how it plays out. So is he the better or a victim? I You know what? Obviously, Astros fans want to believe he he's, he's a better. Uh, I believe that – I believe that he is bailing out his trainer. But it's sure – if you believe the other side, I totally understand it based on what we don't know. It's uh, it's fascinating. You had E.P. Muzahara in the uh, in the dugout like the day yeah. before the news broke, and they, they were laughing. You, you telling me that, you know, Shohei didn't know that? Like he didn't know that he had $4.5 million um, transferred out of his bank account to pay off a gambling debt? That seems fishy to me. That doesn't pass the smell test. One of the other things, too, like how many people know your wire transfer information? Right. Like my, my wife my, my doesn't wife know our wire transfer it. information. 
if there's one person for just common folk like us, it would be my your, your significant other, my wife. If you're a big-time athlete or star, there's probably still only one or two people. A lot of guys have a business manager or someone directly uh, in charge of all their financial transactions that keeps track of this stuff. But other than that, not even the people that work for you that are your personal assistants, that are people like – those people don't have – and for good reason, they don't have any access to stuff like that. I I just don't – Go ahead, the interp- you know, you got the you have the interpreter. Like maybe maybe the guy likes betting. A lot of people like betting. How is that guy racking up a four and a half million dollar gambling debt? Like I can understand getting in too heavy. Like I, I can understand of uh, somebody who's who has a gambling addiction uh, doing that. But how are you racking up four and a half million dollars? And who is giving you a credit of four and a half million dollars? That's what if you're I want to The know. interpreter. So there's a lot of things here that just don't pass the smell test to me. Um, um, and then you also had, like, the L.A. Times report where they kind of changed their story over the hour. The interpreter was never mentioned until they changed their story, at, the, their story after the fact. Yeah, so it was just that they were trying to say the Dodgers fired Otani's interpreter. Then all of a sudden, all this other stuff starts coming out. Now, Passan and ESPN is saying that the, the woman that has been covering the story for ESPN, they, she has as, as much of the details as anybody right now, but even then – Otani's people were trying to get with her because they gave they gave her a, an interview with the interpreter only to come back, you know, a short time later and say, whoa, 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 whoa. we're going to change our story and we need to kind of we kind of got to make some things get corrected. And of course, ESPN's doing good journalism, but there's still so much that's kind of hanging in the balance. I, I just don't buy the story that it was theft for some of the reasons I you guys that. have have mentioned one why would an interpreter have his financial (laughs) information he's not an investor he's not a stockbroker he's not someone that would be making large financial tractions for Shohei Otani and two I I just I I think the original story that came out that Otani was probably the good guy in covering his buddy's bets is probably the truth but once he put out that story the lawyers got to him like hey hey look look here if we go with this story that there's a reasonable leap people could make that maybe Otani was using this interpreter as a proxy to make his bets for him. So we need to change the story to make sure Otani's uh, culpability gets removed from the situation, and they're now going forth with this theft scenario. But uh, the the idea that Otani had 4.5 million stolen from an interpreter that somehow had the ability to wire money for him in that amount, I just don't buy it all. It's completely implausible. I think that Shohei was betting. Like, uh, it I could don't want to be, be sued. I, I, I'm just saying best case scenario, he covered yeah, his buddy's bets. Right. And, like, the other part of it, if they're going to throw him under the bus, like, he's going to have to face some sort of, like, criminal investigation, right? Like, $4.5 million no. theft is something that you should it be looking at. Like, that's I, too. I, we were talking about this before <laughs> yeah, the show. Once the FBI gets involved, there's no, hey, Ned nod, head nod, bro hug, we're cool, we're good, don't worry about this one. Once they're in – they're in, and that four and a half means a lot more, and is a much bigger crime than you know guys just going, "Oh, we got this. Don't worry about it. Turn the other cheek. We'll handle it internally, and MLB will get involved." Nope, not once the FBI gets involved. Now you're talking about a real deal. The the fascinating part of it to me too is like I don't think this is going to go away. Like a, a lot of the things don't add up. Uh, I'm sure Shohei was tipped off that this was coming. Like. Shohei knew that something was happening. Like, either he paid the guy $4.5 million to cover up his interpreter's bets, uh, he was gambling, and they used the interpreter to kind of be the face of the whole thing. This is something that was happening before the, the Major League Baseball opening series in Korea. Like, so you had the guy in the dugout. Like, that, that, that the dugout had the, uh, the game one of the regular season. That had to have been after Shohei Otani knew this stuff was going on, right? Like, well, he, was he told after the game that, like, let's let's give Shohei the benefit of the doubt for a second. Let's say what the Shohei Ota- the Shohei Otani side of the story, which was changed by the way, uh, an hour after the initial, you know, kind of what they were going to say, and then they had to, you know, change their story to get Shohei out of any sort of legal concerns or any sort of concerns that could hurt him in terms of Major League Baseball. If if sh- 
they they knew that, right? So Shohei knew that he covered up the guy's expenses of four and a half million dollars, right? That didn't happen yesterday. They didn't happen after game one of the season. That would have happened several weeks, months, a year ago. Who knows the exact timeline? Like I'm fascinated by the timeline. So you're gonna tell me that Shohei, who's cracking jokes to the interpreter in the dugout in game one between the Dodgers and the Padres, knows that he had four and a half million dollars stolen from stolen from him and he's got giggling with him in the dugout? Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm not buying that. No chance am I buying that. Well, and then they said that somehow or another in the articles I was reading that this wasn't even going to be a deal, a big deal. But then they were looking at just like transfers and, and exchanges of money and, 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 thing, and purchases or whatever somehow with Otani's accounts from months ago. And suddenly it popped up or that they found out that two of these Otani payments were literally – for, for to cover gambling bets, and they were like, wait a minute, what's some this? The, some of the transfers literally had his name on it. Yes, they, at least man. two of them literally had his name on it. That was the, that it, was the it, first thing. Like, the, the first thing, whenever the, the this story, it said Representative Dodgers superstar Shohei Otani on Wednesday accused his interpreter of in, engaging in a massive theft of the player's funds, blah, 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 blah. Uh, lawyers for Otani made the claim after the Times learned that Otani's name had surfaced in the investigation of Matthew Boyer in Orange County residence. This was Otani's name on it before the interpreter was ever mentioned. The interpreter wasn't even mentioned until they changed their story. So, like, what is the timeline here? Because if he thinks that, you know, they're alleging the interpreter to steal $4.5 million and the interpreter, like, kind of gave the public meeting in the dugout saying, hey, I'm addicted to gambling. Hey, it was me, not this guy over here. Look over here. Look at me. Don't look at Shohei Otani. He's not going to be giggling with him in the dugout. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Look, if there's there would be so much bad blood no matter how much money you make if you find out that somebody has has been, you know, taking money from you and it, it's in the it's in the ballpark of four and a half million dollars. There's just no way no matter how much money you make that anybody's going to be OK with that. And you're not going to be chummy with them, especially when there's cameras all over the place in the middle of a major league baseball game. Yeah, so yeah the, time, the timeline just doesn't make sense. And, and let's also remember that because this has come out from the Dodgers camp. This has come out from the interpreter. They keep trying to put out that, oh, well, he wasn't betting on baseball, which by MLB rules, you can't bet on quote-unquote diamond sports. But if you're placing bets with a legal bookie like this interpreter was alleged to do, then it doesn't matter that you're placing bets on the NFL and not uh, Major League Baseball. It all becomes then illegal. And we just know about the $4.5 million in losses. That doesn't say what his total bets were over the years. That's just what he lost that Otani allegedly covered up. The money that was actually bet by the interpreter could be a lot larger. Well, and the other thing too, Jeremy. I want to see so much of this. Go ahead, Blakers. Me too. The one thing that that when I was reading some of this, that when the feds were involved, it wasn't about Otani. They were involved in trying to get to the bottom of this illegal bookie. Mm -hmm. And in in the process in January of – Uncovering the books of the illegal bookmaker, they find the name Shohei Otani on two different transfers of five hundred grand, and that's when they were made aware and going, hmm, that's a, that's more than just scratch your temple. That's big time if you got a guy of that magnitude involved in the middle of this guy doing what he's been doing. And that's the first, like that's the first thing of a timeline, right? Like, okay, he paid five hundred thousand dollars in January, so this was happening pre-January. He paid five hundred thousand dollars, you know, twice in January. It's March twenty-first now, so like Shohei and Shohei's camp knew that this was going on by January. By January, yet that guy was still employed by the Dodgers. Shohei Otani kept that guy around. Shohei Otani took the guy to Korea for the opening series of Major League Baseball, and Shohei Otani was joking around with him in the dugout of Game One two months after he paid five hundred thousand dollars. Like, what is that? What are, what are we yeah. talking about here? Like, that is fishy. Like, if you're and, and look, if you're going to believe Shohei's side of the story, well, then that guy stole the $500,000 twice, so that's $1 million there. We know the grand total is $4.5 million, right? So if he did that in January, why is Shohei still buddies with him? It it, it does not make a lot of sense at all. Uh, There's so much that we have to get answers to, and you're right. Like, there's no way anybody on the planet, no matter how much you're worth and how long you've been friends, is going to be okay and, and, and yucking it up with a guy that if he's embezzling money from you. And, and even if you're trying to cover him, like my joke yesterday, I was just joking, saying, well, you know that, you know, that was one of the guys that the Dodgers were able to fire 
even though Otani had said you, he wanted him hired and they've been friends, if Otani hires him to be his director of marketing for his foundation or for something off the field, then you know that there's a lot more to that relationship than just interpreter and player and he's covering for him or, you know, he's going to make sure he's okay. But the dude had the fluffiest gig on the planet. Just hang with your boy, interpret his, his thoughts, and, and makes, you know, three hundred to 500000 a year, and instead there's a $4.5 million gambling debt we're talking about? Yeah, this is uh, this is nuts. What do you think's going on with Shohei? Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN HRMP listener line. We're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ESPN ninety seven five. We're live on YouTube. Just search ESPN Houston on YouTube and get over here to Carbock. Hang out with the boys coming this spring to the Carbock campus. Pizza and pints, a new slice of heaven opening this spring at the brewery. Our new pizza. Our new pizzeria offers ice-cold beer, deliciously crafted pizza made with love. Follow us on social at Carbac Carbac Pizza uh, to get the latest news and information on our grand opening. Uh, College basketball happening now. We're going to give you updates throughout the uh, the entire day. North Carolina leads Wagner by 16 with 11.5 to go in the second half. Illinois-Moorhead State, tight game, first half, 245 to play. Illinois leads by one. Oregon-South Carolina just tipped off. Uh, they're tied at 5, 15 and a half to go in the first. So we'll keep you up to date what's going on with that, around the NCAA tournament throughout the day. Uh, first round of the Fight Club in the Palillo bracket. We got a bad take boulevard, lots, lots more. But what are your conspiracy theories, or what do you believe to be true in the Shohei Otani case? And how much are you, are you wrapping in the Astros and what happened to them in the sign-stealing scandal into this? 713-780-3776, HRMP listener line. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbot Brewing Company. Here's the Killer Bees, Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank, I'm Branham. The boys at Carbot Brewing on these on this Thursday afternoon. Join us in the pub daily for lunch, dinner, and brunch on Sunday. Current pub specials, how about a burger and a bock? Plus a free glass for just twenty dollars. That's March twentieth through April tenth. So it started yesterday in celebration of Bach Day. We'll also be running four dollar box all month long. How, how do you not like that? Get to six ten two ninety interchange Spring Break, Spring Branch area and get to Carbach. Brewing today at carbachbrewing.com for the upcoming event. 713 780 ESPN 4965. Josh from Seabrook. Dodger fans like to complain about the Astros cheating seven years after the fact. Will this scandal involving Otani's interpreter finally shut them up, Blankers? I, I think let's just wait to see all the facts and, and see how it plays out. Look, I, I think it could shut a lot of things up and shut a lot of things down if this is big because. We were talking about it before the show with, with Joe and I was talking with Joe, Pauly, and BMAC. And, 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 you know, best case scenario for baseball for the Dodgers for Otani is that he was stealing money from Otani and that Otani had nothing to do with it. And then everybody can wash their hands and walk away. Worst case scenario is you're talking about a Pete Rose type deal that's even bigger with more magnitude. And I understand that Pete Rose, you know, is supposed to be in the Hall of Fame and he's the hit king. But there's no bigger superstar for the game going forward for the next probably 10 years than Otani and the contract that went with it. And suddenly you're looking at your cover guy. You're the face of your league possibly facing just unbelievable amounts of of sanctions and and punishment and, and just a horrible look for the sport. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the Astros. Like bringing up the Astros in this, uh, I think they're very different. Uh, you can make the case that hey, you know, the Astros weren't protected from Robert Manfred. It looks like Shohei Otani can be potentially protected here, but we know Manfred plays his favorites. Like this isn't new. Like he did it with the Yankees, and he did it with the Yankees' letter. Like the Yankees' letter says that the Yankees cheated using illegal measures and using tech, you know, technology measures to steal signs. But he did it in a way that softened the blow whenever it came out. You know, he covered it up forever. You know, he didn't let that out there whenever he allowed the Astros to burn, and then he linked it to that Martin. Tino fella in the in New York or whatever the Times or the Post, I have no idea. But remember how he's like, oh, there's nothing to see here. All they were doing was using Apple Watches. Well, what are you talking about? That's illegal. You can't yeah. be doing that. But, so, like, there, there's no secret that Manfred has played favorites in the past, and there's evidence of Robert Manfred playing evidence in the past. But I, I'm to the point where I've I've gotten, like, I'm past that. Like, I, I don't care about the sign-stealing stuff. Uh, I can, you know, I know the history of it, and I can talk to you about it for days and argue about it for days and then point out the Manfred stuff with the Yankees, and then you throw the Red Sox into there, and you throw all the players who have spoken out about it as well, some of the players that have spoken out about it as well. But I've moved beyond that. Like, I'm ready to look at this scandal in a vacuum. I'm ready to look at this scandal in isolation with, you know, nothing involved in the past. Like, I'm over all the Astro stuff. Here's the thing, too, Jeremy. The, the difference between the two where there's bigger – there's more ramifications and it's a bigger bigger deal is when you get the feds involved when the authorities are involved the astros didn't have the authorities involved and and their their you know judge and jury was major league baseball and rob manfred it wasn't the fbi it wasn't the government getting involved it wasn't authorities doing the investigation and decide getting to decide what the ramifications are going to be and the punishments you know are are going to be laid down baseball is not going to be able to strong arm the authorities and say we'll take it from here no 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 no. we got this if the authorities are involved they're not going to just step out of this and go yeah you guys handle it it's your business this is big business and if they're involved i think that's the biggest deal about what's what makes this so juicy and also possibly being such a big story with a lot of of big ramifications down the line Corey Manfraud will do everything to cover it up if need be. I agree. Like, I agree. Like, this is your biggest star since when? Like, it's but that's probably why I don't the think biggest the FBI star you've let ever it. had. It, it depends on how much their involvement is. But I could see Manfraud trying to, like, you know, use his henchmen to try to cover it up as much as they can. Like, you have fixers. You like, We watch TV. Like, people have fixers that can kind of cover up stuff, make up, you know, make stories, sure. blah, 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 paint a narrative, blah, 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 blah. Good attorneys can get you out of stuff that you might have committed. Um, so, like, it happens. It's it, it's happened. But, yeah, if the FBI outplays them, then the FBI outplays them. Like, I, I'm fascinated by this entire story, and we'll probably never know the entire truth. We're going to be given the truth that they want 
to give you, not the truth that we know. But it is fascinating, and I, I hope the this FBI This is bigger wins. than the Donahue thing, too, because of the fact that you're talking about an official, and, yeah, there was something to that. Mm. But, obviously, no one really knew the name Tim Donahue until sure. I don't this, think it's the scandal bigger, came up. I, I, I guess I it depends it on how you view it. Like, Otani's, uh, Otani's a bigger name, obviously. Like, he's a global superstar, and Tim Donahue's just, like, you know, a jabroni referee. But, I mean, he was fixing games. And, look, you can't believe what one side is telling you, but the interpreter was saying that they never bet on Major League Baseball. Like, like they bet on basketball well, we, games. They bet on football games. Like, they weren't fixing games. I don't think it's as impactful. Certainly a bigger name. Still, Certainly a bigger story. But in terms of impacting the game, I, I don't think that's the case. I think that's what we're hearing now. It, we'll just have to wait. Sure. Like I said, that's why we have to wait and see and hear all the facts because I think that's what everybody wants you to believe right now and what baseball wants you to believe right now. But why it's bigger right now is because it's a bigger name, because it's a bigger deal, and because just like when the basketball story started to come out, you were waiting for more details, wanted to see how many officials were involved, what games, et cetera. But from this, it, it's just from the, from the get-go now, because it's Otani and the Dodgers – this is going to be a massive storyline until yeah. it's all put to bed. And who knows when it's going to be put to bed? Yeah. I mean, didn't watch Otani close enough. Like, I didn't watch every single Angels game to know if there was anything, like, shady like that. But he was good. Right. Like, he was a good player. Um, and it's not to say that good players can't, you know, impact the outcome of the game in a positive or negative way. Uh, I, I, I tend, like, you know, we don't know what's true. Uh, but I tend to believe that they didn't bet on baseball. It's just kind of, you know, my, my read on the situation. But I could be wrong. We don't know the whole story. Uh, 1509, I'll bet my house and my five-year-old Toyota. Do we want that? That if Shohei Otani was in any other market than the L.A. Dodgers or Yankees, he would have more heat on him for Major League Baseball and Manfred, no doubt. Yeah, probably. There's probably some truth to that. He's also the biggest superstar in baseball history. Like, I think he is the mm -hmm. biggest international superstar in baseball history. I don't think there's been a bigger star in the history of baseball internationally. I really don't. No, he's he is the, you know, the Yao story was cut yep. short, but the Yao trajectory that he was on when he first came to the league was the massive international story that everybody was keeping an eye on. And, and like I said, he just – he didn't – Injury-wise, he just wasn't able to finish his career. This is one where since Otani got to the big leagues, people, one, were keeping an eye on him. Then when he just skyrocketed in terms of his abilities, people were like, oh, my God, he's the, he, you know, he's the new face of baseball. Then when the contract came out, people were like, yep, he's going he's gonna to be you know, the front man for a long time. And now to have this, this is why everybody around the world is keeping an eye on this because it's a massive story. 713-780-ESP and 9198. If I'm a degenerate and I have the ability to remove $4.5 million from his account, I'm not paying my debt. I'm placing more bets. I don't know. I think I would steal $4.5 million and go to a private island and hopefully no one would ever catch me. Uh, that's what but I would do. But you also got to believe that at a certain point the guys taking the bets are saying, hey, we're cutting you off till you start paying some of this because you can't just keep bringing – I can't believe he got the credit that he did to keep betting. I mean, unless unless the guy he knows that he has Otani's backing and then he knows that his hooks are into a fish that has the, the, the income to keep that money train well, rolling. Well, he probably does. He saw the transactions coming it's, from Otani. Right, Otani's. which uh, with Otani's name on it, I, I think you could let him keep rolling on credit because you know that Otani's name has financial backing. It would be someone motivated to keep this private and right, keep paying. Right, right. But he, Shohei knows this, and he's joking around with this guy in the dugout. Yeah, the, it just, it, like you, <laughs> like we've all said, it just does not uh, pass the smell test. You can't tell me that someone stole four and a half million dollars from you, uh, used how much more money we don't even know because that those are only the losses that we know, and you know this at least two months in advance, and you're still buddy buddy. It, it doesn't make sense, and I mean, there's no way, obviously, at least from what we know right now, to to prove that he was betting on baseball. But, one, it doesn't matter because it's still illegal under MLB rules. If You, 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 can't, you are allowed yep. to bet on, quote, non-diamond sports, but if you're betting through illegal bookmakers, then it doesn't matter if you weren't betting on baseball. It's still legal through MLB's eyes. And, two, not only is Shohei arguably the biggest star in baseball since Babe Ruth, but what other player could impact a game as far as you know betting lines more than someone who's starting the game as a pitcher and he's leading off as a hitter? There's no one in baseball who could affect, affect an outcome of a game more than Shohei Otani. But do you, do, how did he spec it in a negative way? You know what I mean? Like, 
He was good. He was really good. I know. I know. I, yeah, right. Exactly. I'm just saying if, if there was someone who could move, no one could move a game potentially if he wanted to. True. We don't know yet that he's doing it, but no one could move a game more than someone who's leading it off as a home he run hitter and a starter, yeah. any starting pitcher. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm willing – I'm willing to make the leap of him. It like, was Shohei betting on sports. I'm not ready to make the leap that he was game fixing. Like I just, I don't think we've seen any evidence of him because fi- he was good. Like he's good now. Yeah. You can make the case well he's striking out in a bases loaded situation with one out in the ninth. But the guy was really really good. You know, like so. Yeah. That's why and, I hesitate. I there. But maybe that- maybe I'm being naive, Blankers. Maybe I, I I could be being naive here. Sure. No, I don't think so, Jeremy. But I, I'm kind of with you because as bad as the Angels were, and I'm thinking about some of the games with the Astros, still late and, and whenever he was up, I mean, he he. I hope he was betting on himself then because he was putting up numbers. He was hitting big bombs. He was hitting big hits. He was doing things that showed that you know there was no quitting him. He was he you know he was the best player on the field for the Angels all season long. And I got a I got a hard time believing a guy that's that good. Like you said, that's that was putting up numbers and, and making a name for himself with his free agent year coming up was going to just suddenly find a way to kind of fade a game. Yeah, one, two, six, four. Uh, you have to have a fall guy in the crew. That's true, especially if you're making that much money, even if it's deferred. One, nine, seven, zero. How does Otani still talk to his interpreter? I don't talk to my coworker who stole my energy drink from the break room. That's the thing. <laughs> that's a good point. That's four and a half I mean, that's making sense. You're like making jokes with him. It's yeah, that's one of the biggest questions because you're right. Look at how many times that, you know, you've seen an athlete when they both were in a car and maybe the athlete was driving, but suddenly, whether they got caught or not, they flip seats or they say, hey, you take this one for the team. I got you. Don't worry about it. It, it's hap- <laughs> it happens all the time when, when, you know, on minor things and other things because uh, – the, whoever said the caller or the text the texture that said that they're absolutely spot on like that's what happens a lot of times where they keep, the athlete keeps his name out of the press one of his boys takes the fall he takes care of one of his boys we're all good yeah but think about think about this even obviously we don't buy the idea that it was stolen from because otani wouldn't act that way with his interpreter if that was the case i don't even know if that sort of uh chumminess that we saw in the dugout would be happening if it was a case where Otani just paid a gambling debt for a friend. Like, if, if you had to pay, and obviously Otani has, you know, more money than God, but if you had to pay $4.5 million for your buddy, uh, uh, bet, I mean, may, maybe you still may, re- maintain the relationship, but you, are you that chummy? I, I mean, you're probably at least a little mad at him that he put you in a situation yeah. where you're having to basically pay him money. You're kind of being extorted. Because but it also to- shows you that th- you, th- today and yesterday wasn't the first time they heard about this. Since January, they they had to know that uh, this was all going down, or at least people were, were catching on to what was going down. Yeah. Uh, Mega Blast, Shohei Otani is bad word guilty, and Major League Baseball is covering up for their golden goose. He's going to get away with it. Uh, Junior Broncos on Twitch. Transfers of that large amount of money require more uh, than knowing a password. 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. Is today the best day on the calendar year to quit your job? What are the other contenders? 713-780-3776. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. You got 32 college basketball games today. What a great day. It's not a day that you want to be outside mowing your grass. Well, how about some sin lawn in your life? You're wasting your valuable time, like you could be spending it today watching some college basketball or hanging out with your family, things like that. Uh, You don't want to be dealing with your yard when you want to be having some fun. There's weeds. You got dead spots all around your yard. All of those things. Things that you don't want to put up with. Well, stop doing that and get some Sin Lawn. Sin Lawn is here so you can get those weekends back, so you can get your college basketball viewing back, so you can hang out with your family more. Sin Lawn is the evolution story of the old Astro Turf inside of the dome. And now Sin Lawn, S Y N Lawn, they want to help you, they want to improve your lifestyle. Stop mowing. Stop pulling the weed. Stop throwing money into an ugly yard that you're embarrassed of people seeing. You don't even have people come over because you're scared that they're going to make judgment on your lawn. Well, Sin Lawn Artificial Grass is the best on the market, and it always looks great. Why are they the best? Well, Sin Lawn offers a lifetime warranty with products that are made right here in the USA. The quality is top shelf. The people are elite as well. It's fully insured, fully bonded. They'll have their own in-house crews. They don't contract anything out. Sin Lawn's number one priority is to make you 
happy. Sinlon is perfect for your yard, whether it's for your patio, kids' playground, or your pets so they don't track mud inside anymore. Or how about that putting green you've always wanted to help out that short game? Head to 975sinlon.com right now to learn more. That's 975synlon.com to learn more and to get started on that yard of your dreams with Sinlon. Sinlon, control the process from yarn to yard. You're back with the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Visit the boys at Carbach. I- I'm sad that I'm on remote today. I love the fact that, of course, we're getting started for the NCAA tournament, but I love Carbach. One of my favorite places in town. Come visit us. Carbach Brewing, located 610 290 Interchange, Spring Branch area. Weather might not be great today, but get out of the weather. They, they-, they have some indoor they sit indoor areas where you can grab some good, fi- good bite, good drink. Uh, perfect time to enjoy the beer garden, though, this spring. Outdoor space. Check carbachbrewing.com for upcoming events. Uh, head there now. 713-780-ESPN. A couple of games going on in the NCAA tournament. Wagner is starting to pull away from Wagner. Just three minutes to go. They're up 82-58. Halftime, three-seed Illinois, 14-seed Moorhead State. Illinois hold, 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 leads hold by on, just Jeremy. one, 39-38. Right, Jeremy. Jeremy, 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 hold, hold on. on. You said Wagner was pulling away from Wagner. Yeah. Oh, North Carolina pulling away from Wagner. That's my bad. Uh, number three, <laughs> Illinois leading Moorhead State at the half by one, 39 to 38. In Oregon, the 11 seed, actually favorites in that game. Uh, they lead number six, South Carolina, 21 20, with seven minutes left to go in the first. I, I love this time of year. I think that both of you like this time of year as well. Is there, I saw this from PFT Commenter, uh, so it's not an original Branham joint. Um, is there a better day to quit your job than today? Because you get today to watch 32 games. You get tomorrow, or 16 games. You get tomorrow to watch 16 more games. Then you have the weekend right after that. I can't think of a better day to quit your job than today, this very moment. No, you're, I, think, I think there's two that might rival it, but it is interesting and it is close. I think that – because of the fact that you're talking about the, the entire weekend, too, as you lead into it, it's different Thursday and Friday and all that. But I think the day after the Super Bowl, the Monday after the Super Bowl, everybody wants that to be a national holiday. If there's a way that you can somehow, without going into work, can get fired after the Super Bowl, I think that would be a big one because everybody needs that rest and relaxation day after how hard they go after it watching the game and 
in, in indulging in all that stuff. I, I think that one to me comes to mind as first and foremost that it might be in the running. But the only problem with uh, the day after the Super Bowl is, you're okay, you're off, but then what? Like, there's nothing really on to watch. Like, you do it now, and, you know, you got yeah. four straight days of just yeah. massive nonstop basketball. I mean, that's why, and I'm sure I'm not alone with this. I don't know if Jeremy and Joel, you did this as well. But when I was a kid and March Madness would come around, and I think my parents knew but still let me get away with it, I would fake an illness usually to stay home and watch <laughs> college basketball. And when I eventually get, you know, the uh, the procedure to make sure I have no kids anymore, it'll be during, right before March Madness, so I have an excuse yeah. to stay home, prop my feet up, and just watch nothing but basketball. I mean, I know work, me. like yeah. working in an NBA office, you could hear the ohs and yeah. the screams. Everybody and you never that know had who, a TV yeah. in and one of the offices. you never know who it is because yeah. there's so many games going at once. No matter whether it could I, be for anything. It was big. Yeah, I don't think anything rivals it. 713-780-3776. Is there a better day on the calendar year well, uh, to quit your job? I don't think anything Jeremy, rivals it. you and I, not all people that are sports fans, but you and I would at least entertain, I would think, the conversation. Maybe it's not as big. But the week of the Masters. No, I'm not quitting my Thursday. job on a Thursday. Because, like, the, the, the coolest days of the Masters are Saturday and Sunday. Like, obviously, it's cool well, to watch I Thursday, to Friday of the Masters. Like, that's neat, but Masters coverage also doesn't start until 3 o'clock. Like, they're the lowest major with television time because they have the old traditions and they have right. all that. And, like, yeah, I like watching the Masters Thursday, Friday. I'm not – and I know when we have these conversations, when you like one thing better than the other, you kind of tend to insult and put down the other thing. I love the Masters. I love the Masters Thursday, Friday. I like watching the, the build up. who takes the early lead, you know, who's going to struggle to make the cut. Like, yeah, it's great theater. But it's not the most important days of the tournament or of the uh, the Masters, and you could say the same thing about the NCAA tournament. But it, they are the days with the most volume because you get 16 on Thursday, you get 16 on uh, on Friday as well. I think the first weekend's the best weekend of the NCAA tournament. What other days rival uh, the the NCAA tournament? as the best day to just quit your job or, or get a vasectomy, 713-780-ESPN, <laughs> HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. The Masters weekend's another good weekend to quit, but most people work Monday through Friday. So you're getting what about out opening, you know, What Thursday. about opening day of Major League Baseball, at least the, the domestic opening, because eh. we're not going to count the Korea series. Eh. Right. I mean, there's 161 Maybe, more. It, it, I think, yeah, but there is usually multiple d games during the day. Then you'll have a doubleheader at night. You could sit down and watch like four four games. If I could play Jeremy yeah, here, for I just a don't moment, care about the other teams bit. really. I, I think the bigger thing on that is is that there is no like big stakes ramifications. Either. Yeah, it's like you're just no, starting like, the season. I like the NCAA so, like, tournament more. I'm just there's a volume to play, of yeah. games to yeah, watch yeah, all day and all night, but there's not the same kind of intensity and ramifications if for you sure. lose opening day. That that that's one one nine seven zero. A nine seven eight eight. They're uh, I think they love soccer matters because if I could be employed for the World Cup, I would be happy for that month. World Cup group stage. That's another good one because like they're on during the day. It's during the middle of the day. Now you have to be a soccer fan. I, I love the World Cup. I I love soccer. It's just been hard for me to find a club to to root for, you know, in the Premier League things like that. But it World Cup. I am I'm all in. I love the World Cup. So that's a pretty good call. I like that call. Not as good yeah, as March Madness. But pretty fan. good call. I'm not, soccer, I'm not a big soccer fan. Sure. I understand. Glenn always be, browbeats me with that, and I've known him for like 10, 15, 20 years. But at the same time, it's not going to change my opinion, and he knows this. I pay attention. There are, there are matches that I watch, but it, it, soccer doesn't have the same appeal and impact to me as like even to me the Masters and or especially like tournament time. Uh, you know, The other one that you're not going to take off of work for unless you work on weekends, but like that wild card weekend of the NFL now where you sure. get – where you get Saturday, Sunday, Monday football, that's a that, yeah, that's a but you're great not really, you, yeah. stretch. Eh, I don't like that one because you're not. I mean, most people we're talking about the average person that works Monday through Friday, you know, eight right. nine to five. Like you don't need to take off work for that. Like you're not quitting your job so you can watch football on the weekend or watch football in a prime time slot. Uh, six nine four one day Major League Baseball playoff start. That's a pretty good one. Since Astros yeah, week, they have usually a day, day game of three. Yeah. yeah, that's a good call. That, that there is true. There's good. multiple I, I games like the, during the day. The idea yeah. That. yeah, yeah. 6043 says you'd like the Champions League if you like soccer. I've tried to watch the Champions League, but that goes back to not having the vested interest in club. Like, it's hard to watch it if you don't have the vested interest. Like, you can certainly like the quality and stuff like that, but, like, obviously you have a, a vested interest in the World Cup. Like, oh, you go USA whenever they make it. 
or you like go Mexico. I know they're bitter rivals. Uh, 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 0170. There's like two weeks of practice and qualifying before the Indy 500. Sorry, man. I'm not taking off work for the Indy <laughs> no. 500. No. Yeah, miss me on I'm that not one. not taking off work for the Indy 500. So a bunch of people can make left turns. Shout out, Jim Rome. Uh, 713-780-ESP at HRMP listener line. The Astros bullpen, we all say that the Astros bullpen is improved, right? Because the addition of Josh Hader. But is it actually improved? 713-780-3776. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. I have a way for you to improve your day. It's a drink that I like to call Gentle Ben. I like a good one at the end of the night. Vodka, gin, bourbon, all in that rotation for me. And Gentle Ben Spirits does it better than anyone else. How? With a revolutionary Perseido technology that eliminates impurities for the cleanest, smoothest spirits you'll ever taste. Purification of Gentle Ben is unrivaled. You'll love what's not in it, including undesirable acids. These these acids take the enjoyment out of your drinks. Well, Gentle Ben gets rid of the undesirable acids so you can enjoy. Try a sip of Gentle Ben vodka, gin, straight bourbon, or cast strength bourbon. Compare it to what you drink, and you will never go back. I've been a Gentle Ben man ever since I had that first sip because you get all the flavor and none of the burn. It's so smooth, so clean. Enjoy your drink. Don't work through it. Look for Gentle Ben at the liquor store. Ask for it at your favorite restaurant or bar. Head to the Gentle Ben tasting room. If you're going to Minute Maid soon, well, there's a Gentle Ben bar there to get a Gentle Ben with your baseball. Also, Ben's Bar inside the Toyota Center. You can have some Gentle Ben at Rockets games or concerts there. Or if you just want to go online, order it that way, you can do that. Gentlebin.com. Go to the shop, add the vodka, the gin, the bourbon, all to your cart. Have it delivered straight to your doorstep. That's Gentlebin.com. Gentlebin, period. The Killer Bees are broadcasting live from inside the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. Now back to Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. Fantastic spot for a little bit of food, a little bit of beer. Join us in the pub daily for lunch, dinner, and brunch on Sunday. Current pub specials. How about a burger and a bock, plus free glass for just $20. That started yesterday, runs through April 10th. In celebration of Bach Day, I'll also be running $4 box all month long. Check out our fun F-U-N series brews, only available in the pub and beer garden as well. Uh, if you're driving around town, you're looking for something to do, well, how about you go over to Carbach, hang out with the boys, 713-780-ESPN. We're about 11 minutes for the first matchup of the Killer Bees fight bracket kicking off. Uh, fight club bracket. Uh, we got a we got a doozy in these first couple. We're gonna do a few of these a day. 
uh, play them out throughout the NCAA tournament, and then we're going to have a championship Monday on the same day of Championship Monday. So looking forward to doing that. Some doozies. We'll also get our thoughts on – it was a random draw. We'll get our thoughts of, you know, who's going to go to the Final Four, who are some favorites to win it. But it's all in your hands, Hive. You're the ones that are going to be voting on this and advancing uh, these Houston sports radio personalities on in our tournament. But first, uh, opening day just around the corner for the Strohs. A lot of people think that the Astros improved their bullpen, right? You know you signed Josh Hader. He's he's your closer now. Uh, you add to the back end. Looks like one of the best back ends in all of Major League Baseball. But, you know, you did lose Hector Neris, who had a really good year. You lose Ryan Stanek, who was solid. You lose Phil, you've lose you lost uh, Phil Maton, who was solid. And you really didn't replace those guys with any one of what we would call significance. Uh, you're looking at names like um, a Taylor Scott, who I hadn't heard of before a week ago, and I follow the Astros pretty closely. Uh, Parker Mashinsky, who got hammered last year. Seth Martinez, mm. who was, who's been solid. Uh, Asuza, who has, is a journeyman who was like on 12 teams last year but pitched for you well in like five innings at the end of the regular season. Have the Astros really improved the overall bullpen? Certainly Josh Hader, the best reliever on the market, but the other guys you lose, the Neris, the Stanek. Uh, the Phil Maton, and then filling it in with some 4A types that are trying to make a name for themselves. How much do you think, if at all, the Astros really improved the bullpen? I think that they they, they definitely shortened both the game and the amount of guys that you would trust to go into a game. I mean, uh, I think that shortening the game to a six-inning game, if you can, with your starters because the 7, 8, 9 is covered, that is an outstanding add because you got, you know, a dominant reliever and hater. But with doing that, you know, those guys can't pitch every single day. So you're going to need other guys to fill in. So the three guys that got away, uh, you didn't replace. And and to your point, the people that you're looking at, you know, auditioning for those roles don't have the same kind of cachet as the guys that you lost. So it shortens the amount of comfort, uh, uh, the comfort level that Joe Espada has when going – to the to the bullpen in the middle innings to try and figure out guys that are going to get get him through uh, you know tough starts and and long games uh, to buy some time. So I, I think that shortening the game is the sexy thing, but I don't think the bullpen got better as a whole. There's no way you can say that because there's so many question marks, and we still don't know at this point in spring training who those guys that are going to fill those other roles that are going to be key in the middle innings of relief in the fifth and the sixth when and when things don't go right or they're going very right, uh, as opposed to a year ago when you, you didn't have that kind of overall lockdown security of the 7-8-9, but it was close because you knew the 8-9 and nine were covered. But at the same time, you had those three other guys that Maton had an unbelievable first half last year, and and Neris was great the entire season. And Stanek, two years ago, the ERA was unbelievable. We know he didn't use him in the playoffs, but when he was called on, he at least did his job for the most part, and I don't know that we had the same kind of trust in those guys. I don't think the bullpen as a whole is better than it was a year ago. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to use Stanek two years ago for the, for this conversation. Um, well, I'll say last he, year he still came in and did his job for the most part. Well, you pointed out his numbers two years ago. Like, I, I don't think that really takes any merit to, you know, losing him from what he did a year ago. Like, he regressed, you know. Like, he was still solid. Like, I would take Stanek over some of these names. I, I just don't think it's fair to, to use his numbers from two seasons ago. Uh, the Astros last year were sixth in all of baseball in bullpen ERA. They had a 356 bullpen ERA, but behind all the Yankees, Brewers, Dodgers, Mariners, and the Orioles. Do you think that the Astros are going to have a 356 bullpen ERA this year? I really don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think that the Astros' bullpen is better for the regular season, but I do think it is better for the postseason. I think it is a bullpen that is constructed for playoff baseball because when mm -hmm. you look at the back end and you have those three dudes, it's like, awesome. We feel like we have the seventh, eighth, and ninth it's done. It's curtains. If you have the lead going into that inning, we're going to win. Or if you're tied going into those innings, okay, cool. Now we're just going to scratch a run and win this baseball game. But whenever you have to fill all of the innings that you have to fill, the Astros starting rotation right now is depleted. They're not going to go super deep into games, especially early. You're not getting starting pitching help, you know, until at minimum in the middle of the summer. When I'm, I'm talking Lance and Luis Garcia, you hope you get Verlander and Urquidy back, you know, way before that. But they're going to have to eat a bunch of innings, and you're going to have to eat a bunch of innings with those cast of characters that I just – I have no idea who's going to make the you know the, the back half of the Astros bullpen. But mention some of those names, a Souza, a Scott, a Mashinsky, a Martinez, uh, a Souza. So 
those guys are going to have to pitch a lot, whether you like it or not. So I don't think their overall bullpen ERA is going to be 356. I think it's going to be like no. 375. But I do think that it helps them out more in the postseason. If they get into the postseason, I expect them to do that with ease. Once you get there, that's when you see what a Josh Hader addition really brings to your ball club. Not only that, but I think when you're talking about it from a playoff perspective, you're talking about the pitchers that are going to be uh, you know, available that aren't going to be one of your first four starters are, are going to enhance your bullpen uh, and cover up a lot of your mess from the regular season because you got guys that will have been proven to have gotten guys out during the regular season as starters, and the guys that you're getting back from injury probably factor into that as well to where filling that those roles in the playoffs becomes a lot more simplistic with the arms you have to choose from in the postseason as opposed to right now not knowing when a lot of these guys are coming back from injury and in the case of McCullers and Garcia it being you know after the midway point and then trying to figure out who are these guys that are going to buy some time for you to get to that point while assumably you you know your game your, your team plays well enough to get you to that postseason where it then will become a strength. 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. I've been saying this uh, day in and day out. Getting hater is great. I love the moves. However, to say that 789 this year are a lot better than what we had last year with Naris Abreu Presley, I just don't see it. It's better, don't get me wrong, but the starting pitching has to make it to 789, which they struggled doing last year with the new rules. Just feel like it's going to be a repeat, in my opinion, though. See, Naris had a great year, and I don't think that Naris is going to repeat that. So, like, it's kind of – what do you project Naris to do versus what you project Hater to do? But, you know, you're looking at last year's bullpen versus this year's bullpen, and Naris pitching way over his head contributed to you having a top six bullpen in all of Major League Baseball. I would be shocked, and I would, I would, I would play, a, I would place a bet on that. I don't think that the Astros will have a top six bullpen ERA over the course of I the agree. regular season. But I think it's because I think I think it's constructed t- for the playoffs, Blankers. It is, but I also think Jeremy, the one thing that that what, to your point on Naris is he doesn't have to have. The, the complete lockdown kind of season he had a year ago. But if you knew that you had Naris back, when we, you and I were talking about of the three guys that walk, the one guy that I was really adamant I wanted to bring back, but the price was just in, uh, inevitably too high, was Naris. Because if you had Naris to cover the sixth every night or most of the nights, along with the back end of that bullpen, then I would feel even I, – I would, I would entertain the conversation that that's a bullpen that could get you by better in the regular season as well as the playoffs. But because you don't have that guy who was the one guy I thought that had the effective stuff, that I, I think he's still going to have good numbers this year. It's going to be interesting to see how if he if he lives up to the billing and the money, or if he ends up being more Montero esque this year. But uh-huh. if I had if I had Naris in the sixth, I'd feel better about this bullpen in the regular season. You know, three seven four seven. Remember that Montero is now a solid option, a middle reliever, no longer a back end guy. He, he wasn't last year though. Like maybe he started he that way in the first couple of months. But after the first two months of the year, he was your he was your fourth reliever. Like he was behind uh, Ryan Presley, Brian Abreu, and Hector Neris. Montero was your fourth reliever last year by like month two. He starts this season as your fourth reliever. And I have less confidence than I than I had in him a year ago. Oh, for sure, because he was coming off the really good year. Was, yep. was he overpaid? Sure, but that doesn't really impact performance, and then he was awful. Now, he did pitch well in the second half. His second half wasn't as good as his 2022, uh, and I think we would all take his second half uh, of last year because that first half you know, just gives us nightmares. Uh, 713-780-ESPN, a couple of updates on uh, your tournament scores. Illinois, Moorhead State, the fight in the line, I lead by two, 13 and a half left to play there. Number 11, Oregon, leads number six, South Carolina. 32 26 a minute left to play in the first half and uh, number seven Dayton number 10 Nevada underway 14 and a half to go first half there Dayton leads by two a lot of good games I, I like this uh, this crop of games here I think we're going to see some some good finishes uh, coming up speaking of those brackets it's time now for our Killer B Fight Club bracket first annual Killer B Fight Club bracket where we are pitting Houston sports radio hosts against each other. And we're going to open it up to a vote. Who wins these fights and who will, at the end of this on Championship Monday, claim the Killer Bees Fight Club Bracket Championship? We'll break it all down next. 713-780-3776. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. 
Guy, before we go to the, before we go to the break, I do want to tell you about the fact that we know what time of the year it is, and we know it's the best time of the year when you are a sports fan, especially when you like to wager along the way. That's why I always tell you about mybookie.ag, and I'm telling you about them again because they're going to take care of you every step of the way. It's your one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your own phone and your own home. They got you covered. All you got to do is to take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games is go to mybookie.ag on their website. You can sign up now and you can see the games while you're betting on the games and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus as well on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Like if you put 200 in, you get 300 ready to play instantly but you're using our promo code BET975. The fun doesn't stop there. You get up to the minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to bet on when you are looking at games and you are watching a plenty. And the best part of my bookie, you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. It's what I always tell you to do. And I always tell you to use our promo code BET975 because it pays off for you. They've been in business for over a decade. Your money's not going anywhere. It's going to be safe and secure. And you're, they're going to have plenty of different ways they take care of you so that you have more money to play along the way. You get a friend to sign up, you get a bonus for that too. Just check them out today. Remember our promo code BET975. And as I always tell you, bet anything, anytime, anywhere with the only place I tell you to do it. It's mybookie.ag. Good work by Michael Carroll. Good work by Brian McDonald and their help putting this together. It's the first annual Killer Bees Fight Club bracket where we've taken 32 of the very best. There's th full 32. We had to reach for a few of the Houston sports radio personalities in this in this uh, city. We broke them down into four regions. The Charlie Palillo region, the Ralph Cooper region, the Rich Lord region, and the Kenny Hand region. We're going to do a few of these a day. Just kind of depends on how it's spaced out. We're going to ultimately play down to a champion, a champion on championship Monday. So this will go for the next few weeks. Uh, we're going to – this is the first time we've taken a look at the bracket at Jeremy Branham. Go find the bracket there. You can also vote for the matchups. We have three matchups coming up today. We're going to space it out over a little bit of time. We'll talk about today's matchups. And Blankers and I are going to be forced to argue for one side. When it's us in a fight, we'll argue for ourselves. If it's not us in a fight, then Brian's going to tell us which side we have to argue for. But first – have you guys taken a look at the bracket? Who is in your final four, and who do you ultimately think will be the champion of the first annual Killer B Fight Club bracket, Blinkers? I looked it over. Uh, I was interested when you said it was a blind draw. Um, it was a blind draw, no some, seeds. But, the, but there's still some saucy matchups. To me, I'm just looking, I'm do, looking from the standpoint 
of experience and girth. <laughs> girth? I mean, I think that's what I, I think. There's a lot of there's a lot of oh my god, girth. There's a lot of weight on the table and a lot of size where it matters. Um, the weight classes. This turned into a Nugenix commercial. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh my god. I'm gonna say that my final four would probably be Seth Payne. Okay. Booker T. The Baytown Baddie. And my sleeper is uh, Brian Lalima. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a very good final four. I I definitely share three of yours. I also have Seth Payne, Booker T, and the Baytown Batty. I was torn. I've been told uh, Lalima is quite the athlete. I think he could do it, but I'm gonna stick with our station. I'm gonna put Glenn Davis as my uh, wow. fourth member of the final wow. four. Is he, gonna, is he gonna stay elusive now, and scamper around? Well, see, that's the thing. I gotta ask the question: Are we assuming in this fight they are as they are right now, or can we assume health? No, because Glenn right obviously now. a little that's bit hobbled. He's injured. He's right a little now. bit hobbled right now. Right now, oh, is okay. It really? All right, well, I'll okay. change it. I'll change yeah. it to Lalima. Well, Never yeah, mind. Sorry, Glenn. Glenn's got no shot. Sorry, Glenn. Sorry, Glenn. Whenever you play these soccer matters, games, but you're going to get your butt kicked. You don't. Yeah. You don't get the luxury of being at your best. You got to play the no, games. No, that's fair. Currently, that's are. fair. I, what's What's Glenn's injury? I was not aware. Uh, oh, yeah, major knee he, surgery. Yeah, yeah, knee surgery. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, he's I a one-legged man. Yeah, he's he's a one-legged man in a literal butt kicking contest. Yeah, I mentioned it to you. I think a week or so ago, he was doing a Dynamo game. And he and he, he does it part part of the time sitting, part of the team standing in the press box with, with a chair, and there was, it got exciting. And you know how Glenn gets into it, so he stood up, and then someone moved the chair, and he didn't realize it, and he fell oh, on his awful. keister during play by play, and never missed a beat. Looked at the monitor and waited till a stoppage in the action before he could get back up upright. But that's what he's faced with these days in terms how of no mobility. How did he hurt his knee doing that? I thought he was an athlete. No, he he had already he had, he, sorry yeah. he had already hurt his knee. Oh, that, okay. what, what Joel was described was post knee injury. Yeah, I got you. Uh, yeah, I was going. I'm going to go with Clint Sterner in the Charlie Palillo region. The Baytown Baddie comes through the Palillo region. Uh, Booker T five, five time, five time, five time uh, world champion. He's going to win the loaded. It's a loaded Ralph Cooper region. Blankers and I both reside in the Cooper region. That's why it's loaded. Uh, Glenn Davis, I had winning the Rich Lord region. Didn't know he was hobbled, but I'm going to stick with my pick. He's a one-legged man, and he's going to win this butt kicking <laughs> contest. And then I have Seth Payne going to the Kenny Han region. And then ultimately, my champion is a guy with champion. Championship pedigree. Booker T. I got Booker T winning the first annual Killer B Fight Club bracket. Who do you got, Blankers and Brian? Uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I mean, right. he's going to be the six time champion. Yeah, make, make, it, make, yeah. It, make it unanimous. Yeah. I'm going with the five time, five time, five time champ, Booker T. He becomes the six time champion. Yep, he's going to win this champ. thing going away. I don't care how athletic you are or what you think. Uh, of of anybody in this bracket, I don't see anybody upsetting the obvious favorite. In no, he, he's he's going to kick her ass, and then he's going to do the spin and Rooney afterwards. He's, yeah. he's I can out drive him on the golf course, but I'm not going to beat him in a in a fight. Uh, of <laughs> course, we're not the ones picking the winners here, though. We're not picking the winners. This is going to be down to the hive. It's going to be d- all, all, every day on Twitter, uh, every weekday. I'm not doing this on the weekends. You crazy? I don't work on the weekends. Uh, so the first <laughs> matchup, we're going to have three that we argue right here. The first matchup of the day in the first annual Killer Bees Fight Club bracket is Patrick Creighton versus Adam Clanton. Brian, Ooh. who's arguing for who? All right, Brian, you better get this part right. Okay, Joel is at arguing for Patrick Creighton. Thank you. And okay. Jeremy will be arguing for Adam Clanton. Jo- All right. uh, Joel, why don't you go ahead and make your argument for Patrick Creighton? I just think that you got the toughness of the East Coast in New York and Patrick Creighton. You've got a guy that, you know, Proclaimed to be a hell of an athlete growing up. He's short. He's stocky. I love that you said he's proclaimed. Like, he's like he's like a fire plug. He's like a fire hydrant. He's just short and stocky. You can't move him. He played hockey. He's got up. the weight advantage. Okay, he's got that too. If he said so, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I just believe that he's also going to probably make whoever he fights deaf by the the middle of the first round. He's going to be screaming and yelling at them. And so they're probably not even going to be able to hear if there's any kind of refereeing or anything going on. And once he turns the tables and puts the the girth on him, I think Patrick Creighton's got the advantage. Whenever you have to ramble and reach as much as Blankers just did for Patrick Creighton, he's telling you himself that he does not have much confidence in this matchup. Somebody on Twitter already said that Clanton wears affliction shirts. Doesn't he win by default? (laughs) That's a great point. He's younger. He's in better shape. He's tougher. Clanton by a mile. All right, Brian, what do you think is the boxing judge of this group? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to say it's going to be a 10-8 fight for uh, Adam Clanton. I I, I hear – Joel's side like certainly Patrick's tough he's a scrapper 
But I think his scrapping days, his, his hockey game, days. If he are, gets him on the ground? Yeah, well, he might not then get back up. You know, that, that could also be a problem. I, I just, I'm going to go with the youth of Adam Clay, and he's, he's a little bit of an honorary fellow, too, and I love Adam Clay, and I, we worked together at the uh, flagship way back. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with, have, to, have to go with Adam Clay in this one, 10-8 on the, on the mm. scorecard. Mm. This, is, this is out for vote right now, Jeremy Branham. You, the listener, deciding who advances. We're just making the case. The next matchup, we're doing three today. The second matchup in the Palillo region, winner of Clanton Creighton will fight the winner of Joe George and Figgy Fig. Brian, who's, who's right. arguing for who here? Blank, you will be arguing for Joe. Thank and you. Jeremy will be arguing for uh, Figgy Fig. All right. I mean, I, when we start talking about time? yeah, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. When you have the riz and the drip of Figgy Fig, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna win the fight the moment you step in the ring. He, you look good, you feel good, you play good, and that's what Figgy Fig's gonna do. Plus, he's a scrapper. He's from Ohio. Joe's a little soft in the middle. Figgy Fig takes this no problem. So, to use your own logic on you, if you have to <laughs> use your argument for as being the red carpet walk in and what they might be wearing. Part of his argument fight. was Riz. I've heard that <laughs> n he's a nice guy. Andrew. I've never met him. Everybody says he's a great guy. Nice guys finish last. When you're talking about Joe George, if you talk about Patrick Creighton, and it, it's not just the fire plug, now you got the whole truck. Now you got the whole Chicago fire truck, short, stocky, wears the neck brace. He's going to come in and he's going to be he's going to be all over the place kind of a linebacker football mentality that he self-proclaimed when he told us he played football when he was younger. I, I just I, I just think that nice guys finish last. Joe George is going to take care and, and whoop his ass. I'm going to have to go 10-9 uh, for in favor of Joe George on this one. I, I, I It's for part of, the, part, part of the reason Jeremy mentioned. I mean, Figgy Fig is the nicest guy in the city. I've worked with these guys a lot. I see, I've seen Joe flip the switch and get into rage mode far quicker than Figgy Fig. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen Figgy Fig mad. So for that reason alone, I think Joe's got the fury and he's going to take this one. 10-9. All right. Last matchup of the day. The third matchup oh in the Palillo region. Killer Bees Fight Club bracket. We got a matchup of Del Olale versus the Baytown baddie Clint Sterner. Brian All right, Jeremy, you him. will be arguing for Clint Sterner, and uh, Joel, you will be arguing for Dell. I just think Clint Sterner is a big man. I just think that. Well, you're arguing for I Del. know I am. Okay. That's what I'm doing right. because right. I don't know that Dell's got a <laughs> chance. I mean, Dell doesn't like people. He doesn't like fighting. He doesn't like anything. He's not going to like this. He's not going to want to fight Clint Sterner. I don't think that he's going to be aggressive. I don't think that he's going to want to try and take down another guy. And because it's a very tall mountain to climb for Dell, I, I just. I don't know. I, I don't know that how I can. How I can I, I'm going to have to. You're uh, not making a lot of points in favor tell, of Dell. I'm going to tell Dell to get other representation. <laughs> I don't think I can represent my client. A frog will get wings before I lose a fight to Dell Olale. And then that frog with wings will leap over the carcass of Dell after the Baytown batty gets done with Dell. I played in the biggest stages in the NFL and college football. Might have fumbled a time or two, but I, son of a gun, I was diving for that loose ball. I was in the scrum diving for that ball that I coughed up. No contest. I'll wipe the floor with Dell. Yeah, you beat me to the fumble jug, unfortunately. So that's a credit to Jeremy. Yeah, this is. And I drink a, a lot of milk. It's a mismatch. Yeah, it's 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 at least a ten eight round in favor of Sterner. The Baytown Betty is is going to easily advance. I I. I know Dale's been watching a lot of Shogun recently in FX, so maybe he's picked up some ancient uh, fighting techniques. But, uh, yeah, Clint Sterner's a big guy. He's a former professional athlete. It's going to be Clint Sterner in, a, in an easy fight. Yep. There you go. There's the first three matchups of the Palillo region. We'll be doing this each and every workday, playing down to a champion on Championship Monday. See how the voters uh, play it out. We have it up for vote right now at Jeremy Branham, one of the three. Uh, next round of voting will come up at 4.30, and then the final round of voting will come up at 5. You want the early return on the uh, first matchup? Sure. Or should we wait? Okay. Uh, Clanton versus Creighton. So far, Clanton is leading the fight 57-43. to 43. We That's think that result's going to hold thought. up and see Clanton advance to the Sweet 16. I, it is closer than I thought, too. It it's is closer plug. than I thought. <laughs> I, think, I think Creighton might be stuffing the balance. Joel's patting himself on the on the back over no, here. Yeah, Creighton, Creighton's well, I mean, it's I, losing. I only, so, Patty, you should continue. The only to pat problem is, is on the that Creighton is loser. spending more time worried about our signal, and he doesn't work here anymore, than he is about winning the fight. 
Yeah, hopefully he doesn't think about that while he's in the in the ring with uh, Clanton. All right, that's uh, getting started. We're underway in the first annual Killer Bee Fight Club bracket. Uh, 713-780-ESPN. Was Joe Mixon overpaid? It's Killer Bee's on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Guys, before we go to the break, a word for Doc Linville. He's the best in the business at the Neograph procedure. He does a ton of stuff uh, absolutely outstanding. He does spot treatments, and they do Botox, and they do plastic surgery. But what they really do that can make a difference for you is they do the Neograph procedure. How do I know? Because I had the procedure done. What is it? It's getting your hair back. When I met with Doc Linville, I, the first thing that he told me that really was an eye-opener is that he, the, the hair on the sides and the back of your head, you're never going to lose. No matter how bald you may go in other areas, you're always going to have that hair. So he takes some of it and puts it where you need it most. Maybe your forehead has become an eight-head and you need it in front. Maybe you got a baboon's butt on the back of your head and it's shining and you don't like it, you put a hat on it. You don't have to anymore because the Neograph procedure is a game changer and you get hair for the rest of your life. It's absolutely fantastic. And because you listen to us and you're interested in what he does, all you got to do is go to 975hair.com and sign up for an appointment and a consultation to talk to Doc and his staff about the Neograph procedure. No signing on the dotted line, no money out of pocket, just you and Doc and his staff talking about how this procedure could be a game changer for you. It was for me. It was painless. I loved it. I, I mean, the fact that I saw the results instantly, but I saw the true results in six to nine months, and I've just bragged about him ever since. Check him out today. Go in and make an appointment and just see if it's right for you too. Go to 975hair.com. The killer bees are on the loose at Carbot Brewing Company. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I'm losing my eyes! Now back to the mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios. Here's Joe Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank, I'm Branham. Boys are at Carbock having a good old time. Coming this spring to the Carbock campus. Pizza in pints, a new slice of heaven open in the spring at the brewery. Our new pizzeria offers ice cold beer and deliciously crafted pizza made with love. Follow us on social at Carbock Pizza to get the latest news and information on the grand opening. Great place to have some food. Great place, of course, to have a drink. Carbock Brewing, if you're driving around town looking for a spot, Go there now. Anytime this weekend, go there as well. Anytime this spring, uh, go to Carbox. 713-780-ESPN. So came across this from the 33rd team, Marcus Mosier. Said the biggest overpays of the 2024 season. At the very top of the list, Joe Mixon. 
the new Houston Texans running back. Is it fair to call Joe Mixon, who is at the top of this list over Gabe Davis, three years, $39 million. Calvin Ridley, four years, $92 million. Devin Singletary, former Texan, three years, $16.5 million. And Leonard Williams, three years, $64.5 million. Is it fair to call Mixon the biggest overpay of the 24 offseason? I don't think uh, by just total dollar value that it's fair. I think by position group, if you're just going like that uh, and where they are in their career, you and I have talked about this. Uh, I am a I, I am a firm believer they should not have done anything with Joe Mixon until they saw what was going to be in his final year in, uh, on this current contract. I, I don't think they had to do the three year deal. I don't think they should have done the three year deal. I don't think that the average of nine million a, a year is is the right value for him for the next three four years uh, in that kind of a deal. I, I, I really love the addition for this upcoming season. Not you, being Mac, but I, I think that. If you're looking at it from in the perspective of the wide scheme of every contract that was signed this offseason in the NFL, there were bigger contracts, more money, longer years, where I was I raised an eyebrow and went, geez, I'm not sure what you're going to get there. But from the perspective of just from the running back position, to pay him that average AAV, where he is in his years in the league and what you still what you don't know about how much he's got left, it was fair to have him for one year. Adding the, the extension on and the extra three, uh, I think it was a gross overpay they didn't have to do. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have him first. I think that needs to go to Calvin Ridley. I, like, I agree You, you, you can't give a receiver and go in into his age 30 season, 92 million, 50 guaranteed, especially when he gets to the press conference and basically admits that he doesn't even want to be there. Uh, so Calvin really needs to be one, uh, needs to be first in this list. But I think Joe Mixon definitely is an overpay. I mean, at $9 million AAV, you're, you're paying him more than DeAndre Swift. You're paying him more than Tony Pollard, who are much younger. I think Joe Mixon will, will help the team. I know we've had disagreements on how much, but I do think he helps the team. But there was no reason, in my opinion, to extend them. I mean, the, Training a seven for him, getting him here and paying him basically what six seven million for this season was perfect. He's going to be twenty eight when the season starts. He'll be twenty nine when the next season starts. I'm not paying a running back. I don't even really want to pay him for an age twenty eight season. I certainly don't want to pay him for an age twenty nine season. So uh, yeah, I, th- I thought the extension was pointless and uh, not money well spent. Yeah, I think that mixing on this list is fine. I, I think you could uh, argue one and two. I wouldn't put Calvin Ridley up there, and I'm not even a Calvin Ridley guy. Uh, I think he's overrated. But Tennessee has a quarterback on a rookie deal, and they're surrounding him with talent. Like, go for it. Like, that's fine. Like, let's see what you got whenever you have talent around you, and then it helps you make a decision on what kind of quarterback you have. Uh, so I'm willing to overspend because you have a, a rookie quarterback contract. Uh, it's why I defended the Christian Kirk contract whenever the uh, the Jags signed him for Trevor Lawrence, and then he was really good. Uh, the one that I have the biggest issue with, just looking at it from you know an, an outsider you know point of view, is Gabe Davis. Uh, Gabe Davis incredibly inconsistent, and then he's going to be, I mean arguably be your best receiver depending on what you think of Christian Kirk like so Gabe Davis making a lot Christian Kirk making a lot neither one of them's like that great they're both solid but not not great Gabe Davis is is very inconsistent um Joe Mixon getting the three years at his age getting the nine million you didn't have to do it I think it's fair to have Joe Mixon as one or two as the biggest overpay of the 24 season yeah I, I I'm I'm with you I just I think we're all on the same page that they shouldn't have done that. I think that Gabe Davis being expected to be a wide receiver one is the biggest swing and miss of all, regardless of what you're paying him. But I, I, I'm with, with BMAC. I thought Ridley, because what we saw when we were talking about it during last year, Jeremy, you and I were going back and forth watching, going, well, is it Lawrence or is it Ridley? Is he running his routes right? Is he the timing off? Is he selling out his quarterback when he's not getting the ball? Is he pouting? You know, and then, like, like you guys said, even at the press conference, you're like, I don't know if this guy really even loves the game that much. And then to he make clearly that kind doesn't of, want to be in Tennessee. You make that kind of commitment financially and from a, a, the term of the deal, I just, I'm like, I don't know what the hell they were doing, but I think it's throwing I money. I told away. you what they were doing. They, they were bring, they were putting talent around right. the quarterback to try but to you, get an idea. You couldn't find of better than that that they have. Who? Like Calvin Ridley was pretty clearly the number one receiver after you had Mike Evans come off the board and he resigned his deal. Mike Williams wasn't available yet. No, he wasn't available yet. Is Mike yet. Williams Keenan. better than Calvin Ridley coming off a torn ACL? Well, that's the only thing I don't know. I think Mike Williams would give you more effort. You could have traded for Keenan Allen, obviously. Yeah, that cost yeah, you. No, but Jeremy's capital. talking about just guys that were on the market. Calvin sure, Ridley was I, the top free agent you, you knew, once free agency opened. 
at the receiver. I don't he know was. how and why. I think, I think that says more about the free agency yeah. class than yeah, it does it about sucked. Kevin Riley because yeah, you, receiver, cer- you, know, you know, certainly could have opted to you know spend a first round pick or one of your early picks on on the wide receiver uh, as as compared to the decision to give Calvin Ridley all that money. I mean, I've I've talked poorly about Calvin Ridley. Like I, I'm in a, and I'm in a weird spot here because I'm defending Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley does like as he puts up numbers. Like Calvin Ridley produces. Does he have some moments where he drops the football? Yeah, he does. Did it in a critical spot against the Houston Texans. But we're acting like Calvin Ridley didn't go over a thousand yards last year. We're acting yeah, like Calvin that, Ridley I mean, before he was we're a just gambler. Like did over thirteen hundred yards? Like the, the, the guys caught. Okay, punches what, what year was the thirteen hundred yards year. though? That's got to be that's got to be a long time ago. At this that was three. 20, yeah, that's, years a, that's ago, a long ago. time ago. At okay, this well point. they go I mean, last year. Seventy six ten. He went over a thousand for eight touchdowns. Like we're acting like the guys. Bum. 17, He's not a bum. It's a 17-game schedule. I mean, that, when you're when you're talking about a thousand yards, you're really only talking about what 62, 63 yards per game. It just doesn't mean as much. He wasn't. He I, he never really was an impact player this year. There was too many inconsistencies. Too many games where he completely disappeared. I get the idea of you need to surround Will Levis, a young quarterback, with weapons. I just don't think Calvin Ridley is the type of weapon that's going to bring the best out of Will Levis. And, and, and at that cost, I, I definitely not worth it. I think it's a fair point, but the counter question is then who? Like They were going to spend money to bring in a target for Will Levis, and they spent at the top of the market. Like They found the best guy. And how many guys do you think went over 1,000 yards last year? Like it, You're acting like it's dime a dozen. How many do you think did it? I don't know. The, you, I don't know. What you, would you guess? It sounds like I mean, you have. Uh, well, I just pulled it I up, would, but I'm I curious. I would guess you, in the uh, entire league, 14 yeah. maybe. Well, that's way uh, less than what it, what it really was. But it's, it's kind of weird, though, because you guessed, you guessed 14, but you acted like getting 1,000 yards was a piece of cake. I'm not saying it's a piece of cake. I'm just saying, like, as we keep increasing the schedule, that number becomes less and less significant. Right, but you because when, you're, 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 when, you, when you sure, but you, when you you diminished you diminished the thousand yard season, but then you just said fourteen guys did it. Like that's pretty good. Twenty twenty eight guys did it, which well, I was gonna say know, 21. Is, is oh, 28. I mean, I'm yeah, looking at Calvin Ridley's game. I'm looking at Calvin Ridley's game log right now. He had four games with over 100 yards this season out of out of 17. And like, and he obviously, was also 100 tied yards for eighth with touchdown catches. Like the guy's not a bum. I think that you know he's overrated. I'm not saying he's a bum, but there's a there's a, there's a different level to being you know not a bum to being worth 92 million. Right, right. But we're talking about overpaid contracts, and like, yeah, I'm willing that's to why, overpay yeah, he's not if worth you have a rookie million. QB though. Like I'm, that, and I think that's where the difference lies. Is like, hey, you got a rookie quarterback on a rookie scale. Hey, overpay for a receiver to try to help out that rookie quarterback. Um, See, I, I just believe that you could find a guy. Maybe like you said, it doesn't have to be at the very top of the market, and you might have been able to get a guy that could be as productive just because of the fact that he was the number one name on the list. I have just true question marks about the character of a guy. Forget the – I'm just talking about on the field about, you know, how much he really wants to play football and, and, and how much he really wants to kind of hone in on his craft. And the overpay to me is just the, the, the length of the deal at the amount of money. Sure. Um, this texture says you can argue Michael Pittman was a younger and better option over Ridley. I would agree with that, 100%. He was franchise tag with the, by the yeah, Colts. He, he never was. entered He was never really agency. on the market. Yeah. yeah, Evans was never on the market. Pittman was never on the market. Ridley was the top free agent receiver on the market, and that's why he got paid what he got. Like, is, would I have paid him that? No. Uh, if I have a fringe rookie quarterback, would I pay him? Yeah, yeah, it's worth a shot. I okay, would say well, let's the ask this. Davis contract is worse, and I would say the Joe Mixon contract's worse. I'll ask you guys this, though. Do you think that someone else was going to give him that contract, if not Tennessee? Because I got a hard time believing there was another team out there that was going to throw that kind of money at him. No, they won the bidding. Like, they won the bidding. Jacksonville was, was involved. was their bidding? New England was involved. Yeah, there was multiple teams that were reported at that, that were level? interested in, in Calvin Ridley. I'm curious I don't know the how contract. big they won the bidding. Like, I, I think was there the definitely biggest. was – I think there definitely was bidding because when you when we heard from uh, Calvin Ridley in, the, in his press conference, he basically he basically without saying it said it like I wanted to go back in Jacksonville, but yay, they offered me so much money I I couldn't That's I couldn't saying. tell them no. I think there were other teams that were making him offers. I don't think anybody was offering the kind of money that he yeah. got from Tennessee. We, 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 and we probably won't get the exact details of those other offers. I think he just got forced into the decision where it was so much money that he couldn't walk away from it, even though it wasn't a situation that he necessarily wanted to put himself in. 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. Bad Take Boulevard, who makes the list this week with the worst takes of the week? It's Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
He's blank. I am Branham. We are the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. It's time now for the worst takes of the week. A little segment called Bad Tag Boulevard. Who has made the list this week? First and foremost, Blankers, we had that caller on earlier this this week. Mark yes. said Danell Hunter is just a guy. Had 16 and a half sacks last year, career high. That's better than being just a guy. Well, he went so far as to make two calls and, and double down on the fact that the Texans as a franchise, no one wants to play here. They can't land a big name, and they can't take care of their own and keep the ones they want to keep. I mean, he was just all over the map with bad takes. Yeah, I don't think that he likes Casario a whole lot. Um, I'm eager yeah, to I mean, hear this. I was out Monday, so I didn't get oh, to hear it yet. a double banger. Yeah. We, you and I had him on uh, Thursday or Friday, I think. Oh, oh okay. we had the audio. Yeah. That's right. Here was uh, here was caller Mark with this uh, with this take. I'm just curious what you think of Danell Hunter. Danell yeah, Hunter, okay, he's just a regular guy. Okay, <laughs> he still got to get incorporated <laughs> into the system. He still got to get incorporated into the system. Okay. And all these guys that really had a breakout year, well, we count on that again this this coming year, right? There you go. Todd Donnell Hunter, just a guy. Just, just a regular a guy. guy. Just just a regular, regular guy. He did his Stephen A there. He's just a guy. Man, just a regular like guy. 16 and a half sacks. He's not a regular high. guy. Career high. Like, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to bring down Hunter, there's other ways to do it. Like, you could talk about his age. Um, but to call him just a guy. I mean, guys have 16 and a half sacks in the NFL. Very, very few. He's been the guy that can get to the quarterback. So, yeah, Mark, well, And, and, and your to your point, like with the, the Ridley list. conversation, he was the number one defender on most people's list for free agency. That Certainly everybody as an edge rusher. Maybe, yeah, that, maybe Chris Jones obviously would, would have been higher. But, and he uh, re-signed. And, and he re-signed eventually, so he didn't actually reach free agency. But, yeah. So he was right there at the top of the list on defenders. Just a, just a regular guy, Danell Hunter. I hope he's not right. <laughs> I hope that he doesn't. Guy. I hope that he doesn't get paid and then comes into the Texas next year and has like three and a half sacks. Cause well, is he gonna go, he's going to go coach Ed Reed on us? He would be real. Hopefully he doesn't Ooh, do that. Hopefully. Uh, Joe George earlier today, we're at Carbock today. The boys were at Carbock. Maybe Joe had a pop or two. He said that Sammy Sosa's numbers aren't good enough to be a Hall of Famer. And he, he said get, eliminate the scandal, uh, eliminate all of the stain from like the alleged PED use of Sammy Sosa. He said – if you look at all the numbers and eliminate home runs, Sammy Sosa's numbers are not good enough to be a Hall of Famer. Well, one thing, why are you eliminating the home runs? Right. You're like eliminating you rushing eliminate yards from a running runs. back. Like he's eliminating the home runs from a power hitter. You don't eliminate rushing yards from a running back. You don't eliminate strikeouts from a pitcher. Why are you eliminating 609 home runs? How was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Well, it was fine except for the end. That's what he's doing here with Sammy Sosa. But – so, aside from that, if you want to look at the other numbers, well, Sammy Sosa had 2,408 hits, more than Jeff Bagwell, Hall of Famer, 2,314. He also had more RBIs than Jeff Bagwell, 1,667, compared to 1,529 from Bagwell, one with the local tie because we all know who Jeff Bagwell is. So, even if you eliminate the other numbers, they're still better. If you eliminate the home runs, the other numbers, some, are still better than other Hall of Famers that were power guys. But what do you do in eliminating? 609 home runs. Bad take, I mean, and, and, uh, uh, You know, he and McGuire resurrected the entire sport of Major League Baseball on the, that magical r- ride that they took everybody on to, and, and that has to factor in. I, I just, yeah, I, I, you can't eliminate home runs, and, and Sammy Sosa overall is a guy that, that was a massive part of baseball when he was putting, especially when he put on a Cubs uniform. I mean, like, and he, yeah, he's I mean, eliminating the scandal here, too. Like, that we need to, like, the scandal is the reason that he's not there. It's not the numbers. Right. right. And, and that's the important part. Like, if you want to make the argument on scandal, that's one thing. But, I mean, saying you're eliminating home runs, like, yeah, that guy is a good, uh, you know, he's a good guy other than being a murderer. You can't eliminate the main yeah. part. And you mentioned uh, his RBI total. I believe it was over 1,600. 1,500 yes. has kind of been the classic line for RBI. You pass that, you're a Hall of Famer. You obviously pass the home run total as well. So, yeah, it, it, that's a tough argument to you make see, from Joe. And I know the guy that drilled him with the question, but they caught him in the airport. He was in Chicago oh, yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. And, and he basically he was willing to bury the hatchet because he and the Cubs have been fighting. And the Cubs say it was because, you know, he took steroids. And, they're again, they're turning a blind eye to all the money that he brought in when he was on the run. And, and then the, the, the reporter – uh, who I know, Lou Canellis, look, I goes, Sammy, are, does that mean if you're willing to bury the hatchet and you're willing to admit your wrongs, you're willing to admit you took steroids? And he was Did like, I can't believe Did you just name drop Luke Canellis? 
<laughs> is that a name drop? Do people know who he is? Yeah, I don't know if that's a big enough yeah, name to be a name drop. I don't think that's a, a big drop. name drop. I mean, yeah. in Chicago, you might know him. You mean, but we wanted to know that you knew him. No, I'm just naming the, the reporter that cornered that him. And, and What? That you know. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Joe is speaking like a true White Sox fan. I mean, he just has this anti-Cub opinion where he doesn't like Sosa. because he's a White Sox fan. Uh, Stephen A. said that the, the the Virginia Cavaliers should fire Tony Bennett because they lost in the play-in game. And they play, the reason that he said they should fire him is not because he doesn't win enough games. They should fire him because he's boring. What's the objective? When you get hired as a coach, what is the? What are you asking your bosses what you need to do? You're saying, well, they're going to say you need to win games, not put butts in the seat and be a 500 team. And I know it wasn't a great year for Virginia. I think it was silly. They were in the NCAA tournament over Indiana State. But firing Tony Bennett because their play is boring is outrageous from Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, I mean, that's just a ridiculous take from a guy that I believe has Texas A&M in his final four. He does. Uh, you, you look at – you look at, you know, who he is and, and kind of where he's become a more of a shock jock type guy. I mean, look, I, I Tony, like I said this the other day when you, when you were out, Jeremy, I, Tony Bennett's a Wisconsin guy. Tony, Tony Bennett has won a national championship. But this is one of those kind of where the rubber meets the road where you have a hell of a conversation going on right now with Tony Bennett. You better change your system. You better start, you know, because that game set basketball back. Their entire season wasn't good. That game set basketball back 40 years. I mean, that was it, ugly, ugly, ugly. And that's been his system forever. And it's won a national title. Like, why would he change the system? He just needs to kind of improve the talent. Like, his system has won a national championship. I don't think the system's the issue. I think it's the personnel. I actually do. That's young. How do you win a national title? I just title? think the way – but back in a time when, the, when I think the offense has evolved even more between the national like title and now – Right, but three years ago and now they're even more focused on you know scoring and points per possession and faster po- play, pace of play. And he's always been a slow down, grinded out defensive kind of coach. And I just don't know if that works anymore. Okay. Um, how about this one from Mel Kuyper, our resident draft expert? You have no second round pick. So some maneuvering to take place there. And if you trade Justin Fields to Atlanta, you could get the eighth pick overall. So you could have one, eight, and nine field and be able to recoup a second round pick by trading down with one of those two picks, either eight or nine. So a lot of maneuverability for the Bears either way field. But if it's me, I'm taking Caleb Williams number one and trading Justin Fields. He said they could get the eighth pick for Justin Fields. This is a Joe level take. The eighth pick. For Justin Fields, he actually went for a sixth unless he plays 51% of the regular season snaps, which it turns into a fourth at best. So they, tr- he, Mel Kuyper was not wrong, but he was wrong on another, like, dimension. Fourth or a sixth versus the number eight pick in the NFL draft. Mel Kuyper doesn't have a fill for the league. Not at all. I mean, this is worse than when he, he had the take of he would quit if uh, what's his name in Carolina from Jimmy Clausen wasn't the starting oh, quarterback yeah. for the Panthers right. within a couple of years. Like, this is even worse because I'm sitting there going, well, what did he mean? Maybe he meant like they switched, they flip-flopped the Bears' second first-round pick and the Bears move up to the eighth spot, and then you get Fields as a throw. There's no way you can justify it. There's no way that was even a possibility. That's just a horrible take. Yeah, because not not even when people thought Fields was going to bring back a good return was I did I ever hear anyone else suggest that he would go for a top ten pick. I think some people thought maybe you could get a second for him, maybe on the, in a pipe dream get a late first for him, but no one was ever suggesting a top ten pick for Justin Fields, who already has proven he's not a great passer. Yeah. That was out there. That one's wild. Uh, This one could be worse. RG3, Robert Griffin, who lives in the Houston area, by the way. Uh, Robert Griffin's – yeah, he does. Uh, We go to the same barber. RG3 saying that Caleb Williams should pull an Eli Manning. Caleb Williams should pull an Eli Manning and demand that the Chicago Bears do not draft him number one overall. After everything that's happened with just Justin Fields, can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what, this is the organization that has my best interest at heart. After the Bears took Justin Fields, the 11th pick in the draft, and turned him into a sixth round pick in the 2025 draft by trading him to the Pittsburgh Steelers? Can Caleb Williams really look at that and say, you know what? Yeah, this organization is going to help get me where I want to go. I don't think it's saying that. Is it a bad take, Blinkers? It's a horrible take, Jeremy, because of the fact that if you look at a rookie quarterback, and, and we look at what happened because we have familiarity with it a year ago, 
we were questioning how good the receivers were and the weapons were and everything that was going to be in the line that was going to be for C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud went off the planet. But this isn't Mitchell Trubisky. This isn't Justin Fields. This is a situation where before they even draft you and, and you're still far enough away from the draft, you have Keenan Allen, you have D.J. Moore, you have Cole Komet, you have you DeAndre went out, Swift. You, Swift at running back. Yep. You're, you're, you've already started to enhance your offensive line, and I'm sure you'll even address that even further. Like, there might not be a better situation for any rookie quarterback this year coming into the league to have all those weapons at your disposal when you get to a place like Chicago. The only thing he might want to bitch about is the cold weather and the fact that he didn't <laughs> want to play in a cold weather city. But other than that, I don't know that there could be a better situation for a rookie quarterback to step into. Yeah, I think this is a, a case of – Robert Griffin not being happy with how Justin Fields was handled in Chicago, and he's letting that kind of go into the take where Caleb Williams should be a – I don't want to be a Chicago Bear. But I think that the guy to really blame is Justin Fields' poor play. Like, if Justin Fields was so good, why is he going for at best a fourth and at at, at least a sixth? Like, I think he's the one that should have the finger pointed at him. Like, they brought yeah, in it's... help for him last year, and they were still not good, and he was still not good. Yeah, it's weird because the take that Robert Griffin III gives basically tries to take away any and all blame from Justin Fields for the situation. Yeah, I think Jeremy's right, though. I right. think it's it's just an odd take. Yeah, he, he, he maybe, like you said, maybe RG3 is upset because certainly the first year – and even second year with Justin Fields, the, the Bears didn't surround him with many weapons. So I could see being upset with maybe his treatment that first year. But they gave him D.J. Moore. Cole Komet's a good receiver. They had some decent runners. It wasn't like he was completely uh, without talent around him this last year in Chicago. And he still wasn't a good passer. So it feels like RG3, for some reason, is rushing to take all uh, blame away from, uh, from uh, Justin Fields. Brian, I think you put this one on here, the Chris Sims NFL draft yes. rankings, top five receiver prospects. Chris Sims listed his top five. He had tier one explosive ride receiver. He had number one Malik Neighbors, number two Brian Thomas Jr., uh, both LSU guys. In his second tier, he said no bust NFL ready, Marvin Harrison Jr., and then he had in his third tier high-end skill sets, Rome Adenze and Roman Wilson. Why do you think this is a bad take here, Brian? Well, for, for, for two reasons. One, I know there's starting to be some push, and I've heard this from Lance. I've heard this from Daniel Jeremiah about putting Malik Neighbors ahead yeah. of Marvin Harrison Jr. But I, this is the first I've seen. Maybe you guys have seen it, but this feels like an absolute massive overthinking reach to put Brian Thomas over Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't know what game they watched where Marvin Harrison was doing less than Brian Thomas. Did, but did Sims just get scorned by the fact that he hasn't worked out, he's not doing interviews, he didn't do Maybe. pro day? It, 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 Chris Sims is known for having yeah, one like scorching hot take every draft season that just catches everyone off guard. But beyond having Brian Thomas ahead of him, by putting Marvin Harrison Jr. in a in a tier where, where that's not labeled as explosive, like you watch Marvin Harrison Jr. and you don't think he's explosive? It, it's just it's weird – to rush to put a guy ahead of him that where Marvin Harrison outproduced him every step of the way, and then to try to label Marvin Harrison Jr. as not explosive. And then look where he's got Roma Dunze. That's the other thing to me. Was yeah, like certainly. He drops him all the way down to the you know towards the bottom of the list. But certainly, Dunze is explosive. He was a big yeah. time uh, uh, deep deep passing threat. I'm gonna say that you're rushing to include this in bad takes, though. I don't think we can okay, include this that? in bad takes yet. Well, I mean, we don't know. Like, what if Chris Sims knows this and we're looking at this in a year and we're saying, oh, well, we're, he was right. He was right. It's a hot take. I don't think it's a bad take. You might not yeah, agree with it. I, what if he's right? It yeah. hasn't played out. We don't know. I, I, I guess. I, I just don't see what the – if, if, if I was going to go with you on that, I would have to have seen some basis for this opinion to be – founded upon and I didn't see anything watching Ohio State or LSU play that would have told me Brian Thomas better player than Marvin Harrison well with Chris Sims eye test which has always been so good Brian <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oregon leads South Carolina 59 43 11 minutes left to play in that one at the half 10 seed Nevada with a nine point lead over seven seed Dayton 34 25 those are the two games going on uh, right now, 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. If Jalen Green hits stardom, not saying he's there yet, not saying he's going to get there, but if he does, does it matter how long it took him to hit that stardom? 713-780-3776, Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. Here's the Killer Bees, Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. So plenty of time to get on over here. Hey, look, we're here till 6. The boys are there till 6. It doesn't close down at 6. Come visit us at Carbach Brewing tonight, tomorrow, this weekend, located 610 290 Interchange in Spring Branch area. You know where it's at. Uh, spring weather that's coming up, perfect time to enjoy the beer garden and outdoor space. All I have to do is go head over to carbachbrewing.com and learn more about their upcoming events. Great food, great drink, great spot to hang out. 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. 3426 says hot take, Justin Field sucks. I don't think that's that hot of a take. It, it might depend on who you're talking to. I'm not a big believer in Justin Fields, but I don't, I don't think that's a hot take. Do you all think that's a hot take? It's not a hot take. I think it's the leading take amongst most people. Um, you know, obviously the Steelers are hoping to resurrect his career, get him a fresh start, and take all the pressure off, let him kind of learn a little bit behind Russ and see if there's a possibility of what he can do. I still believe he has ability. I know you and I have had that discussion. I believe that he can be a starting quarterback in this league, but – you know, maybe he, he just needs a, a year to kind of learn and observe and figure out where he went wrong. I don't think yeah. it's a hot take. I still give Fields a small chance, you know, maybe under Mike Tomlin to figure some things out and may, probably not reach the promise that the Bears hope for him being the 11th overall pick, but still being a decent NFL starter. But, uh, yeah, that's not a hot take. All the evidence on the field so far has not been good for him as a passer. Jalen Green. Uh, I'm not going to say he's a star yet. I'm not going to say that he's going to eventually hit stardom. I hope he does. Uh, Does it matter if he does hit that stardom how long it takes? I don't think so. I think that for the most part it's just the fact that you hit on him, that he finally hits. I always go back to the Chauncey Billups example when he was taken in the first round and everybody thought he was supposed to be an instant star, and it took him a couple of stops over multiple years before he found Detroit and found a way to make, you know, carve out a career and win a championship and do all the things that he's done as Mr. Big Shot. I, I think we, we, we do these same kind of debates with the NFL, too, because, you know, you know, did J.J. Watt bloom right away? Did other guys take some more time? We, we talked about it with Will Anderson. I think as long as Jalen Green is showing you what he's shown you so far and that there's not a complete drop-off between now and the end of the regular season, the fact that you know he's got talent, you know that he's getting better, you know that we wanted to see out of this entire roster this year, uh, all the young guys make progress, get better, show you what they could possibly be that I think it, that all Rockets fans should be excited about that because he's not a bust. He's not someone that you're going to let walk away for nothing. He's someone that can actually help your team. I, I got into a, a friendly conversation on Twitter, I think with Chuck, uh, about this. I don't really care a whole lot about Jalen Green's first two years. Like, even if Jalen Green hit the stardom already this year, like maybe you're talking about being in 10th place to the West, whatever. I don't think they were ever going to get there, no matter how good Jalen Green was under Steven Silas, and it's probably better that he didn't get there because maybe he buys Steven Silas a year or two, which I think would have been bad because you're in a much better spot spot now with Ime Adoka. I, for me, it's as long as he gets to that stardom before he could leave you in free agency. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people have talked about when he's eligible for this, like the max extension and stuff like that, but we haven't talked about how long he's under contract because you're not forced to give him the max. You're not forced to do that right away. I know once you have a rookie in a rookie contract and he hits that stardom, you pay him as quickly as you can. That doesn't mean you have to do that. He's under contract this year. He's under contract next year, and then he's a restricted free agent after the 2025 season as well so you can match a salary that he signed and let the nba dictate what his market is i don't think it matters at all when he hits his stardom as long as he hits his stardom while he's still under contract with the rockets you're absolutely right And, and and the other part of that too is because of the fact that the nba draft has shifted so so greatly from having a top five pick and a lot of people get caught up in this that you know get what what gets lost in the wash is a top five pick in the past was probably going to be a franchise type player an all-star type player a guy that was going to be with you for a long time and play at a really really high level but now because these guys are coming out at 18 not everybody's going to be lebron not everybody's going to take the league by storm the minute that they lace them up on a hardwood with an nba logo on it you, you you've got to mature you've got to fill out you've got to grow and you've got to progress we always talk about it. Not everybody progresses on the same timetable or the one that all fans would like you to progress on, but as long as you get there, that's the ultimate bottom line. 
Yeah, I don't think it – to me it doesn't matter as long as you still have him. Like, if you were to give up on him or, you, you know, it's after his contract expires with the Rockets, whatever, and then he hits his stardom, now we have a problem. Like, that to me is the timeline. While he's under contract with you – until he's no longer under contract with you. If it comes in, if it comes next year, cool. If it comes in two years when he's still under contract with you, cool. As long as it comes. To me, that's the, the most important thing. Uh, Dick Willie says, Pac-Man Joel, you called it. He said, just wait until Jalen gets a few games in a row. It's just not a glimmer of light anymore. Where do you stand on that now? I think that we've seen two different runs similar to this. where And it doesn't seem that this second run is over yet. To where, to me, it just seems like, and you and I talked about this a little bit, Brian and I talked about it yesterday, that the light finally is staying on. Like, that, you, you saw glimpses to know it's in there. We all said, I, I was adamant on the fact there is a ton of basketball ability, but can he harness it and, and stable it and use it the way it's supposed to be used to be the best player he can be in the league? That's where the question marks came because it was more – shoot and if it makes then you're happy and if it's not then you're not and it was tough to to actually completely buy in to where now yes because of these two runs and because of what I'm seeing and I already knew what kind of ability he had there's I'm a, I'm becoming more of a believer that he can be a very above average to upper echelon player in this league eventually yeah do you see the two controversies with the Rockets uh, including one of them including our station no you didn't I did not I don't oh. think so I really don't want to talk about it. I don't want to get in trouble. Oh. The contra- um. well, not, yeah, the controversial <laughs> station got a little bit heated. I can't Did believe it? you didn't see. Oh, there yeah. Was a, the, apparently the country of Turkey is very mad at us. Oh, I heard Lance talking about yeah. it. Yeah, the country of because Turkey. Because he and Dell? Well, no, like, well yeah, they took, s- someone took a video of what, something we posted and chopped it to hell to make it oh. seem not very great, I guess is the way to phrase it or a poor way to phrase it. But, uh, yeah, the country of Turkey, not very happy right now. Yeah, huh. Alpish and Goon fans not too pleased with uh, John and Lance. And then the other, do you see the other scandal where Roosh was arguing with uh, Felicia? Was it Felicia or Felicia Stone on the uh, on the Twitter? Oh, I did hear about that one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She, where she, she, she said he said something along the lines of this: this organization was trying to trade Jalen Green, and then she like clapped back. So that's not the case. And then he clapped back saying, "Well, you know where I get my sources." And then everybody just kind of went crazy off of that. Yeah, and I heard he was not backing down. And it, it, first of all, you know, I I heard them talking about where are you on if your wife got in the middle of your job stuff. But secondly, like you know, I, I think you guys already know that I have a certain opinions of, about the way Roosh handles his business. He he doesn't take L's and he and he doesn't go down quietly, even if he's wrong. But you know, I I, did, I know that the other thing with Roosh is that he went out there and was talking about the fact that he told Jalen Green what he had to do to become better <laughs> and things he needed to work on. And I'm like, I don't think that that's a smart move for anybody that's never played in the league. Did he tell him uh, that in person or on? Uh, I couldn't quite understand. I, knew I, that I could not figure out when it happened. It's a very weird mansplain. Yeah, it, it comes off as maybe the worst mansplain of all time. I mean, Trying I tell, to tell an NBA player. Yeah, oh. they might not listen to me, but I I, try, I do. Hey, oh, so you're a frequent mansplainer? I, I tell I tell general managers and head coaches what they should be doing all the time, all the time. <laughs> yeah, I on do. Twitter, not to their face. Well, I don't even. I think and I you and usually cloaked in about Maybe five Twitter. layers of sarcasm. That's true. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN HRMP listener line seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. John Rom's Masters dinner is out. How do we feel about this? There's a new television sports television show on Netflix. Do we have any interest in that? And this sports better that won big on FanDuel didn't actually win all that big. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
You're listening to The Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. Boys are at Carbach and coming this spring to the Carbach campus. Pizza and pints, new so- a new slice of heaven opening this spring at the brewery. Our new pizzeria offers ice cold beer and deliciously crafted pizza made with love. Follow us on social at Carbach Pizza to get the latest news and information on our grand opening. Great spot if you're looking for a Thursday night supper, Thursday night drink, great night for tomorrow, this weekend, whenever at Carbach. Uh, Nevada leads Dayton 42-29, 15 and a half left to play in the second. So the 10 seed looking good there. And then the 11 seed, Oregon, looking good against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Uh, 74-61 Oregon, 4-10 left to play in that one. So mm-hmm. I Oregon like that one. Got hot. You had Oregon going in your bracket? Yeah, I got them winning a couple of rounds. I, I like oh, the really? fact that yeah, they, yeah, uh, we, wow. we, uh, we discussed like uh, dark horses. The other day while you were out, and that was one of Joel's dark That was my horses. dark horse. Yeah, I just feel like they've they're been hot. dinged up all year. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing well. You know, they had that good run through the uh, Pac-12 tournament, and now they lead the Gamecocks by 12, 410 left to play. Good Real coach, quick before too. we get yep. – what's that? Good coach. You're a fan too. of Dana Alford? Dana Altman. Oh, Dana Altman. I, I, yeah, I think, I think he's good, and he's got a good re- record in the uh, tournament. Uh – Willie on the Twitch, real quick. Warriors or Lakers? Who's more embarrassed if they miss the play-in? I think it's a good question. Um, man, I think both. I mean, I think they both should be embarrassed if they miss the playoffs. There's still too much talent on either team, just as yeah, top-heavy as they more. can be. One's got to be more. I'll go Lakers because they I, have LeBron. I was going to go Lakers because they put up a banner for the in-season tournament. To, to then miss the playoffs, that would be pretty embarrassing to me. Well, that's, you that's can't a, put them yeah, in the in-season. What a season they've had. That's a brand they've of button had a great right season. there, buddy. They, they've oh had a great God. season. I know. The Lakers I, 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 I forgot that was part of Brandon. That is a Brandon's. brand of button this year, buddy. Yeah, I forgot that was part of his the gimmick right now. The Lakers won the NIT. But, they've, already, they've already raised the banner and hold, held the trophy this season. Like, it's, it's I, only, uh, like anything else is just gravy for the Lakers. All right, random gimmick aside, to, to, ho- to hoist a in-season <clears throat> tournament banner into the rafters of a franchise like the Lakers that has, what, 17, 18 NBA championships, to then miss the yeah. playoffs when 10 seeds get in, that would be embarrassing. I think it's more, I think it's more the Lakers because their stars can still play. I think Chris Paul is a shell of himself. I think Klay Thompson has proven to be way less than what he once was. Right. And no matter what level Steph is playing on, you know, you add it. You still got a guy like Kaminga that can play. You got some young guys that can still contribute. And yet, you, you know, you you are who you are. And I don't think anybody's intimidated by the Warriors like they once were. When the Lakers walk into a building and you start with Anthony Davis and LeBron James, they should have a better than average chance to win. Yeah, I think it's the Lakers too. Uh, John Rom has a uh, his Masters dinner has been uh, has been published. We know what his Masters dinner is now. He's starting it off with tapas. I love tapas. Now it's all in Spanish, so it's tough. Like one of them is this acorn-fed ham, cured pork loin. Another one is okay. this spicy chorizo potato. That sounds delicious, uh-huh. actually. Uh, this one's like a cheese with a black truffle. Mama Rom's classic lentil stew. Spanish op, uh, Spanish omelet, onions, and potatoes, and then a creamy chicken fritters with potatoes. Uh, what do you think of the tapas portion of the uh, the Rom's Master Dinner? I Rom's think you got good dinner. choices. You can, I, I can make that work. I can find something I like. Yeah, I think that there's something for everybody, and if you want to go yeah. kind of more traditional and back home like he was going for, and if you don't, there's other options. I don't have a problem with it. I feel a yeah, little disappointed I, I, after the tapas, though. Like, I see tapas, I'm like, oh, this is going to be fantastic. And most of those options don't really sound that good. You, oh, so you don't, you don't like the tapas options? I don't or like the ones, the ones that he has tapas. presented. No, I don't like That's the ones fair. he has presented. I, I, don't, I don't know Some why. Good, I don't know. Not all. The, the, the bragging point of the uh, acorn-fed ham would seems <laughs> a little bit odd. I'm not sure why. It still eating, sounds all right. It's, I mean, it's still ham, so I'm sure it'll be good. But the fact that the, the pig ate acorns, I don't know why that makes it well, you it's, know, it's a better-tasting ham, I, I, I guess. But, uh, well, yeah, most the, of it well, is yeah, circle of most life. of it I sounds mean, okay. I mean, I like chorizo. I like potatoes. There's stuff in here I would eat, but it sounds like uh, there's not a lot here I would put on mine master's yeah. dinner but there's a lot of stuff that i would definitely try that's where i'm at like i see tapas and i'm like yes and then it's like oh these are the ones eh. his first course after that he's got a crab salad with potato not even okay. really sure eh. what that is like crab yeah. salad with potato i've never heard i've never heard of that 
Well, I've heard of crab salad, but not with sure. potato. That's the part exactly. that seems a little odd. Right, but I would think the way I envisioned it would be something like a potato like salad a potato with crab salad in with it. Crab in it. That yeah, could be I'm good. fine with that. That could be good. Yeah. That could be good. That's a weird first course. That's more of a side. That's weird yeah, and that's your, that's your only first course, too, right? Yeah, that's your only choice. That is. That you don't have options. And then his I would have given course, options. Yeah, me too. That's more of a side, I think. His main course, he has two of them. He's got a ribeye with, like, lettuce and peppers. And then he's got a, um, I guess this is, it's called a turbot, Navarro white asparagus. It's, it's a, is it's that a, a fish? turbo. It's a fish. Yeah, turbo? It's Why turbo. is there a T yeah, at the yeah. end? Well, you don't pronounce some, the T? Some, well, some letters are silent. Welcome to the welcome to I've the never, welcome I've to never heard of a turbo. Have you heard of a turbo? Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah mean, it was a mascot I, for the Rockets back I, when they were <laughs> winning championships. I watch, I watch a lot I've of cooking heard shows, of so I, I, I've heard of a turbo. But yeah, it it's looks a, like it's a flounder to me. I just pulled it up. Again, it is a fish, so fish can look like flounders. So I wonder if it I'm tastes like I'm definitely going ribeye. I can tell you that. I'm staying oh, away from the turbo. I'm definitely going like, ribeye here. I wonder if it tastes like flounder. Does turbo taste like flounder? Turbo, t does it taste like flounder? 713-780-3776. You don't recognize the silent T? I'm curious what turbo t tastes like. Uh, I'm going ribeye, no doubt about it. Give me the ribeye. I had a good ribeye last night. Um, for dessert, again, no options. It's a puff pastry cake, custard, and then some sort of cream. How does that Chantilly, sound? Sounds good. Yeah, Chantilly cream. I'd have to pass Chantilly on this cream. dessert. What? Yeah, I don't know. I it's, pass. It just, I'm not <laughs> oh, okay, I'm not okay, that's fair. I would still, I would still cake eat. and custard alone. I'm I would, in. I would still eat it, but it sounds very basic and kind of bland to me, to be honest. I don't, just a puff pastry with some cream. It's like I don't. I this is supposed to be a special dinner. And this is what oh, you you're get. Missing, I would. The custard is the best part. I guess. Yeah, it just sounds very bland and basic to me. Great, okay. great. This dinner from one to ten. Six. I think that's where I'm at. Like it sounds, it's, yeah. it's a six. Like I think it, it's it got some possibilities, it but it could be a lot better. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It'll do. I would definitely eat the the meal, but I would uh, I would have changes if it were my meal. I had a better dinner last night. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna brag on it. Coach takes What'd us out. Have? We already the tried night before the tournament. Um, it was all, all coach takes everybody out the night before the tournament. Really appreciate wow. that. Wow. You want me to read it? That's it's like great. it would take me it would take me a year to read all of everything we had. We had fried calamari. We had fried oysters. Fried. Um, Fried lobster. First time I had fried lobster. It was wow. really good. They okay. had, like, pizza. This is all appetizers. Crab cakes, pizza, fried green tomatoes, and then, like, a butter board. Wedge salad. You had your option between an onion soup, potato soup. I want potato soup. Then you had your option between a filet mignon, ribeye, or salmon, uh, salmon filet. Went ribeye. Should have went filet. I should have went uh, filet because of all the No, other I think food. you made the right choice for ribeye. They were both good. And then, like, mashed filet. potato side, eh. French fry side, sweet potato casserole side, cream spinach, asparagus. And then they had, like, uh, chocolate cake, carrot cake, cheesecake, all miniature desserts to choose from. Good lord! I'll take that over great. masters. I'll take that over round. Oh uh, yeah, masters dinner. I'm in. I, don't think it's I would definitely no take that, that menu over uh, the masters one without question. No brainer. No brainer. Uh, Netflix is coming out with a new show called Receiver. Uh, this is from the producers of Quarterback. <laughs> I love the names here. Quarterback, Receiver. What's coming up next? The One Tech. Uh, I like the Quarterback series though. Last year, Kirk Cousins was on it. Um, you had. Of course, Pat Mahomes was on it, which was cool to follow him around, and, you know, getting the Super Bowl, winning the Super Bowl. Like, none of the quarterbacks want to do it again. So the receivers are Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, George Kittle. That's weird. He's a tight end. Debo yeah. Samuel and Amon Raw St. Brown. You watching this? I would tune into it. I'd be interested. I'd watch the first episode and see how it went. I would hope that it would be along the lines of not all fluff and some substance about some, you know, how it is off the field and, and kind of, you know, I think the golf one, from what I've seen of it, I liked. Um, if it can go kind of follow along those lines, I'd be good with it. Yeah, I'm a fan of all these shows. Like, I, I, I like the behind the scenes with all of these. So, I'm intrigued. Uh, I'll watch this. And then, um, did you catch this sort of story? And there's a guy betting in, uh, I think it was Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. I know it was Louisiana. A FanDuel better on, uh, on FanDuel. He turned two dollars, a two dollar parlay, into fifteen hundred dollars, and then after he won it, he received an email from FanDuel that his winnings had been garnished by child support. Um, they knew somehow they they debited his money into like I guess the child support enforcement there in Louisiana, and he had to pay his back uh, child support. Yeah, that's brutal, man. That like. Le stay out of a man's money. Like I don't know how they get involved in all that, and they can just get in and do that but it's that's brutal that you think you want it big and then you get caught like that although be you know, I don't be in disagree beat. more like i'm happy that fanduel did this and i'm happy that these gambling sites can do this like 
Uh, give me the I kid mean, should have the money more than for... the dad yeah, should have the money. This guy doesn't pay his child support. Know about those. Be That's responsible. I mean, if they can mean? garnish your wages, it's, it's, they can I'm take I'm saying don't sort of... be a deadbeat dad, but it's none of your business if I'm on the it, side making some gambling money. Disagree. If you owe yeah. money, I, I, could, I have Joel no Blake patience for this, this at just, all. Yeah, I got two, and I hate it. I know. <laughs> I have no patience for this at all. If you're back, if you're, if you owe from child support, then that should be the first thing you're paying any sort of money to. And you're out here winning fifteen hundred dollars on Fanduel. Absolutely, that should go to your child support before it should go to your account. Now, now, do we know that this story came out because the guy was upset about the money being taken? I think he posted like, it. How, yeah, how like, does the oh, story man, get out? Me. He posted okay. it. I think. I think he took a picture of it. Okay, so the, so it sounds like he wasn't going to give the kids the money then, if he's no, upset I, about it and posting it. I'm not sure how upset he was, he was about it. Was it was a surprise. He was, he was buying yeah. a bounce house and trying to set some stuff up for his kids. <laughs> it's like they got me type of thing. I don't think that he was, like, upset by it, which is kind of cool. Like, if he shouldn't be complaining about it, that's for sure. If you're going to go to Twitter complaining about it, it's like, oh, hey, guys, I, I owe money to my kid, but I, instead of giving it to my kid, this money that I want, I'm just going to pocket it all. No, man. No. Pay up your debts, it just, it's just especially with like child a weird support. Thing to- it feels like a really weird thing to put out on social media. There's not a lot of ways that you post this and you come out looking good. <laughs> so it feels like an odd thing to put on social media, but that's just, you know, 2024 for you. <laughs> You're right. Uh, I think it was more like, dang, they got me. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, 8532, they have money to gamble. They should be able to support their kids. Facts, but he only had yeah, $2. Don't be a deadbeat dad, but I just don't think they can just – it's their right to just j- jump into my gambling. I mean, the, I mean, I – I think the thing the ex-wife would say, if whatever money you had to place the bet, probably should have come to the kids before you placed that bet. I could, maybe I, he's I trying to make enough money so he could. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Zero six one three acorn fed ham is just wild boar. That's their main source of food in the wild. Ooh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. All, All right. right. That so, I want so maybe it's just a way of saying organic. That I don't Joel want said. that. I would, I would try it. I don't think I would like. It wouldn't be my. Yeah, favorite I don't think I'd that. like wild boar. It doesn't sound like I'd like it. Like it I does like sound. It does ham. sound like it'd be tougher. Yeah. If it's a wild boar, it would sound like it'd be tougher and gamier. You, you, yeah, you, gamier. It'd be, it'd be gamier. I don't know if it'd be tougher. Well, a, animals. They with fight the, more. Well, animals with more muscle content are to produce stringier, tougher meat. So if it's a wild animal compared, compared to a pig that's raised to be eaten, then it could be tougher. Yeah, you just need a white wine reduction. Uh, 3358, <laughs> the Attorney General monitors all tax section all tax section for men owning back child support. I kind of like that they do that, though. Like, that's how Calvin Ridley got busted. Like, you have all these reputable sites that, like, help you out. That's how the college baseball coaches got busted. It's like you have oh, this right? little – yeah, they have – I don't know what it's called, but they have, like, a commission that monitors any sort of, like, red flags, and then they kind of investigate it. I think it's it's awesome. Like, you should, that's why they should get it in all 50 states. Uh, 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line. What's your optimism for the Astros with regular season and opening day just around the corner? 713-780-3776. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
The Killer Bees are broadcasting live from inside the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbot Brewing Company. Now back to Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank. I am Branham. We are the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Oregon leading South Carolina, 83-71, 55 seconds left to play. So Blanker's dark horse. Uh, it looks like they're going to advance. Uh, they are going to advance. And 10 seed Nevada leading 7 seed Dayton, 51-39. Nine minutes left to play in the second half in that one. Boys at Carbach today, come visit us at Carbach Brewing, located 610 290 Interchange in the Spring Branch area. Uh, this spring, maybe not today, but this spring, the weather is going to be really nice and the perfect time to enjoy the beer garden, outdoor space. Head over to CarbachBrewing.com for upcoming events. That's Carbach Brewing. Head over there, see what they got going on. Carbach, always a, a great spot to hang out. Um, 6100, coming from a single dad raising two girls with no child support. I'm okay with him losing the bet money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, some people think differently. I, I, I'm i giving the money to the kids. No problem with it at all. Uh, 713 espn We have three, three matchups today in the Killer Bee Fight Club bracket in the Palillo region. Adam Clanton, Patrick Creighton, one of the matchups, the one that went out first. That's a close race, Blankers. It's tight. Adam, Adam's up 52 to 48 over Patrick Creighton. Closer than I thought it would be. Yeah, Much I kind of told you. I think I thought it would be. The I veil of the tape goes a long way. Pe- people are buying the scrappiness that uh, that Joel was selling there when he was uh, giving the positives there for Patrick Creighton in this fight. And then in the second matchup. Between Figgy Fig and Joe George, Figgy Fig has the early lead, 52% to 48%. So that one's going to be tight as well. And then uh, Del Olale and Clint Sterner just got uh, they just got out of the gates. They just tipped off just moments ago. Okay. Uh, but Clint Sterner has taken a commanding early lead. They started off on a on a very good run to start the game. Uh, it should be the should be the most lopsided one of the day, I would say. I would agree with that. Should be the most lopsided. We have three more. Three more matchups coming tomorrow in the Killer B Fight Club bracket. Of course, March Madness. Everybody loves the brackets, except for some. Uh, we'll have some more matchups coming up. All right, 713 780 ESPN HRMP listener line. What's your optimism for the Astros? Put it in percentages, 1 through 100. What is your optimism for the Astros this year? Well, my optimism is probably 97%. <laughs> I, I, I just. <laughs> why are you laughing? You know, I think I thought you went the exact percentage that the athletic gave, but it actually was one percent off. So never mind. I didn't even see it. I was just going based on what you said, and, and you I just feel it. like You're not looking at the rundown. And it shows you click the link. What are you talking about? No, I just opened it just now because I got to be ready for the segment, but I didn't read well, it. Been in the rundown <laughs> since two thirty. So okay, well maybe I didn't get to all of it. My bad. All I'm okay. I, I have total confidence in the Astros. I don't have total confidence like you that they're going to win by like eight, nine, ten games in the division, but they're going to be in the playoffs, and when they get to the playoffs, they're going to be even better. I believe that this offense is better than a year ago. I believe that the back of the bullpen is unbelievably good. I believe that we'll sort out the eight pitchers that we're going to deal with throughout the season to figure out the four best ones and have the other guys go to the bullpen. And I believe that, you know, with Yiner in the lineup every day, it's a huge bump uh, offensively. So I, I believe in this team. Yeah, I think they run away with the division. Uh, I'll go 98% on this. Um, the Athletic, they came out with their opening day optimism percentages for each each team around the league. They had the Astros actually six, actually seventh. Uh, behind, they have the Astros at 96%, seventh place behind the Phillies at 969 Behind the Rangers at 97%, which I don't mm. see that. Uh, number yeah. three, they have Arizona at 97.3. Atlanta, 98.5. I love Arizona. I love Atlanta. And then they have Baltimore at 98.7. A little surprised they have Baltimore over Atlanta here. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, I would think that the ultimate confidence level would be a, a Braves team that seems to keep loading up from what they already had, which was more than enough. Arizona's got to still prove it with pitching. Yeah, they made a, a couple of moves to try and bolster the offense. I thought they had a like a Cinderella-type run last year. I'm not sold on them being a, a complete team, 
I thought the Dodgers might be in it, but the Dodgers pitching, I guess, is a big question mark. Uh, you know what I'm hearing in this list with some of these teams being named, like Arizona, Baltimore, Texas. These are a lot of teams that got to this level of playing really, really good playoff caliber baseball really recently. So maybe that's part of it. Whereas Braves fans, hey, we've been there, we've done that, we're in the, we're in the dance, we're going far every single year. So I think just sheer optimism because of the recency bias of these teams getting good just like this year or the year before, that might have boosted their numbers up a little bit. They're all still living in the moment of the team just recently getting to this caliber level of play. I can see that. 713-780-ESPN Ocho, who's always very optimistic. Uh, I'm rather (laughs) meh about the Astros because they didn't add quality bats. Their starting pitching is questionable at best, and they're hoping for production from a bunch of what-if scenarios. I think their offense is better, though. Um, I would point to the injuries, and you can't predict injury, but if Altuve's healthier, I think he will be. If Jordan's healthier, eh, eh, I'm not too confident about that. But I think where the biggest upgrade comes is the catcher spot. Like, you improve from Maldi to Yiner. Now, does that hurt you defensively some would say no does that hurt you from a game calling point of view that's another hot conversation but from an offensive only point of view the biggest upgrade is Yiner over Martin Maldonado no doubt no doubt that's where I was thinking too like you're almost adding him because of the fact that Dusty refused to play him all the time and now adding him and uh, uh, subtracting the basically non-factor bat that Maldi was the biggest concern you have is Jake in center field he's had an unbelievable spring but even if Jake doesn't work out there's options to where if Ocho says bats plural I'm what you could point at center field but other than that I mean, yeah, you could have added one extra bat in the outfield somewhere that was a versatile bat maybe. But other than that, it's not bats plural. I don't think that they were ever looking to add more than one. If we say that you're on those like a wash in terms of games played, I still think they've upgraded offensively in the outfield. And you might be like, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? Michael Brantley played like in eight games last year. So the yeah. outfield is pretty much the same. And then Corey Jolks, go Cougs, he got tons of starts last year. So, like, that's if you upgrade over the starts that he gave you last year with Myers being in the lineup more consistently, with Chaz being in the lineup more consistently, then your outfield of your outfield offensive production is actually going to improve as well. See, and I think that maybe Ocho might be looking at it that, you know, Chaz was that once in a, in a career year last year and he doesn't expect him to do the same. I yeah. think Chaz is a good, good major league player. And if Chaz has, you know, e- even if he doesn't have all the same numbers, as long as he has decent numbers and he's complemented by better players where we talked about, catcher for sure, upgrade there, you have versatility with the other outfield positions, that, Ch- that that's just fine for this offense as a, in total to be better than it was a year ago. Yeah, I guess the Chaz, what you think of his performance could swing yep. things. Like if you think of Chaz you, right? last year had a career year. Yeah, Are you going to get I mean, first half of Brayu or la- end of the season of Brayu? Yeah, that, that would be a swing factor too. Um, yeah, because I, I think maybe it's me being an Astro homer, but I think that Abreu is going to be better just because he finished I do better. Because he finished better and maybe they give him more off days, which I think helped him a bit. Now, I think it's fair to bring up Chaz, you know, last year as a potential career high. But, you know, hopefully Uh he can produce the same numbers because he's playing every day. Um, I think the other thing with Abreu, too, is is what Michael Bourne told us when he was joining us one of the times he joined us during the season, which is that first year in a new city on a new team is a massive adjustment, and it takes time. Some guys do it, you know, faster than others, but a lot of times that can play a big factor in a guy getting comfortable. I think at the end of the year you saw a guy that finally felt comfortable both, you know, in his skin in Houston in a different uniform and all those things. But that's why I believe Abreu is going to have a better year than he had in total than a year ago. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's kind of soft. I think that it could be true. I think it can be true. I think we've seen it be true. I think it's soft though. Like if you're allowing that to impact you that, like in that big a fashion, I, I think it's pretty soft. Uh, but it's also Jeremy. He's, he's pressing. He's pressing right because yeah, it's I think it's, it's a, a little soft. I think it's. But a he's soft. trying to. We know that some guys look. We look look no further than your pitching staff to realize guys get in their own head. And if you, you know, were in one place doing one thing really well for a long period of time and suddenly you, you get into a new city where a lot of people you know are questioning the contract, you're pressing, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to impress, and you fail because of the fact that you're putting too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, I, I believe it to be true. I think it can absolutely happen. I'm not, I'm not disputing that it, that it doesn't happen. I, I'm saying it's soft. I, I think it's soft. Uh, 0754, my optimism will rise if they can hit. Uh, eight four three seven. Which team in the division do y'all have is the closest to the Astros? I, for me, it's the Rangers. Uh, do you have the Rangers or the Mariners? Yeah, just as much as I, I believe the Mariners can can actually 
compete for a playoff spot, and I think they'll make the the, run, the division closer. I, I think it, it's the Rangers that are going to be their main competition because that offense isn't going anywhere, no matter what their pitching is. Uh, and they signed Lorenzen today. But yeah. uh, the big thing for me is that was the best offense in baseball for most of the year last year, and, and it doesn't seem like they, they've lost anything. They added some young bats that can hit so from their system. So I think that the Rangers' offense is going to carry them. Yeah, I love their offense. I just think their pitching's meh. Uh, six nine two seven at Altuve. He's healthy to start the season. He missed tons of games last year. Um, total Arlington. Uh, my confidence level: Rangers ninety nine point nine percent. Astros seventy. Thanks for chiming Shocker. in. Total Arlington yeah. uh, nine two two nine. Blankers, you're my favorite host on the station. I've been a lifelong Rangers fan, but I still love the show. I'll put a wager that the Rangers win the division and outscore the entire Major League Baseball and run scored. A bottle of your favorite beverage? Question mark. Let me think about that one. Um, I mean, look, I'm not disputing their offense, and, and I'm not disputing. I don't know why he wouldn't make a bet with you, too, because you said they're going to win it by well, he, 10 he, you're, games. You're his favorite. That's why. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to get you in on this. I mean, the same way we fleece Joe George on the Bears winning the division. Um, I, I don't like making bets with listeners anymore because the bets that I that's win That's right. They don't the pay up. They don't it's tough to me. track them the down. The bets I lose against listeners, I do pay. So I don't like my return on investment here. I've won more that's bets fair. than I've lost, and I'm still losing a lot. Why? Because there's cheaters out there that don't pay me when they lose their bets. So I might have retired for making bets. Eh, I'm not going to retire, but I'm going to have to know the guy a little bit. Like, he said Rangers win by 10 games? No, he didn't say by 10. He said that the Rangers He just said win they the would division, win the division and, and league, league the all of baseball and run, run baseball. scored. Oh, okay. See me in a week yeah. or before the season starts. We'll talk. Yeah, about a week, right? You see what a spot I did with the lineup today? He, hit, he used Pena in the nine spot, Myers in the eight spot. Yeah. I love that. And he also used Tucker three, Bregman four, and he said he might do that in the regular I season because he doesn't mind the lefties, lefties back to back, and he doesn't mind. Uh, he kind of likes Bregman in the cleanup spot because he's really good with runners in scoring position. We might be done with the feng shui. Um, the, the, are, are you a, a regular season believer now in Jake? Am I? Yeah, because that, that surprised me that Jake's in the eight and Pena's down in the nine, but maybe Pena relaxes. He is that second leadoff hitter, um, and, 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 and it's good for both guys. I just expected Jake to be your nine hitter. Well, I mean, I've, I've been more Jake than, you know, us. Right, you have right? been, but I'm just saying, do you believe that's going to translate to him doing those? I mean, to, to being me, a good to hitter. Pena, to me, Pena batting in the ninth spot is really not dependent on Myers, though. Like, you, you want Myers to be able to hold his own. But the reason that I like Pena in the ninth spot so he gets the protection of Altuve and Jordan. Like yeah, the Pena second leadoff. shined in the, in the two-hole. Why? Because he had Jordan and Tucker hitting behind him. So I want to see if that translates to him batting ninth. Because, you know, ninth and second aren't the same, but Pena's offensive numbers aren't good enough for him to be batting second. They should be batting eighth or ninth, bottom of the order. And then if he gets that protection from Altuve and Jordan, uh, maybe maybe he can put up the numbers he put up in the two spot. Uh, so that's why I want Pena to bat ninth. It's not because I think Myers is a better offensive player than Pena. Yeah, I'm curious if that's just he's experimenting right now or if that's going to be a more consistent thing. I just like the fact that Joe is open to a lot of different things, and we're going to see more cre maybe creativity isn't the right word, but just an open-mindedness to try new things and not be kind of set in your ways a little bit more like Dusty was. I think that excites me with the way he's going to do the lineup. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, too. 8437, I would argue that Houston's one of the easiest cities to adjust to. I would understand maybe a Hispanic player moving to the Colorado Rockies, not feeling like they fit in as much in the city. That's weird. Uh, but Abreu oh moving boy. to a city that is the most diverse in America and a huge Hispanic scene. I can't imagine it takes even a year. I don't like that word. I'm not a big fan of that word, Hispanic. Uh, 4958, tell that listener I'll take that bet. Okay, we're not going to hold things in escrow yeah, we're not. so <laughs> listeners can make bets with other listeners. <laughs> we're playing middleman here. <laughs> Would you see what happened with Otani and his interpreter today? Exactly. Like, avoiding all of this. Uh, maybe I'll uh, – I'm not going to text you his number. Yeah, I, I, we're not going to play middleman there. Sorry, Yeah, dude. don't facilitate. I don't want to lose you to an arrest warrant or something with, with bets being paid. And you – I don't know if you're legal bet, uh, to put a bets together or not. 9229, this is the guy that offered the bet. He said, I'm good friends with PC. Inky my bets. I don't know what inky my bets mean. I'm resident Titans Rangers fan. All right, all right, whatever. Uh, 713780 ESPN. Let's get to our Astros stat predictions. Who's going to lead the Astros in batting average? Who's going to lead the Astros in on-base percentage? 713-780-3776. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. It's time, basketball bettors. It's March Mania. And Branham here to tell you all about BetUS.com. 
I endorse one sportsbook and casino, and that's BetUS.com. They've been driving to the basket for over 30 years. This year, BetUS has an epic three-pointer, a 125% sign-up bonus in your first three deposits. That's right, the industry's craziest 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Not your, only your first, not only your top two, all three of your first three, plus 10% gambler's insurance, and there's even more. BetUS accepts crypto and is offering a massive 200% crypto sign-up bonus. Gambler's insurance and crypto, you don't see that anywhere. March Mania basketball can even get more exciting with their live in-game betting. It's also a blast to check out their casino after the game, a little blackjack, a little craps, where you get a 250% sign-up bonus and a 250% casino bonus. Get started by visiting BetUS.com or give them a call at 1-800-MYBETUS to learn all about their bonuses and special offers. BetUS, where the game begins. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Carbach Brewing Company. Here's the Killer Bees, Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. The boys indeed at Carbach Brewing. Join us in the pub daily for lunch, dinner, and brunch on Sunday. Current pub specials, enjoy a burger and a Bach, plus a free glass for just $20. They got started yesterday, runs through April 10th. In celebration of Bach Day, we'll also be running $4 box all month long. That's a good deal. Check out our fun, F-U-N, series brews, only available in the pub and beer garden. He's blank. I'm Branham. We are the Bees on ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. Dayton trying to make a game of this, Blankers. 10 seed Nevada leading 7 seed Dayton 56 to 50. It's been a double. I got game Dayton. I hope they do. The Flyers had a heck of a yeah. season. 
BMAC and I are on opposite sides of this one. He's got he's got Nevada. Yeah, this I got one Nevada. Of those coin flips. This is one of those coin flip games, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean it's a ten seven matchup, obviously. Yeah, but I'm talking about straight have, odds. Yeah. Oh straight odds, yeah, that too. Yeah, it was definitely Nevada was definitely a live dog if you could even call them a dog at this matchup. So uh, they they had a they were they were carrying about a ten point lead most of the game, but like you said, you know things change in the, in the final few minutes. Always get a kick out of uh, like a like a lower seed being the favorite, and then they win, and everybody calls it an upset. Like Oregon, <laughs> right? Oregon right. was like that. I was thinking Oregon about that when you or, said Oregon's the, the Oregon favorite, game. right? Yeah, because most people just look at the seeds for the tournament and yeah. don't look at the spreads, and then they buy into the fact that oh, that's a huge upset, was it? You know, it's a good example of my my argument of resume versus like actual talent. You know what I mean? Because like, why? Do, where do you you get seated on the seed line that your resume's at? But then you play the game and you win based on like how good you are. Um, yeah. And that's why you see some lower seeds that are, that are favorite. Dayton just hit a three. 56-53, Nevada in yes. front. Three thirty-five to go in the second. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, update you as we go. Who's going to lead the Astros in batting average this year? Uh, Brian goes first today. I'm second. Blankers is third. So, Brian, who's going to be the Astros leader in batting average this season? Yeah, this one is as easy for me as picking uh, home runs was in our in the first stat that we picked. I'm going Jose Altuve. Only one guy on this team has multiple batting titles. He's been uh, at 300 or better two years in a row. So I will go with Jose Altuve to lead the Astros in batting average. Led the okay. Astros last year in batting average. Uh, 311, 311, yep. Led it by a decent amount. Led it by 18 points. Yeah, he was the only the, guy over 300 last year for the Astros. Yeah. The guy I'm going to pick is a guy that I think is capable of winning a triple crown, and it's hard for me to not pick this guy if we're talking about an offensive stat. So I'll go I'll go with Jordan Alvarez. I think Jordan Alvarez is capable capable of hitting 300. Uh, I think he's clearly the, the number two guy to pick here as your batting average leader behind Jose Altuve. So I'll go with the chalk. I'll go with Jordan Alvarez to lead the Astros in batting. We, and just so our listeners know, we can't pick the same guy. Once Brian picks right. Altuve, I can't pick Jose Altuve. So he's off the board. So I'll go with Jordan Alvarez. I, I'm going with Kyle Tucker. I think Kyle Tucker is a guy that's obviously got a contract on his mind that it, you know shows that he's capable of, of being in an MVP-type conversation. Uh, and I just believe that with you guys taking those guys off the board, to me, it was Tucker or Bregman, and to me, that's a Tucker conversation. Yeah, I would have definitely taken Tucker over Bregman. Yeah. Now, Tucker still has another year left on the deal on his, on his club control. Uh, so he's not, you know, in a contract year. Not that it would change your, your vote at all. Dayton just hit another right. three. They're tied at 56. Two and a half left to play. So that game is uh, is going down no, we'll to the pack. wire after Nevada no, led by we'll double figures for a majority <laughs> of that game. All right, another. right, let's do on-base percentage now. Uh, I have first. Blank has second. Brian has third. On base percentage, I'm going to stick with my guns. I'm going to go with the offensive dude. I'm going to go with Jordan Alvarez to lead the Astros in on base percentage. It makes sense. I'm going to stick with Kyle Tucker. I think yeah, that I don't hate it. Kyle Tucker's a guy that I believe is going to have a really good season, and I, I just think that you know he's a guy that I, I will put my money on. Are you yeah, sucking on I a Jolly we're... Rancher? No, Ice Cube. <laughs> ice Cube, yeah. I had a bit of uh, the, the, the pretzel here that had a He's... lot of seeds and spice on. One I was allergic to and didn't know it, so my Are throat's a little. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a little, a little what, uh, what peel back of the curtain. To? A peel back Poppy of the seeds? curtain. Uh, Joel has oh. been. Joel had a like an everything bagel pretzel, and ever since he had that bagel, it's that pretzel, he, he's been struggling yeah. ever since. So it's, How long it's been ago? a. Uh, it's been about an hour, oh, right? 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah. You yeah, yeah. 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 hit it really well. It's the first time I've noticed. Try it. I'm trying my yeah. best. Yeah, yeah, you, you, really you don't well. have the visual that well, I have. Cat's but. out of the bag now. <laughs> so <laughs> what happened? Struggling. Are, you, are, you swell, are you swelling up or anything? My throat, yeah. like Not like oh a hive gosh. type situation, but yeah. Yep. Do we need to give you an EpiPen? No, it's not if that bad yet. If you're in the area, <laughs> I don't like that he said yet. Wait till I drive home. Change of six ten two ninety Spring Branch yeah. area. If you're around with an EpiPen that you can deliver to Blank, so he does not have to be hospitalized, please do that now. It's an emergency. All right, probably, yeah, I'll be texting you when I'm on the way home. <laughs> Dang, I didn't realize all that was happening. You hit it well. Well yep. done. I applaud Thank that. You. you and Glenn Davis playing hurt. All right, so I want Jordan on base percentage as we move on now. <laughs> Tucker second, and now Brian, you got on base percentage. After yeah, we're all going to take we're all going to take the same guys then <laughs> that we did for batting average because I'm going to take Jose Altuve. I mean, certainly if, if if you think Jose Altuve is going to lead the team in batting average, he's got a good chance to be near the yeah. top and on base percentage. And he was second on the team last year behind only Jordan, so I will take Jose Altuve for on base. There you go. I think one one guy who has a chance that we didn't pick was Bregman. 
Yeah, like Bregman's yeah, yeah, it feels, I agree. It feels weird that it's, I mean, on base percentage is Bregman's specialty and none of us took him, but I just, you know, the batting averages for the other three guys are going to be higher and it gives them an advantage. I'm just a little worried about this 23 extra pounds and yeah, this, that too. this boomer bust, maybe a more boomer bust Especially mentality. Especially if he's starting to swing try, or trying to swing for the yeah, fifth a mean. little more to, in a contract year, maybe that lowers his uh, on base percentage yeah, I was concerned as he starts that. to chase more pitches. For sure. If Bregman hits fourth, like a spot is kind of hinted at 59 58 Dayton by the way minute 35 to play Dayton ball they're on a 20 to 2 run in the last 540 courtesy of don't love that take, Jamie you want to take us home just give us a play-by-play <laughs> well that's illegal I can't do that um oh if Bregman hits fourth does that hurt or help his on base percentage I, I actually I think it hurts because I think he's going to be that way swinging, too. swinging from yeah. his heels a little bit more he's trying to drive in yes. runs from that spot yeah I think that would hurt I think uh, what would help is on base percentage is, and it's something that we've talked about. I think Jeremy was the first one to bring this up, but hitting him leadoff, I think that would be yeah, a place Jeremy where his on-base yeah. percentage would thrive. Maybe even hitting second would be the same way. But if you hit him fourth and he's got people on in front, he's trying to drive him in, I think that hurts his on-base a little bit. I'm actually the opposite. Uh, I think that the drop-off, like no one hitting behind him, okay, well, a pitcher's not going to be worried about walking Alex Bregman. It depends on the situation, of course. But who are you scared of Even if you honor Diaz? Even if Diaz yeah, is behind? Yeah, I don't think so. I think they rather face Yiner than Bregman, depending on the situation okay. or if it's Chaz. Right. I think the drop-off between the top four hitters and the fifth hitter, I don't think pitchers are going to – like, if, if Yiner or Chaz is hitting behind Bregman versus Kyle Tucker, if you're a pitcher, which one are you scared of the least? Yiner and Chaz versus Tucker. That, so if that there's not one of those guys batting behind him, I think the pitcher is going to be a little bit more careful and not be as scared to walk Bregman as opposed to if he was hitting in front of either T- Tucker, Jordan, Altuve, whatever. Doesn't this really revert back to our Abreu conversation, too? Because if it's Abreu of the end of the season, now that is a guy that you have to worry about because he looked like his old self. If it's the Abreu that was a disappointment, then you're absolutely right. Then I'm going to pitch around Bregman, take my chances with Abreu or a Yiner that, you know, we'll see how he hits when he's playing every day. Sure. But I, I don't think it changes, though. Like, if, if Abreu's better, that's great. That means Bray, Abreu this year is you know, you're a little bit more worried to pitch to him versus Abreu last year. But if Abreu's like a better version of himself, would you rather pitch to a better version of Abreu or Kyle Tucker? No, but aren't you saying Bregman? Or it, what? didn't you say it was coming down to either Bregman or who's behind him and it would be Abreu behind him? Sure. If you pitch around but if Bregman. It's like that's, that's a Bregman hitting in the cleanup spot. If Bregman's hitting in the cleanup spot, I think pitchers aren't going to be worried about walking him if a better version of Brian uh, Jose Abreu is behind him versus if he's hitting third and you have Kyle Tucker coming up. Oh, that's him. true. You yeah, would get, yeah, you would get better pitches in the three-hole than the four-hole. And, and yeah, Bregman's I was just not going to be if, a guy who stayed, chases. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, if he stays in the cleanup and, and, and you've got Abreu hitting – like he did at the end of the year behind you, there's still a, a, a good bit of concern because maybe the pop's not there like it used to be. But, you know, at the end of the season, he had some pop, and he was he was back, you know, putting the ball, like hitting through the holes, putting the ball sure. in play and right. getting RBIs. Right, but that's the conversation of a this year Abreu versus a last year Abreu, where the conversation should be a this year Abreu versus a Kyle Tucker, which I'm still yeah. taking no, a Kyle you're Tucker. Right. Like, I mean, you, you pitch, should. like – yeah, I mean, it would be great to have that better version of Abreu, but you're still going to be more careful with a Kyle Tucker oh. than, a, than a Jose Abreu. Especially simply because, Abreu. yeah, also simply because of the fact that the power numbers are going to be there for Tucker and you're not worried about him, as opposed to a guy. You, you'll just – almost everything you get from, like, an HR perspective from Abreu is, is like, ice, you don't expect it. You're, it's icing on the cake. 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. Uh, Dayton just got a big steal against Nevada. Dayton leads by one, 15 seconds to play. They're going to the free throw line, so still coming down to the wire uh, there. When we return, car wreck of the day. What are we nominating for today's car wreck of the day? 713-780-3776. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. My colleague, go Kooks, U of H class of 1990. He's been protecting the interest of businesses for nearly 25 years. HRP provides comprehensive human Your capital management are looking services, to be a good including spot. HR compliance, benefits administration, and payroll. HRP will also work with you to customize a plan for whatever you need. There's nothing cookie cutter about 
HRMP. If you need a little help, a lot of help, anything in between, HRMP will create a plan for what you and your business needs. Also, their customer service, well, it's second to none. You'll never talk to a stranger on the other side of the line. You'll be calling someone that's familiar with you, familiar with your company. I can speak to that customer service. We use HRMP at Gal, of course. Anytime I have a question, I always get a quick response, very easy to understand, whether it's by phone, whether it's via email. Let HRMP take on the demands of human resources and eliminate your HR burden so you can get back to growing your business. Give them a call at 281-880-6525 and let HRMP customize a plan for you. That's 281-880-6525 or check them out at hrp.net. That's hrp.net. How about a car wreck of the day being Nevada for blowing a double-digit lead and losing to Dayton 62-60. to Flyers moving on. Take that, (laughs) BMAC. Boom. He's he's blank on Brandon. Boys at Carbach. Second worst thing to ever happen in Nevada. They treat you all right at Carbach today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the food's food's been – other than Joel maybe having his throat swollen shut, the the food's been great. Man, Man food's it. great. This yeah. place is awesome. Uh, 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 both Joe and Paul had a uh, steak taco. They said it was one of the best Ooh. steak tacos they've ever had. Oh, I'm so jealous. And uh, I had a, uh, a fried chicken Korean rice bowl that was very, very good. Uh, the gentleman oh, really? in front of us just got uh, uh, fish and chips. 
and the fish Ooh. looks really, really good. Yeah, because the the beer the beer batters yep. with the Carbach uh, beer. So yeah, that's definitely something I'd want to try out. Is he dipping it in the malt uh, vinegar? I, I can't, can't really tell. see. I'm getting shouldered out of the side of the plate, but the uh, big pieces of fish look girth? really flake, really good. <laughs> More <laughs> girth talk. Is that what we yeah. need to close the show? He may be a professional eater. I don't know. Thanks to Carbach for feeding for uh, feeding my friends well. Great food. Great beer. Looking forward to uh, to being out there uh, next time that we're out at Carbach. Uh, the boys will be out at Nick's place tomorrow. So uh, yep. going from one we really good place well to again. another really good place. Yes, we will. <laughs> well, again, no doubt about it. All right, let's get to our car wreck of the day. What are you nominating for car wreck of the day? 713-780-3776. Blankers, why don't you do the honor? Well, I know there's plenty of obvious ones that we can choose from. I'm not – because as you have said, and we are a uh, – we do not hold back. Everybody's eligible. I'm nominating my wife. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I'm nominating my wife because this morning, in the middle of the lightning, the thunder, the rain, the horrible weather, I went out and braved the elements, walked all four of our big dogs, came back in. She basically said good morning. Didn't say a whole lot more than that. I just, you know, kept going about all the other things I had to do and then happened to turn the TV on when she came on the news and was doing the news in the noon hour, and she goes, oh, major props to my husband. I was so happy today. He braved the storm and the elements, and he went out and walked all four dogs. Shout out to my husband. Like, so I can't get a shout out in the kitchen, <laughs> but you can go on TV and act like a hero because you can shout me out. Come on now. You know what I'm kind of learning? I, I, I think no. your love language is uh, words of affirmation. I think that I might be your wife, and I think you might be my wife. <laughs> well, you're my work wife. That's different. Yeah. I mean, I just meant from like a love language perspective. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna love language with you, so that's fine. <laughs> I think Lisa and I have like uh, the same love language, where you need like I'm not a big words for I'm not a words of affirmation kind of guy. I don't need affirmating words. I like good actions and stuff like that, but I don't need the compliments. But I'm learning that you are, which is good. I think it's gonna help our relationship because I know what you need to thrive. Okay, we'll yeah. see. <laughs> this is uh, not that I'm going to do it, but I <laughs> right exactly <laughs> uh, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I'm sure you guys mentioned the interpreter yesterday, so I don't need to go yep. with the interpreter oh, yeah. today. I'll go with Yoshinobu Yamamoto instead. Uh, his first outing in the bigs, first outing with the Los Angeles not Dodgers good. today. It was not good. 43 pitches, 23 strikes, gave up four runs on four hits, walked the guy over an inning of work. Now, I did punch out two guys. They gave up five runs and one inning of work. His ERA, 45. That's going to be a tough one to bring down. No, I mean, yeah, that's sure not return fine. on investment early on. No, not great. You know, you had to bring in the interpreter who has brought on all this scandal, whether it was him or not, and then you had to bring in Yamamoto as friend for Shohei Otani. I hope he's a bust. I hope he's not very good, just because I don't like the Dodgers. I, I'm, I like Yamamoto. I, I don't know anything about him. I just don't like the Dodgers. So I hope he's a big bust. I'm with you on that. Uh, be back. What you got? So I, I'm sure you, I mean, you guys have obviously heard the story about the Long Beach team, where they they, they fired their coach and oh, then he yeah. went on to win the conference tournament to make the NCAA tournament. Well, now their AD who fired said coach uh, and then saw that team make it to the NCAA tournament because they won their conference tournament is trying to actually take credit for it. So there's a quote uh, from the Associated Press. Uh, the, the Long Beach AD says as follows, my belief and hope is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired, and that's what they did, Bobby Smitherin told the Associated Press on Thursday, a few hours before Long Beach tipped off against Arizona. The quote continues, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it worked. He is trying, yes, to, take, he is. He is trying to take credit for firing his coach, and that being the inspiring move. To get the and long he's beach standing team. by it too. Dan Monson, yes. the coach, oh my who was God. 500 in conference, won 20 games, and then he comes out and goes, "But I'm looking for the consistency of doing this kind of thing every year. That's Ugh. why he came to me and said it would be better if we moved in another direction. Come on, man. Well, I don't think he's going to find a better coach. Is he wrong? Is he wrong? Is he wrong? What to want that? How do you know he's not that no, guy? I'm saying, I'm saying, is he wrong that he didn't play a part of this? Like, he well, fired how, the guy, and then what happened he... since the firing? They won the conference <laughs> tournament. They played in the NCAA tournament. He's not wrong. He's, I mean, he's not wrong. They played I, better I, basketball I, not, since he, he did he's this. Not, he's not on car wreck because he's wrong, although it would be impossible to prove that he's right. He's on car wreck because he's trying to take credit for something they didn't do. Yeah, he had nothing to I do mean, with. all he's saying is that it worked. 
He said he's not trying to pat himself on the back. He's yeah, but that's what people say while they pat themselves on the back and, and break but. their own back while doing so. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's not that's, wrong. That's like people saying with all due respect right before they insult you. It's like Respectfully. You, you, you're, trying to, you, you're trying to take credit when you say not to pat myself on the back. Who was the comedian that said as long as you say bless, your, bless his heart at the end, you could say whatever about right. somebody? I don't was remember, Jim? but yeah, same, it same rule implies. Jeff Foxworthy? It might have been Foxworthy. Or it might uh, have no, been no, no, friends. it wasn't Jeff Foxworthy, but it was Ingvold? someone else on the right? Southern Tour. Oh. I, don't, I can't remember the name off the top is of my Jim head. Is Jim Ingvold the name that – who is Jim Ingvold? Why am I oh, thinking it was Jim Bill, Ingvold? Oh, it was Bill Ingvold. Oh, it was Bill Ingvold. That, yeah, yeah well, I guess Bill that's why I'm Bill, thinking it. Yeah, it's Bill Ingvold. One more, James Harden for closing out on his teammate Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> I saw that, and, and, and Leonard missed the shot, which was brutal. Good, Best defense he's ever played, that James Harden. It's quite possibly true. So funny. Who's winning? Um, I'm not giving it to your wife. I'm going to go Yamamoto. That's fair. I'm fine with that. Yeah, because I hate the Screw Dodgers. Screw the Dodgers. Too, yeah. Congratulations, Yonosubu Yamamoto. You're our car wreck of the day. All right, it's going to do it for us. Thanks for Carbach for having the station out. Thanks to Abigail for doing all the hard work. Brian, on-site engineering. He's blank. I'm Brandon. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Houston. Game on with Jerome Solomon. Barry Laminac comes up next on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Hey, welcome in game on to ESPN 97.5. No Jerome today. Jerome is on location covering U of H basketball for the Houston Chronicle. What the hell was that? That was crazy. 
Uh, so it's me, you flying solo, your boy Barry Labanac, one half of Game On. Uh, plenty to discuss today, and um, I guess we start with tourney talk. Now, look, we're gonna cover some stuff. We're gonna get to the updates. We already have some upsets. Um, you know, somebody's brackets are probably already busted. I'll tell you right now, I went straight chalk. I don't care. All right, I'm not a big college basketball guy. For those of you that know me, you know I don't sit down and watch college basketball all year. I wait until today. This is this is when I sit down and watch college basketball. It's kind of like hockey. I wait until the playoffs, and then I sit down and watch hockey. And then that's when I pretend like I'm a poser. That's when I pretend like I love hockey. And Now, what I don't do is act like I know a lot about it. Now, you know, I'll warn you. I will warn you guys out there in radio land listening. And I kind of do this as a public service announcement every year. You got to be careful. There's a lot of folks out there that will, uh, around this time of year, pretend like that they know a lot about college basketball. And they don't. Uh, They'll pretend like they've been following it all year that they've been watching games all year and and I'm not I'm not naming any names I'm not pointing out anybody in particular on this station or any others I'm just telling you be careful there's a lot of frauds fakes and phonies when it comes to college bas- uh, basketball experts and you can't see me because it's radio but I'm making old man air quotes so you got to be careful because these cats will Wow, yeah, I was watching. And all they're doing, all they're doing, they're reading other people's stuff. They're listening to other people that actually know college basketball and just regurgitating the garbage that they say. (laughs) And uh, by the way, if you want to listen to the show or watch, I guess, well, you're not really watching, but you can listen on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash ESPN 97.5. You can chat with the show there. You can also Tweet at me at Barry is funny on Twitter, or you can follow my show account at Barry on deck as well. Either one of those. Just make sure you spell it D-E-C-K. That that E is like critical. That is a super important E there. OK, so D-E-C-K. But uh, yeah, you can uh, hop on the Twitch chat and chat with me and no be handed. I'm not talking about A.J. Hoffman. If there's one cat that I know that actually does know college basketball, it is former ESPN 97.5 uh, host, A.J. Hoffman. He's like the one dude that I know. He's actually kind of, it's kind of sad, actually. He watches college basketball all year. It's, I mean, he's kind of a loser in that regard. He'd, he'd sit there and watch some of the weirdest, dumbest games, like, like games that nobody would watch. Like, like he would watch like Florida A and M play St. Mary's. Well, actually, St. Mary's is pretty good. He'd watch Florida A and M play Grand Canyon at like one a.m. Like no one's doing that. But the rest of these yahoos and knuckleheads on air, yeah, they'll pretend like they know. Don't let them fool you, okay, guys. And also, don't listen to me when the hockey playoffs start. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, updates on the tournament, though. There are some uh, some games going on. Texas and, uh, let's see, Texas, Colorado State playing right now. By the way, can I, can I, can I just, okay. Why is the phone going off? <laughs> okay, I just got a text from Joel Blake. Joel, why don't you hop on the chat instead of texting me with, with the phone going off like a, a super unprofessional here. Yeah, Joe Blank knows college basketball too. Okay, this is not a personal attack on anybody. Why is my phone going crazy here? Everyone takes it personal. It was just a general statement. I don't need to be getting all these texts and messages. It's just a general blanket statement that I make every year at this time. Um, I, I do have a couple things that I want to complain about. Uh, well, you threw me off, Joel, now with the text. I had a point I was going to make. Then you just went and screwed it all up. Oh, yeah. So, uh, today, 
I didn't normally. I normally I do a show for those of you that know know, but for those of you that maybe don't, you're driving around the city of Houston. You have no idea who I am. That's cool. Uh, I do a show uh, on Twitch uh, Monday through Thursday. 2 to 5 p.m. It's called Barry on Deck, and it's sports, it's entertainment, it's tomfoolery. It's just a lot of fun. I just try to bring a little entertainment to some sports talk, and it might be a little cussing, might be a little drinking, but we have a good time. And uh, one of the things that, um, that, that, that I didn't do was a show today because I was like, look, this is like a national holiday, right? This is, this is one of the bigger sports days of the year. People wait, can't wait for the tournament to start a lot of people take off work and they go set up at their favorite drinking hole and they 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 get their favorite table and they just camp out all day and just watch college basketball until they pass out or throw up on themselves or both and then they uber home and call it a night right and you know for some people that's just a tuesday for some people that's opening day of march madness I chose not to do a show today because I'm like, ain't nobody going to be listening to my dumb ass. Everybody's going to be at the bars or wherever watching March Madness. I get it. That's fine. So I was like, cool. I'll stay home. I won't do a show. And I, too, will watch a lot of college basketball. No, I won't. Huh. No, I won't. You know why I won't? Because I have Fubo. And I just want to go on record as saying... Um, added to the list of a lot of things that I hate, and that's a long list. But you can go ahead and add Fubo to the list of the things that I hate, because if you have Fubo, then you know uh, you can't watch any basketball unless it's on CBS. You don't get Turner, you don't get TBS, you don't get TNT, you don't get True TV, you don't get False TV, you don't get anything but CBS games, which means I watched one game today, one game. One game. That's it. That's a Travis Sham mockery. Fubo, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I tweeted it out and I said as much. I I cannot wait. I I just, and this happens all the time, but I just absolutely cannot wait until Space, Space City Sports Network goes a la carte. I can't, I just feel it's going to come at some point. Right, I feel the Astros and the Rockets are going to get together and they're going to do the right thing. They're going to go Spike Lee for the city. And they're just going to say, hey, you know what? You could just buy uh, you could buy our network a la carte. You could just you know, pay nine, ten bucks, whatever. And all year you can stream to your phone or wherever. And you don't even have to have another platform to stream on. You could just do it by itself. And then I can cancel Fubo and live like a regular, normal, adult human being person. I'm so sick of it. Fubo was great at first, and it, yeah, they have local sports, and yeah, I can watch Astros and Rockets, but boy, it's just, one, it's expensive, and two, I can't watch NBA TV. I can't watch, you know, the March Madness. I can't watch some baseball when it's on TBS. It's maddening. Um, and this is one of the downfalls of cutting the cord and going to Fubo. And of course, UT, uh, YouTube TV is great, but it doesn't have, uh, local sports. It doesn't have rockets and Astros. It doesn't have space city sports net. So all of them have their trade-offs, but boy, once space city sports net goes a la carte, it's on your boy is going to be living high on the hog. So I can't wait for that. So. Uh, I have watched all of one game, and it was uh, North Carolina putting an absolute whooping on uh, Wagner, 90 to 62. wasn't even close. Uh, Michigan with not really an upset. A nine beating an eight is not an upset. Michigan State beat Mississippi State 69 <laughs> to 51. Uh, so they'll face North Carolina up next. Uh, also in the West Bracket, Arizona beat Long Beach State 85-65. Dayton beat Nevada 63-60. to uh, Over in the Midwest, Oregon upset South Carolina 87-73. That's 11 beating a 6. We see that a lot in the tourney. Um, they always tell you when you're filling out your brackets because, you know, you don't know what you're doing. But they'll always tell you, take an 11. Find an 11 that you feel good about. Do a little research, but... You should always take at least one 11 seed 
uh, and in the first round as an upset. So uh, we have one 11 seed that advanced, and that was Oregon beating South Carolina 87-73, and Creighton beat Akron 77-60. Uh, to 60. Right now, Texas is up 9-8 over Colorado State. Uh, no games in the South region. Over in the East, hey, speaking of 11 seeds, uh, Duquesne beat BYU 71-67, and uh, Illinois beat Moorhead State 85 to. 69. <laughs> All right. So there's your uh, tournament updates. And uh, let's see, J Bear, or use TNT TBS app with someone else's dish password. Sir, J Bear, that is illegal. And I do not do illegal things, my friend. That is not okay. That is uncalled for. And I would not do those things. Okay. Uh, what's up to uh, Dick Willie in the chat? He said, Preach, Barry. Bleep all those people who take jokes the wrong way. Okay. I feel like that was a personal attack in some way. That was a little, little backhanded compliment there. Um, I saw the game listed on there last night. Oh, well, yeah. I, you know what? I have, like, I thought cutting the cord, if I'm being honest, I really thought cutting the cord and getting away from cable was going to be, like, super cheap. I was like, I'll get my little Fubos, and then I'll be straight. I'll be good to go. But then I got Fubo, and then, you know, I had Netflix. And then and then you had Amazon Prime, and it was free. It was cool. It was great. You're like, okay, that's, that's cool. And then now they're like, well, we got to start running commercials, but you can pay to not see commercials. And then you had to have Disney Plus, and then you had to have Paramount Plus, and then you had to have Discovery Plus, and then you had to have you had to have Plus Plus, and then you had to have Minus Plus, and then you it's just I'm paying as much as I paid for cable. I might as well go back to cable at this point, but the problem is cable was like, well, screw y'all, and now all the cable is shutting down now, so we don't have a we don't have a choice, and now I'm paying more than I did in the past. And this entire segment, I feel like an old man just yelling at clouds. So coming back from the break, um, I'll tone it down and I will not uh, complain like an old geezer. And we'll talk some sports. Uh, we'll have, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, NCAA tournament. And uh, well, actually, I will do some more complaining because there is something about the tournament that really grinds my gears. We'll discuss that. And coming up, we also need to discuss what's going on with Shohei Otani. Are Dodgers cheating? <gasps> Say it ain't so. More game on right after this.
Game On with Jerome Solomon and Barry Laminac continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Presented by Big Star Cadillac, Blitzed, and Kroger. Hey, welcome back. Game On ESPN 97.5. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can reach me on Twitter at Barry is Funny. You can hit me up in the Twitch chat, twitch.tv forward slash ESPN 97.5. And hell, I'll take your call, 713-780-ESPN. Or, as my boy, the Falcon would say, 713-780-3776. 713-780-3776. And now would be a good time. Um... Shout out and uh, dust in the wind and rest in peace to a uh, great man, a good friend, and a uh, a man who left an indelible mark not just on ESPN and ESPN ninety seven five and the 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 listeners and the people that worked at this station, but really on the entirety of sports and sports media in this city. Uh, Fred Fowler was a friend to many, a mentor to many, uh, but just a man who was selfless in what he did for so many throughout the city of Houston. And uh, for those of you that maybe hadn't heard, or I'm sure you have, but Fred Fowler passed away. We lost Fred last week and uh, gone way too soon. And uh, he will be missed. He, it was, you know, I put together a tribute slash memorial show for Fred on Monday. And in doing so, I was scrambling to get a lot of uh, audio and video and pictures and talking to a lot of people and getting interviews and, and, and whatnot. And I tell you what, it was, I learned a lot about Fred that I didn't know. And what I really didn't know and what I learned was just how many people Fred helped and and just how many people he impacted. And I really had no idea. I know the impact he had on me. And I know the impact that Fred Fowler had on a few people that, you know, I know um, that are that are close to me or friends of mine, but. The more that I started to put that thing together and and plan it and research it and you know, started to compile it, the more I started to learn, wow, man, Fred's reach within the sports community and the sports media community was so vast, just down to even you know, listeners and, and fans who would – send me messages or say things about, man, I met Fred on a remote and he made me feel like we had been friends forever. And he would, you know, I told him something and the next time he saw me, he remembered it and he would, he would say it or he remembered my name or he would, you know, there was something that specific that he would remember. And that's just the kind of guy that Fred was, man. Fred, I remember when I got laid off from ESPN 97.5 in May of 2020, um, Fred invited me out to have drinks and lunch and he had some projects that he was working on and he was like, you know, if I can get these things off the ground and working, man, I got a spot for you and a place for you. And he meant it and he absolutely meant it. And some of them came to fruition and we just couldn't link up and make it work, but it wasn't because he didn't want it to. And it wasn't from lack of trying. It's just, it didn't work out, but he really meant that, and that's just the kind of guy that Fred was. He really did want to help everybody. So um, a, a man who meant a lot to a lot of people. So uh, much love to Fred Fowler, man. Rest in peace. Fly high, Falcon. And uh, stay sportsy, bitches. We, uh, we love you, Fred. So um, let's talk a little bit about the tournament because I got a bone to pick in general with the way they do things. And I – I kind of lamented about this on my show, so if you're if you're tuning in and you are a listener of a Barry on Deck, you're you've heard this rant already, and I apologize. All right, you're just gonna have to hear it again because you know with the millions of people that listen to Game On every week, I gotta I gotta I gotta do it again because those folks that maybe don't listen to Barry on Deck. 
they need to hear this as well because it's just such a it's such a fantastic point. Okay, maybe not. Here's the thing. I don't I folks, I don't understand. I get the play in games. All right, I like that idea of having teams play each other to get in to the tournament, those those, you know, first four. I get that. What I don't get is having ten seeds as part of the first four. If there are four teams that are worthy of a ten seed, then why aren't all four of those teams in before the the 16 seeds like that I just I cannot and I'm sure there's probably some smart nerdy weird reason that the NCAA has that I've yet to I googled it I even asked Jeeves and Jeeves was like I don't know no one has I haven't really found a decent explanation for this yet and I'm sure there is one and I'm sure somebody listening to this is going to call the, the program or is going to tweet me or going to you know fax me a, a message or I don't know, maybe send it carrier pigeon. So I'll get it next week and uh, and I'll read it. But it's just weird. It just does not make sense that you have four teams that the 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 committee or whoever the powers that be think, yeah, any one of these four teams could be slotted as a 10 seed in a bracket. Should they win? Now, if they lose, get out of here. Scram, beat it. You're not good enough. But if you win, absolutely. But we do think you're good enough to be a 10 seed. Well, if you think they're all good enough to be a 10 seed, then, then just put them in the tournament. You think that they would be better than 11 through 16. That just, I just, it, it, it's, 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 I don't understand it. I really cannot wrap my head around that. And I get it. There's some 16 seeds that are like, well, what about us? And yeah, that's cool. But maybe those cats should be playing in the NIT tournament. I don't know. And don't, 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 don't bring up Virginia. Okay. I get it. Virginia was ass. They were, they were terrible. I get that. Virginia shouldn't have been a 10 seed to begin with. All right. But it just, it, I, I, I have no, I, I can't, I haven't found anybody yet that can give me a rational ex explanation for this. I really can't. I got nothing. It's like saying, all right, we're going to, we, we've got four teams that are better than anybody 11 through 16 in any of the four, you know, uh, regions, but only two of them are going to get a spot. What? I don't know. Go figure. Yeah, so I think sometimes, I think sometimes these, these, these committees and the NCAA and some of these other folks they get a little too smart for themselves. They get a little too fancy, uh, and I think this is one of those cases. And again, there might be a rational explanation for it. I sure as hell don't know what it is, though. Hey, shout out to uh, J-Rod on Twitter. He said, good to hear Barry is funny on the waves. Bring him back, ESP. I appreciate that, bud. Thank you for the kind words, man. Thanks for listening. Um, so let's uh, – that's a little tourney talk for you. Kentucky and Oakland just kicked off, and that is the first game that will be played in the South. And, of course, it's on CBS, and so I got to do this and can't watch it. <sighs> You don't even know how angry I am about this, though. Like, really. I, I'm i stupid angry about it. I shouldn't be this angry. Texas is up on Colorado State 2011, by the way. I'll be bringing you updates as if you care. Uh, let's talk about Shohei Otani. Yo, this is a wild, this is some weird, wild stuff. Uh, reps for the Dodgers are saying, uh, reps for the Dodgers, Shohei Otani, are asking for uh, an investigation. And if you didn't hear about this, Shohei Otani's interpreter, it is being said, reportedly stole about $4.5 million from Otani, allegedly, and, and, and transferred the money to cover uh, bets that the guy was making illegally. Now, he said he never bet on baseball. Winky, winky, winky. 
Uh, this this is from ESPN. On Wednesday, lawyers for the Dodgers pitcher and designated hitter said he had been a, quote, a victim of a massive theft, end quote, after reporters asked an Otani spokesman questions about why $4.5 million in wire transfers had been sent from Otani's bank account to a bookmaking operation. At first, his interpreter said that Otani knew about it. Then he came back and said, all right, he didn't know about it. I was I was lying. He didn't know. And this is all on me. And, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's really tough to know either way. It's so early in the process, and we don't have a whole lot of facts. And if I was just going to rush to judgment and, I mean, I don't know. You just look at Otani and you think, nah, no way, right? <laughs> Dr. Dre on 290 on the Twitch chat is calling me Pete Otani. No, this is not Pete Rose, okay? This is not Pete Rose. Could you imagine, though, the greatest baseball player on the planet, perhaps the greatest baseball player we've seen in quite literally decades. I mean, maybe... <laughs> Uh, maybe since Babe Ruth, maybe ever, he's he's you know, maybe ever, and then he goes and does this. It's it and so quickly. It's just oh boy, for this to happen so quickly. And what I also don't understand is if the interpreter. Let's just let's just first start with. I'll I'll just put it out and say yeah, I I don't think Otani knew. Right. Um, but why did the interpreter think he would be able to get away with this? Like if you embezzled fifty dollars, a hundred bucks with as much money as Otani has. Yeah, he's not missing a hundred. He's not missing a thousand four point five million dollars. That is not that's not stealing six bucks out of your mom's purse for lunch money, kids. That's insane. All right, we'll talk about it more on the other side. If you want to get with the show, 713-780-3776. Hit us up on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash ESPN975. Or hit me up on Twitter, at Barry is Funny. More game on right after this.
Game On with Jerome Solomon and Barry Laminac continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Presented by Big Star Cadillac, Blitzed, and Kroger. Hey, welcome back. Game On ESPN 97.5. Uh, update on the Texas Colorado State game. Texas up twenty to eleven, two seventeen left in the first half. And other scores: Kentucky up early, early four three over Oakland in that one with Kentucky hitting a grand slam. Um, back to this Otani thing real quick. This article went on to say that uh, Mizuhara, who was his interpreter said that, you know, he had never, he was asked, have you ever left anything out or misinterpreted anything for Otani on purpose? He was asked that by ESPN, and he said, no, never. I've never, I've never done that. Uh, I've never, you know, done that on purpose or, or anything like that. And um, it was crazy because this dude was making – Three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year annually to be an interpreter for the greatest baseball player in the world. Like you're living a dream, bro. You're traveling the globe. You're you're next to the biggest star in baseball, maybe one of the biggest in sports, certainly a global icon. And you're making, you're banking a half a mil, but you know Otani was paying for stuff. And now, granted, it, it talked about how he would like carry his water bottles and run errands for him. And he was, you know, he would be there during scouting reports. And well, he had to be. He would go over all of that stuff. And so he was real tight with him, but he actually had a contract with the Dodgers and uh, they fired him on Wednesday. And he said that um, he only bet on international soccer, the NBA, NFL, and college football. He said, quote, I never bet on baseball. That's 100%. I knew that rule. We have a meeting about that in spring training. And I love, that's my favorite part. As when he's like, oh, yeah, listen, trust me. Scout's honor. I, yeah, I might steal. I might embezzle. I might be a thief, uh, but you can trust me on this. I might be a thief and a jerk, but I'm not a liar. I wouldn't bet on baseball, which I'm sure they'll be able to find out. The guy that they were placing the bets with, his name was, uh, where was it? Something Boyer out of California. He ran a book, an illegal sports book. And they said that also that Otani had never had dealings with the guy and never talked to him and... So this is a, it's an interesting thing. And we're going to see how this shapes up. And we're going to find out who, how much did Otani know? How much was he involved with this? And how, you know, it, was he complicit in this? I just, it's one of those things where you just get a feeling, you know, where you're like, ah, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't get the feeling that Otani would do something like that. He just has way too much to lose. Uh, Dr. Dreon290 said, I'm not buying the interpreter was over $4 million in gambling debt. Oh, oh yeah. No, I believe that. I believe that. It can spiral quickly. Oh man, it can spiral real quickly. Like, real quick. Um, Dre said he was used by Otani, no doubt. No. <laughs> See, I just, I don't believe that. And maybe I'm just naive. Maybe I'm just a guy that wants to, you know, give somebody the benefit of the doubt. But I believe that it could rack up four, four and a half million dollars because it can get out of hand quickly. But I don't know. For some reason, I'm just giving Otani a pass on this. Maybe that's, maybe that's my bad. Um, Scotch Lockdown has a really good question. Why would his interpreter have access to his money? No one believes Otani is innocent. I mean, I do. I believe Otani is innocent. And and his interpreter would have access to his money because he basically has access to everything. He's He does everything for him. Like, when you're at that level that Otani is at, you don't pay your own bills. 
You know, you know what I mean? You're not you're not running down to the ATM to get 50 bucks out so you can stop at HEB and pick up bread and sliced cheese. You know what I mean? Like you just you don't you're not doing any of that. You're 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 just not involved in, at that level when you're making that much money. You have people do everything, including get money, transfer money, pay your bills. All of that is handled by other people that you trust to do the right thing. And when you're as close to a guy like your interpreter, somebody you're with eight hours, ten hours a day, I would imagine, that's somebody you, you know, you trust. It sounded like the guy was not just his interpreter, but kind of like an assistant. I mean, if he's carrying his water bottle and running errands for him, you don't think he'd be like, hey, would you pay my mortgage or, you know, whatever. I, it's very plausible that that would be the case. Very plausible. So, uh, Flip said, uh, it can get bad by the time you know it. You're betting on Hawaii versus San Diego State. I, I'm telling you, dude, it, it just like any other addiction, gambling can get out of hand real fast. It's like, you, know, you hear how much money people blow on drugs or alcohol or that uh, anything like that. It's just the same. I mean, yeah, we've got people in this town. I'm not going to name any names. They're they're saying it in the Twitch chat, and far be it from me to to be a a a, a pecking hen over here gossiping. I ain't one of the gossips. You ain't heard it from me. But uh, we got folks in this town that <laughs> they got gambling problems. So we know how much they bet. So it, yeah, it can spiral and spiral real quick. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I, I, this is going to drag on for quite a while. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'll tell you one thing. And if I'm just being honest here, you can call me a jerk. You can get mad at me if you want to. Although I don't, I don't think many Astros fans in this town would. But there's a little bit of me. There's, there's maybe... Point zero 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 one percent of me that 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 wants wants them to find out that Otani's in on it, and then he's banned from baseball. You know why? Cause suck it, Dodgers. That's why. I just not because I want Otani to. You know. I don't have any ill will towards Otani. I love the dude. I think he's an amazing athlete and baseball player, and that's not it. I'm just team suck at Dodgers. i not a Dodger fan, so I'm an Astros fan. So, you know, without that meow, meow, crybaby stuff they did about 2017, even though they lost the World Series at home, all that stuff, yeah, nothing would make me happier than all the money they spent this offseason just to see it all collapse that quickly. Ha, ha, ha. I would have a hearty chortle at that. Oh, that would feel good. I think Astros fans would kind of, you know, there'd be a little bit of uh, vindication in that regard. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. Take it to Twitter. Tweet at me and tell me that that's childish if you don't feel the same way. Uh, Brett Jones on Twitter just tweeted at me and said, if you have Max, you can watch any sports on Turner networks what what brett jones brett jones are you lying to me brett listen let me tell you something brett i'm a grown-ass man and i don't appreciate it when people get my hopes up okay um i'm a very i'm in a very volatile state brett uh, as a sports fan right now, I'm very emotional because I've only watched one basketball game on the opening day of March Madness, Brett. I'm I'm a little volatile right now, Brett. So I'm gonna need I'm gonna need you to come with a source, and not, I, I'm gonna need you to come with a link or a source or something. And Brett, if you're right, brother, we go together. I just want you to know that if we, Brett, if if you are right, sir. We go together, okay? I will get on one knee and propose to you, Brett. That is, I if that's true, holy cow. That is, that's a game changer. I mean, I still hate Fubo. Don't get me wrong. I shouldn't have to go to Max 
which, by the way, I do have, but I get it free with my AT&T cell phone. But I shouldn't have to do that. That's not the point, Brett. I still love you. And, yes, we can still go together. But that's, I shouldn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm paying for Fubo, why, why do I have to go to Max Plus or whatever it is to get t Turner and TNT and TBS? It should just be part of it. It's so stupid. It's It's just... It's so aggravating. I don't know. It just it just, it just drives me absolutely insane. Uh, don't look now, but Oakland's putting it on Kentucky, eleven to eleven. I mean, is that that's probably not putting it on them, huh? Uh, Texas at the half, 27-11 over Colorado State. How are we feeling about the Cougs? <sighs> we feel good about U of H <clears throat> losing to Iowa State in the Big Twelve tourney. Get that loss out of the way. I love when people say that. Well, you got to get that loss out of the way. Well, I don't know if you want to get a loss out of the way. I don't know if you're like, hey, let's go lose. I don't know if you want to do that. Um, I mean, that was a that's a tough team in Iowa State. That that's a good team. That you know, I mean, we if you watch that last game that they played together, both both times they've played each other, it's been a damn good game. I'm worried. I'm more worried about injuries. I all I know is I hope that this U of H team going into this tournament is as healthy as they can be uh, heading into tomorrow's game against Longwood. <laughs> okay, I'm childish. All right, we got one more segment to go on Game On. Uh, what's up after this? What's what's coming on after our show? Do we know anyone? Holla, Mueller. All right, I'll find out at the break and let you know after this. Game on, coming back. One more segment right after this. Don't go nowhere.
You're listening to Game On with Jerome Solomon and Barry Laminak, presented by Big Star Cadillac, Blitzed, and Kroger. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Jerome and Barry. Hey, welcome back. Final segment, ESPN 97.5. If you want to get in touch with me, 713-780-3776 is your number. 713-780-ESPN. You can call. You can hit me up on Twitter, at Barry is funny on Twitter. You can also hop on the Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash ESPN 97.5. Jump in the chat, and uh, I'll see your chat message. And you can leave it there and... Yeah, we can uh, we could chat it up like a bunch of high school girls. Uh, one thing, oh, uh, coming up after this fine program, Hall of Fame with Booker T and Brad Gilmore from seven to eight. So stick around for that. Always a good time with Brad and Booker T. That'll be at seven o'clock. So don't miss that Hall of Fame with Brad and uh, Booker T. Um, all right, so I I talked about this on Twitter. And I'm curious what you guys think, because this is one of the, like I I said at the beginning of the show, it's one of the biggest sports days of the year, really. And I remember, gosh, it might have been 2018, maybe 2017. I don't remember a while back ago, back in the uh, back in the day when uh, Joel Blank and I were doing the usual suspects, and um, we did a sh- we did an, a remote for ESPN. ESPN was doing a uh, we were streaming the or we were we had the games on air, and everybody was still doing our shows, but they were not airing um, over terrestrial radio. We were just streaming them online. And um, we were able to just, you know, we just did the broadcast that way. But what you saw was people out in droves, not at work, but they were out in droves at bars watching games and enjoying the first day of March Madness and college basketball. It's a huge deal. It really is. It's a huge deal. So it got me thinking, um, besides the Super Bowl, Sands Super Bowl, if you can't, if you're not allowed to pick the Super Bowl, all right, what is your favorite single day in sports? What is your favorite single day in sports if you are not allowed to pick the Super Bowl? Now, I threw up a poll on my Barry on Deck account. You should go look at my poll. It is really nice. Um, and the options that I threw out, we're day one of March Madness, uh, and then, of course, the men's the title game for, for March Madness, men's basketball title game. I threw out the college football national championship title game, and then any game seven. And it could be game seven of the World Series. It could be game seven of the NBA title game. It could be game seven in hockey. Because any game seven is going to be a big deal. So I threw that out. And others that I had... Then my mind and, and, and Twitter will only let you do four. But others that I was thinking is like, you know, Sunday of a PGA, um, you know, event, maybe a, um, of a major, maybe Sunday of the Masters or something like that. So I'm just curious, what are what is your single favorite day in sports? Not don't give me that. Oh, I like rival, rivalry week or whatever. I can I can never say that word um, a day. It's got to be one day. All right, you can tweet it to me at Barry is Funny. You can throw it in the Twitch chat. You can uh, send it. You can fax it in. Our, our, our producers will get your fax. Oh, I don't even. What's our fax line? 713 780 3776. Go on and fax in your favorite d- single day of sports. What is it? <laughs> Tico Suave said Men's Beach Ball Olympics. Did you mean to say men's beach volleyball or just men's beach ball Olympics? That is what? That is weird. Uh, B. Hannon said World Cup group stage. Is that a day? Is that a day? Is that a day or is that a is that an event? Is that like I don't see I don't know anything about World Cup or soccer. World Cup group stage. Is that a whole thing or is that one day? I don't know. You gotta you gotta you gotta tell me that. Um, 
Dr. Andrew 290 said opening day was yesterday. So, okay. Yeah, MLB opening day is always good. But technically opening day was yesterday, but I, I get what you're saying. I used to love going to opening day of the Astros. Um, that was that was always big for me. Um, some others that I got that, that, that people said was World Cup Championship. Um, most tennis grand slams. Stanley Cup final game seven, you know, there was there was some other ones. Someone had a really good one. Coach, uh, I don't know how to say his name. Coach, er, Coach er, 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 Ergilis, I probably butchered that. But he said he had a good one. College football, New Year's Day. That's really good. Usually the best bowl games, least amount of opt-outs. That's not bad. And then Scott Joyner had a good one. And, and I don't know, I don't know why I didn't even think of this. He said Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day NFL games. Oh, that's a good one because you got the food, you got the football, and then that made me think of Christmas Day. Now you got football on Christmas Day and you got basketball. So there's a lot of really good options out there, but if you had to pick one, what would you choose? Man, I think I would go any Game 7. There's just nothing like a Game 7 in sports outside of the Super Bowl Give me a Game 7 of the World Series. Give me a Game 7 of the NBA Finals. Give me a Game 7 in hockey. Game 7 of a bocce ball tournament? What? Oh, my. Have you ever experienced Game 7 of bocce ball? Folks, let me tell you what. Woo! Man. You're talking about I, the hair on my arms is standing up right now. Let's go. Uh, Dick Willie said for each berry, Game 7. Has to be, right? Has to be. Um... <laughs> is Barry not at Carbach? No. Uh, no, Barry is at home in his office. I am not at Carbach. I don't usually drive down to the studio or the remotes or whatever. I live way up in the spring area off of like 99 Rayford. So literally, it would take me an hour to drive to the studio to do an hour show and then take me an hour to drive back at least you know, with the traffic and everything. So I would drive two hours to do an hour show. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make a lot of sense, especially with technology. Oh man, look at Dale's ugly mug on the Twitch. Wow. Sheesh, Dale. That is scary. Um, so yeah, game seven, any game seven, that would be my second best day of, uh, of, uh, sports hey yo adrian what's up man i appreciate you thanks for the shout out on uh twitter he said good to hear you back on the radio barry appreciate you adrian um and thanks to brad he said hey barry just watched the fred fowler memorial show um well put together i appreciate that man thanks for the uh thanks for the kind words and uh yeah if he did if you want to watch it if you haven't seen it uh i did scramble to get that done as quickly as possible so I didn't have much time. I th thought of the idea Friday at 545 and wanted to get it done and go live with it Monday at 2 p.m. I just kind of basically gave up my normal time slot for Barry on deck and just said, here, we'll do this instead. So didn't have much time to put it together. It ended up being a four-hour show and just kind of basically offered up my bandwidth and technology for everybody to get, to get together and kind of have a tribute slash memorial show for Fred. Um so, yes, it was rushed. He said, Brad said, Barry, just watched the Fred Fowler Memorial Show. Uh, while put together quickly, you could tell it was a labor of love. You did a great job. I laughed quite a bit. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. For those of you that want to watch, if you go to at Barry is funny, I'll tweet out a link to the show. Or you could do your boy a solid out there in radio land and uh, go to my YouTube channel and uh, subscribe. Just on YouTube, look for Barry on Sports. Just look for your boy's name, Barry, B-A-R-R-Y, on sports. And if you just go to that YouTube channel, you will find um, the tribute slash memorial show for um, Fred Fowler. But, yeah, if you find me on Twitter, it's it's out there. The link is out there. Pretty easy to find as well. Uh, so you can't miss it. And Joanne Nichols said, my derby. What derby is that? I don't know what derby, what day one is the, the, the Kentucky Derby? I guess that's a pretty good, yeah, I could see that. I'm surprised no one had chimed in yet for like NASCAR or Daytona 500 
which I would probably block and report those people on Twitter. Anybody that's tried to tell me that, like, a race day would be, like, the, the second best single day in sports, you're definitely getting blocked. Thousand percent. That's that's ridiculous. You're going to put a race day over a game seven? We, we're not in Alabama, folks. Okay? That's ridiculous. All right. That is game on uh, from my boy Jerome Sullivan, who is out there in the uh, nether worlds covering U of H. I'm Barry Labanac. We appreciate you guys tuning in each and every week for game on. Coming up next, it's the Hall of Fame show. My man Booker T and Brad Gilmore stick around for that, and we will see you guys right here next week. Uh, until then, as my man Fred Fowler would say, stay sportsy, bitches.